Welcome to Langenfeld, a worldwide wakeboarding crew. We are here and we are about to go live with arguably the biggest event of the year. I've got this cat next to me. Hi. What's up? You know who he is, Felix Georgi, joining us in the commentary booth just before we get things going. Now, our team right here, uh, say hello team. Come on, come on, in you come. Come on, come on. It's not just me and Felix that make this whole event happen. There's a few other people as well. Hey, so there's a crew back here. I didn't introduce myself. Hey, my name is Matt Crowhurst. For the two or three people out there that don't know me, uh, you may have seen me last doing Wait the Line when I had longer hair and magnificent facial hair. Actually, did you know I actually made the Alliance list courtesy of Aaron Reed? Oh, best no best way. facial hair in the, in the no game. No way. Yeah, the only Come time. I'm actually working on that. On the Twizzlers? Yes, I'm yeah. working on being part of that list as Okay, well. so we'll, we'll talk more about that <laughs> yeah. later. I'll, I'll direct you to the right waxes yeah. and so on. Anyway, we digress. Wakeboarding is where it's at. Cable wakeboarding and the home of cable wakeboarding, arguably, well, the home country and the epicenter of this incredible sport, Langenfeld Wasserski, or Wasserski Langenfeld, if we're doing it the right way around, seeing as we are in Rome. Uh, Felix, tell me where this particular event stands on the world scene in terms of the riders we've got, in terms of the technicality of the course, in terms of the, uh, the bragging rights of being the Langenfeld Open champion. I mean, just looking at the liner, at the riders lineup, everyone is here like the best of the best are here and that's what we've seen on the water already the riding is insane and um the setup the wasashi langenfeld put together is also just mind-blowing it's super fun to ride and super technical a bit gnarly as yeah, well a bit gnarly as well there's some uh, parts you really don't want to fall off early and um, yeah, it is one of the world's best contests and we're going to witness it live. It right is going to be live. So yeah, thank you for all of those who have joined us on the YouTube channel already. Please share the link far and wide. Let's get the rest of the wakeboarding world in on this action if you can't be with us here. Now, we should point out, Felix has just mentioned some of the best riders in the world. Of course, he's one of those. So why is he not riding? Unfortunately, I've had a little bit of a crash this week and I have a super sore neck. And as I have a big film project coming up oh, next exciting. week, um, I just wanted to be healthy and fit for that. Tell us about the film and project. How much can you say? Um, we're going to do a big project in Germany for Red Bull. And um, it's going to come out in August. So stay tuned for that. Okay. And, um, I don't want to say too much. Okay, don't give too much away, but there's a little teaser for you. Something to look out for in August. Okay, um, we are going to get to the course preview. I think John Trailing is going to come up with us. He's going to join us to walk through the, uh, or, or, or drive through, float through the, uh, the course to give the breakdown of exactly what our riders are dealing with out there so that you can be looking out for all the technicalities that unfold. Um, let's talk to Felix, though. Which are your favorite parts of the course? You had a little chance to ride here earlier yes. on in the week before you had that incident. Which are your favorite parts? Which parts of the course should we be looking out for? And put your money on the line. Who's your rider to go? I mean... Um, I do really like the front section, the liquid force section with the Felix obstacle and the bank to flat rail. You can get super technical. It's a fun hit you can always do. And this whole last section is just insane how much different things you can do. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting. I mean, the first set, the first uh, feature is the pool gap, which is turned around and it's It super is not nice. a nice feature. I mean, nice in terms of friendly to start things off it's been no. catching people out yes it does uh jack constable has oh. been bruised as it's and it looks bad if you could get uh, both butt cheeks like that 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 people pay a Kim lot of but, but, but a lot of money <laughs> for, for that sort of thing um i don't know whether he's posted it but just if he does check it out it's quite something to behold um yes so really every section in this course in the contest in the run is insane and every section has like its its own niceness intricacies that you yes. can play around um, with and uh, as as unit always do in many of the events that unit get behind particularly here one of the homes of unit they have thrown together the most incredible hack lineup that you'll find anywhere definitely we definitely have the sickest wake park cable set up here right now and um yeah as you said riders are incredible here at the moment like the riding level is incredible and um, I don't know, I would probably 
have my money on Nico, Timo, or Pedro. What yeah, day. Nico's looking pretty solid. As clean as always, oh, stylish, and just one of my favorite riders. And Pedro, ever. Pedro, just out there, maybe a little bit like yourself, sees the whole setup a little bit differently, yes. and Timo's just gnarly as, huh? Gnarly as. Today, like first round, he goes out, does the craziest stuff. Stuff I've never expected anyone to do out here, and he like wakes up and does it. So uh, it's gonna be an interesting uh, contest. Hey, we talked about the guys, but let's not miss uh, the other half, the better half of society. Let's face it, uh, the women here in full force. We have our final head-to-head lineup. So what you've missed so far uh, is the qualifying rounds, the heats rounds. So we blasted through a ridiculous number of riders, a ridiculous number of heats. Two riders out of each of those heats got picked out. So I think there were heats of seven for the men. Um, two heats for the women, and then we end up with the women in front of us right now. Four heads-to-heads. Elena Body, Claudia Panini, Salome Lelay, Marie Rougier, that's France, France. Uh, Jamie Lapina, Annie Nix Anna Nixstad, USA, USA. And then Rivers Hedrick and Katinka Buting, USA versus Netherlands. Okay, who are you picking out of that? I mean, there's been a lot of chatter about young Claudia from yes, Italy. Claudia she's Claudia kills on it. I've been on a road trip with her in Italy last week, and she's just mind-blowing like she does she rides on the highest level right now she's super fit she yeah she can put it down for sure but then Marie is like one of my favorite girl riders she has such a good style always clean always gnarly as well um, but then Jamie and Anna they're old both. hats they've been at the top level yes. time and again so they can just pull it out yeah exactly but then we have uh, newcomers like Rivers She's been over here in Europe last year, first time ever, and uh, now seeing her back here again, um, it's nice that she keeps on uh, living the wakeboard dream and tries to travel to international contests, so look out for her as well. And not but forgetting, of course, any of these girls, Elena they wouldn't be here, it, they wouldn't be here in the finals yeah, if they couldn't exactly. come up with the goods. So we're going to be seeing an awful lot of names and faces that we've not seen before, particularly me. We've all been a little bit of a bubble for the past two years. You know that thing that happened the past couple... Uh, I forget, forget about that. But now we're out and open, we get to play, and you're going to get to see some new faces who are absolutely ripping. We are going to get the head-to-head -head lineup for the men very shortly. We did just hear they, they basically drew all the names out of the hats, the head-to-head. -head. And unfortunately for the Stuckies, but great for the drama of the show, the two Stucky brothers, Trent and Gavin, get pitched each other. Very reminiscent of a story we watched unfold at the cinema a couple of years, a couple of days ago with the Derome brothers. Let's talk about that movie we watched the other oh, night, man. Mate. Did you did you get the, a little bit teary? A little uh, bit. I weather? did actually. Yeah. I definitely had some tears in my eyes. Uh, yeah, and um, it's sad to see Rev leaving the whole community, but um, yeah, if you if the when the movie's coming out, you guys definitely have to check it out and watch it because it is one of the greatest wakeboard movie to ever come out it is indeed and um yeah if you if, if you've had your head under a rock for the past few months then you might not be uh uh familiar with the fact that raf has come out with a new movie he went he disappeared like raf does and then he just he explodes back into our into our into our lives with the most monumental movie that he, they managed to, we don't want to give too much away, but the, the title of the movie is Au Revoir, so that kind of says what it is on the yes. tin. This is his final year of professional wakeboarding, right? And the movie's exactly. going to be out in October. And it's crazy because like on film trips, I went with him like five years ago. He was already talking about Au Revoir. Oh, was like, he really? He, was already, he already knew the name. I don't think he knew exactly how the movie's going to look like, but in the end, it's... Just an amazing movie that shows his career from start to the end. Uh, well, and, and, and the fact that, it, uh, much is the case with any athletes, with any people who reach the top of their game, that it's not just him that has made it. It's an incredible family, an unbelievable exactly. older brother. Exactly. And just the way they all work together from a young age in water skiing to the wakeboarding they went through, to the professional side of wakeboarding and having such a family background with their dad being a water skier. Um, it is a it's pretty beautiful. super interesting story how 
how he got to the point where he's at right now. And um, uh, uh, Raf said to me that the original thought was just to do an incredible movie, but it was it was Justin's idea to say this needs to be more than just a whiteboard yes. movie, which is and it's good for the consumer. It is a cinema uh, cinematic, cinematic cinematic thing. Movie. Yeah. So um, look out for it. Um, yeah. I think he's going to be adding to the the, the writing section. Yes, over I've the actually as well. just talked to him at lunch right now that he might come over to winch over here in Europe one more time, oh, which would be really exciting because I want to hang out with him a little more. Oh, to be involved in, in that and exactly. be part of it in his last and year. and want to help him get some more insane winch clips. And um, yeah, as we said, it's going to come out in September or October, I think. October. October. And I think they want to put it on big platforms. It is a almost one and a half hour movie. So... Um, yeah, a lot. Excited to watch that. Yeah, it was there. it was it was hairs on the back of your your neck and your arms and and tears in the cinema. Lots yeah. of grown men go, oh my god. It, yeah. <laughs> Damn, he actually did it again. Yeah, like, yeah. He's done it so many times where you where you were just mind blowing watching him doing his thing, and uh, yeah, nobody's seen anything of him for way too long. But he made it again and made people cry in the cinema. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, so look out for that. Okay, let's do a little time check. We are 15 minutes away. John Dreiling is going to come up and join us soon. But shall we? Should we do a little preview of the course? You get Felix to take on it. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. So you guys at home watching? Can we pause? Can we? Oh, go on. Scroll back. Scroll back. Right. Come in. Get a little closer. Get a little closer. Get a little closer. Right, that'll do. Okay, yeah, so yeah. Felix, talk about this very first feature that all of our riders are starting their contest run with. So, so they're coming into this thing, which yes. is meaty. It is the pool gap turned around. So you first of all have to get over the stairs, which is kind of frightening every time you go into it. It's right underneath the cable, so it's quite hard to get a right line to it. Um, you can hit the rails up into the pool. You have a some bumps on the side to hit. Let's to let's go back out again so we can see the uh, there there there. Okay, there let's do it from that. You have a kicker in the middle to go into the pool. You have the right side with a transition thing. Some bumps, some yeah, just poppers that get you up there. Um, you so don't what they've done? So David was well, he's, he said he's done on the left hand side. It's usually just a ledge down rail, and they put a handrail on top of that. So there is a creeper on the outside of that now exactly. and this is what you're talking about with Timo doing silly things on that yes he's been actually hitting the creeper which is only like I don't know this wide yeah, yeah, yeah. like 20 centimeters wide your board doesn't even fit on it fully yeah and he just all he's onto this I don't know one meter 30 high and, and that's creeper. not necessarily even how gnarly that is that's not necessarily the gnarly thing about it because you can see on the outside oh sorry the inside of the pool is the Henshaw. Yes. Hello, Mr. Henshaw, if you're watching. What's Whatever up, you're watching. Kevin? Um, so if you come off that, you're slamming into an incline. Exactly. Yeah. So like, if you fall off early, you just hit an incline, box, rail, whatever you're going to hit at that point. On the left side of that, there's even some wave breakers they put there to make it look nice, but they can also mess you mess you up and because you can't get out if you, you need can't to get, get out. out like if you fall onto them you just stop from zero to from 30 to zero real quick and this and is that's where jack constable came across because he wobbled into the pool and because the for those of you out there who've ridden a, a unit pool you'll know that when it's the correct way around you've got a safety out of the pool so if you mess up you can kind of bump out yeah there is no safety it's just a vert wall and that came colliding in grand fashion with exactly. jack's buttock yeah. Yeah. And then in if you get to the pool, maybe you scroll. Should we scroll a little bit further? Yeah. All right, uh, right there. Yeah. You see a little bump in the end that you can use as a popper onto the Henshaw rail. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can actually also get to the wall of the Henshaw rail. So Over just a lot of creative yeah. lines. You can hit that feature. And um, as I said, it's really gnarly with those wave breakers on the side. You really don't want to mess things up and you want to get that straight line onto it. And um, it was interesting yesterday in the practice hitting it while someone hit it before you because it was just Because you wave. just find a trough in the middle of the yeah, pool that you get stuck so in. Yeah, it was so bumpy and choppy in there that it was sketchy every time. So it's going to be nicer to hit while the contest is going on because you're the only one out there. And, um, yeah, I'm excited what we will see now in the finals there. Okay, moving on. We can 
plow past these kickers, obviously. Yes. Guys are launching. I mean, we've got nines. We've seen the ten so yes. far, and we today. Everything, no double right. flips. Nobody going round and round twice I so far. I think yet. we did see we a did? double flip. Okay. Uh, I think Max van Helfer did one. Of course Max did. The yes, king. Yes, the king. Double uh, king. Right, then we get to the, um, the, the last straight before the drive tower. We have got this half the rainbow. And then yes. we've got this little this little bump, bump. box, bump um, and it's it's quite a meaty gap as, as as well coming in at an angle. Yeah, it's probably like a four meter gap. You definitely don't want to miss that pop of the ki of the bump. Yeah, because you'll be dead. Otherwise, basically. you yeah. just land in a wall. Um, but yeah, it's actually this is quite a fun obstacle. So there's a lot it here, is. and it's it's like a landing ramp, right? And people exactly. have been launching and using it like that. Definitely, we saw some flips onto it. We saw massive spins onto it. So a technical section. Just like the others. Hey, trailing! Come to the chair, man. Uh, yeah. I'll give a pass. Should we chance out? Should we get John to do the second half yeah, of this? Yeah, I'll uh, pass the mic to John. Felix, thank you very much. He can go and relax. Thank you, bro. And we have got the one and only John, not scared, trailing. Wave to the fans, John. Okay, so um, before we carry on with the course preview, tell us what happened, man. Well, um, this course is uh, its a wild one. It's uh, very difficult, so many lines, and I was trying to take a little bit of a creative line on like one of them. Like you do. That's your, that's, your, that's your thing. And it worked out in practice, but, you know, today just wasn't my day, and it just didn't go down. But that's what makes this event so exciting, what makes this course so special, is that uh, anything can happen. It's really anyone's game, and, uh, you know, six hits on the most technical, creative rails in wakeboarding, um, you know, like, Keeps it exciting. You never know what people are going to do, and you never know who's going to put it down. And so it kind of just comes down to who performs that day, and today just wasn't my day. So let's get back to the course preview and let get John's take on this uh, this pretty crazy out there course. We've already talked through the gnarly very first hit, which is messing a lot of people up. We've got kickers here. Uh, obviously, your usual standard fare. This, t t uh, did you enjoy this trail? This looks like a lot of fun. Like, that bump's quite aggressive, so you've got to control that pop, but quite a nice feature to land on, which hasn't been used in that way before. Yeah, it's really cool. It's, uh, you know, basically just a kicker to landing ramp like you would see, but uh, it's very different because the bump has a very straight-up pop and a yeah. lot of kick to it. There's not transition, so it's, uh, it's a pretty difficult one to manage, but um, if you can manage it, it's super fun to just boost off that thing, get a lot of kick. You'll see a lot of flips going down on that and having that smooth landing to... To ride away from, so super fun one. And we also point out, kind of cool, that uh, they're giving the air trick option in this in this event. So we're seeing a little bit more uh, well-rounded activity out on the water. And people have been throwing down some banging air tricks. We've got Joey Battle Day of all people coming out with a three-one-five out there on the water. So um, that's that's so people are either having a little hit on that or missing it all together and going for the air trick action. We come around the drive tower, and we've got this concoction. Here we go. On the left, we have Mr. Gorgi, Felix's own feature on the left with a kicker to that, but the wrong way around, of course, so the close out up first. And on the right-hand side, we have got the step and then just the, the, the bank incline wall type thing. Uh, talk us through this. Which way were you going on this? What was your favorite lines here? I was taking the right feature. It's a little more tech, and to me, it's one of the most fun features I've ever hit. Probably the most fun feature I've ever hit. And uh, the one on the left is a little bit more sandy. You got a little bit of a, a gap, but this is where you'll start to see some strategy because there's a lot of uh, kicker to rail options, but you can't do that your whole run. You know, you got to change it up. So it's a uh, you know, so many lines again, but you kind of got the tech on the right and the sendy on the left, so. Nice. Okay, moving through. So many, there's so much variety right on this little section here. And then we have got, um, we have got the start of the West Rock on the right, that incredible park in the, in the States. And then on the left, we have got the one side of this, this booter and ledge. The, the meat and two veg, as, as we can call it. We won't use the other words because this is a family show. Uh, and then on the left, we have got just kicker to what it was the banana with a huge corrugated pipe. Which way were you going here? What's your favorite hit to look out for? You know, for me, I was actually changing it up. Uh, I think in my safer run, I was going corrugated because it's uh, more simple. You can get tech on it and stuff. But then I think uh, going on the right feature and trying to find a creative line on that, you know, you kind of can hit those creepers on the side of that. You got the drop down. Um, is a, maybe a little bit more risky. So, yeah, I mean, I was kind of switching it up based on uh, how I was feeling how the rest of my run was going. But uh, it's pretty cool. You know, the corrugator makes such an incredible sound, and it's just like an amazing classic feature. And then, you know, you got 
all that wild stuff going on on the right. So We had Mr. Pedro Caldas, who does not mind a big old ollie onto things, just try and smash it heel side. He, did you see that? Yeah, he, it's yeah, pretty cool. He uses it almost like a wall ride, where he like wall rides up to it, tries some spins out and stuff. So tons of cool stuff. You got that little kick on the side. So... Um, yeah, I think it's cool, but the corrugated definitely is a, is a crowd pleaser with the, with the loud noise it makes. And then moving on to the final section, we have got on the left, we've got the triple step up. And then we've got the second part of the West Rock. And then on the right, we can see the Nico wall, plus lots of other things on the right. Talk us through these two sections. So that, that, that um, transfer of that small kicker to the top of the wall is meaty, isn't it? Is it a lot of effort to get on top of that? Yeah, definitely. So, uh, I mean, that kicker's really poppy, but it's, uh, again, a little bit challenging to control, a little challenging to lock in your line, and that step down's uh, pretty big. So... Um, yeah, this time we have it almost opposite. It's kind of bigger on the right and uh, more tech on the left. But again, that, that one on the left has so many lines. And it seems the one on the right, most people take that kicker up. But with the step down, you can change it up. You can get really uh, techy on that one too. So. And uh, w once again, we go, get, go back to Pedro. It's just something that stood out. Obviously, lots of riders doing things that are standing out. But him going backside wall ride into the whoop, back up onto the, uh, the down ledge of that one on the left was rather nice. Um, your hits, what, what, what were you doing on these two? Um, I love that creeper on the left, using that pipe as a creeper that you see on that left feature. Yep. You don't uh, think it will work because it's going, it's uh, on the cable side, normally the cable will pull you in, but it's weird, you can kind of tuck your toe in and like hug against that wall, oh, into like it. Okay. you're falling off, but then the wall holds you, it's super interesting, and you'll see a few riders take that line, it's a pretty technical one, and it's uh, pretty interesting, and then you have that rail to rail to rail option or uh, tons of things, you know, so that was kind of my line of choice. I think it's super unique feature there, so. Um, and that is the wrap-up of the 2022 Langefeld Open course walkthrough. We'll be seeing lots more of that in play once we get going. Time check right now. What are we looking at? We have got seven minutes to go. Tell you what, you guys, uh, we are going to be talking at you in your face holes for a good few hours, so let's give you a little bit of a break. You guys, sit tight. I want you, just before we dis say disappear, could you please get your nominations for who you think is going to come out on top? Also, say hello from which... I tell you what, John Traylon, would you like to do some shout-outs yeah, to the crew out it. there? Okay, so... Uh, wow, we've got a good few people joining us live right now. So there you go, mate. Say hello to a few of these people. If you'd like a shout out, we've got. Yeah, well, I saw we got the Harris twins out there, and uh, you know they're the Orlando crew with me and the Gavin and Trent. So I know that's going to be a really exciting one for all of us to watch. So what's up, guys? Brandon and Josh and uh, Mr. Paton, how you doing? Wherever you are, Yannick. Yeah, I wish you were here. I believe he had an injury or something. So uh, I know he has some crazy lines he would have been doing on this thing. Um, couldn't make it. Brandon Harris yeah. getting uh, lots of chat in there. Hello to OCP Way Park in Barcelona. I hope you guys are all doing good out there. Who else have we got? Let's uh, let's just through through some names. Tyrone Camini, hey. ten bucks on Battle Day. We got a fan of Young Joey. We got Aaron Gunn in the chat. Yes, Aaron. Aaron uh, dominate used to dominate in these kind of setups when he was still competing. Um, would love to see what he could have done on this. Uh, today. So uh, thank you guys. We are going to go. Let's go Lemonade Normal. Galus Paris, the uh, Lemonade Normal crew, having a, a little bit of a say there as well. So please keep on saying hello. Please nominate who you think is going to be coming out on top. Put some money down between your friends and uh, we will give you a shout out. Uh, oh, and Aaron giving a, a hello to Felix and to Clint. Speaking of uh, moderators, we have got Clint, Liddy and Tobias down on the dock doing an amazing job on the mics for the crowd here at Langefeld. Um, dude, time to put your money where your mouth is. Call it. Well, Timo blew my mind in qualifiers. So uh, he won the last contest in Hamburg. I kind of think I got my money on Timo, but, you know, Timo's probably got one of the hardest, craziest runs. It's just, you it know, could go either way. Put it down, you yeah. know. Trent and Gavin are super consistent. Um, and, yeah, Pedro is always uh, a big one to watch out for. So so you didn't put your money on it at all. Come on, call My it. My money's on Timo. Timo. Honestly, honestly, after watching qualifiers, uh, you know, he blew my mind, you know. So I think, I think he's got the tricks. Let's see if he puts it down. Okay. John's money on at Timo. Who's your money on? Hey, we'll be back with you in just a few moments when we kick off the 2022 Langefeld O2 Open, presented by Liquid Force and supported by Nissan and Follow. We'll see you in a few minutes.
We are looking at this one, eh? Welcome back, people. You are looking at the far side of the Langenfeld Bahn 1. Is that right? Bahn 1. Bahn 1, yeah. yeah. Cable yeah. 1 for Kleine. the yeah. international people. Yeah, yeah, for those in. of you who, uh, who don't spread and see the Deutsch <laughs> like I do. Well, good. <laughs> um, so we're going to get going with the ladies, and we are in head-to-head -head round. So if you've just joined us, welcome to this Blue Ribbon event that is the 2022 Langenfeld Open presented to you by Liquid Force and supported by Follow and Nissan. Thank you to those brands for... Making this happen, along with, of course, one of the homes of Wakeboarding Langerfeld Open, to which we can hear the crowd on side cheering to our very first lady on the water. Elena Bodhi from Spain is kicking things off, and she has got a little bit of an uphill battle, Felix, against yes. Claudia Panini, the girl on form at the moment. Do you know much about Elena? Um, yeah, Elena is a upcoming rider. She's been around some international contests in the past few years already, and... Um, she definitely knows how to ride a contest, so uh, I'm excited how she put her run together and I'm sure she's gonna play it safe probably in the first round just to put some pressure on um, Claudia and then just goes from there um, what she has to do in the second round and yeah, but she has a super nice and clean style and is a super nice young lady, so yeah, let's see what she can put together in this first section. Here we go. So, Elena, eyeing up the beast of a first hit. Which way is she going to go? You can see the options available to her right there. She is looking like she is hitting the booter into the pool. Little indie tickle. Then that bump up, coming off a little three quarters of the long. But that front lipping, coming in toe side on that bump is tough, huh? Yeah, it is. It just boosts you up and sends it off with a, a nice front five over the kicker. And is air trick looks time like uh, air trick right there? Oh Going yeah! The oh, 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 oh 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 oh! Little she, wiggle in the landing, but she, rides away. She muscled her way out of that pretty well, leaving it to the last minute to get the most pop, which oh. does leave things dangerous. That was tidy, really solid. Yes, that that noise when she hit the second one was amazing. Gap up oh. the flat rail. It's a super high ollie to front board. And then on to the Nico to Street Series, little backboard. I mean, little wiggle here and there, but she has a full run. She didn't sketch out too much and um, definitely put some pressure on Claudia there. Yeah, I mean, there was room for improvement there. The two, the two rail features, the first two features on this, on this home straight right in front of the crowd, they were the big ones, weren't they? A little bit of a wobble on a few but of the other here features. Here, Claudia is coming in with a little indie into the pool, 360 out of it. Here she goes over the kicker with a KGB clean ass. Comes to the front line. Gonna hit the bump to Rainbow. Ooh. Nicely done. So going 270 off her toes off that bump. Once again, as Felix said, pretty hard to control that toe side hit on these really steep kickers. Now going inside the cable, toe side front oh, roll. Front oh. roll. <laughs> so just that is scary because your head's going straight at the closeout of your very own rail. Backboard to back lip, 270 out, and then she's going to hit the rail to rail, rail, rail transfer. Oh. Fitty, 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 fitty to back three off. It was a clean run. So unofficial, of course, but if we were to hazard a guess, we would say that those first two runs compared. Claudia Panini has got the edge over Elena, but she, with what we saw from her, if she locks down those feature tricks that she was going for, that's still going to pile pressure on. It's going to be a to cl close fight. For sure. I'm, uh, if Elena will ride her next run the way she wants it, I'm sure it's going to be a close call. And uh, Claudia has to back it up with a little bit more here and there. <laughs> so, um, Yanni Paton is complaining about how loud we are. I'm, I'm assuming that's me. It's usually I get complaints about how loud I am. So maybe I need to reduce my volume or, or our crew can do it here. Yeah, because I can't reduce my volume, man. You can't hold this back. <laughs> Sorry, Yannick, have we just blown eardrums if you're at a family luncheon or something? Okay. Oh, he's actually the guy that likes to blast his eardrums. Oh, is he <laughs> now? Okay, so, so that's... Sorry, that's Yannick. How, no, that's good. That's, that's how loud <laughs> I actually am. Okay. So we've got uh, Claudia coming back round, just kindly wetting the rails down because Elena is going to be out on the water. The judges just totting up their scores, their decisions from those first two runs. And it is Claudia's 
taking uh, first blood. Yes. So you can see on our screen the way this is working. It is the best of three situations. So if Elena wins this next bout, then they will go to a third. If Claudia wins this next, then that will be her through to the next round. Very much um, if we talk and uh, keep thinking back to the Raf and the Oli Jerome bouts, if we talk about Wade the Line, if uh, you guys know a little bit of history of Wade the Line, those two boys got voted in, not voted, drew out of a hat to go against each other in their very first event against each other. And we've got the same vibe with uh, Gavin and Trent Stuckey here today. Okay, so Elena, she's got some catching up to do. Pressure is on her right now, but it's a... Uh, Go fast, take chances for Elena Buddy as she makes her way around the cable, just hopping a little ollie next to Felix's own rail. Hey, how much fun do you have on your rail versus other rails? If you were going to pick another rider's signature rail, which would it be? Uh, oh, that's a tough one. Uh, I do really like Nico's rails. All of his signature series are super fun. Um, it is every time I ride my rail, it's just like this unreal feeling that it's like, it has my name on it's it. It's like, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, you get it, my rail, you get it, that's right, I'm gonna grind <laughs> yeah, exactly. the hell out of you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would definitely pick, yeah, all of Nico series, it's super fun. But then also, Raf series and Daniel's and John's, they're all so fun and so different, so it's like nice to have them all. <laughs> that was very diplomatic of you, well yeah. done, yeah, 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 did not put his money where his mouth was at all. Okay, here we go. Elena on the back straight. This young lady has got it all to play for. No point in holding back whatsoever. She is eyeing up the pool gap the wrong way round. Last time she went for an indie grab off the kicker into the pool. Probably going for an indie again and then it's going to try to clear this gap over. That was better. Front that was better. was better. Going for a back oh! seven. Oh, she wanted it. That would have been insane and definitely put some pressure on uh, Claudia, unfortunately, going down. Hey, but hey, that, that's not all she wrote. Claudia still has to, she, she, can, she has the benefit of seeing what just happened. She just needs to get through the course. Exactly. And, yeah, so she does not have so, to try anything crazy. It's going to be an easy play for Claudia. How we all know her, she's experienced in contest riding, so I'm sure she's going to play it safe on the pool there and um, just going to try not to fall. So, um, yeah, that's going to be a victor almost a victory lap, I would say. Here she comes, and I wonder if she might get enough of her feature hits under the belt and then assure herself a place in the next round. We might see something a little bit saucy as practice to round things off. Here she comes. Toe side. Indie oh, shifty, nice like that. Indie shifty. So same so far. Three. Looks like she's using this as a practice run. KGB, clean yeah. as always. I, I like it. For, for most riders out there, these are not safe tricks at all. Controlling the bump, 270, hard way Ooh, on, passing the handle, then nice coming. clean, getting around the corner. Now, this is where she really excelled on these two feature hits. This toe side front roll with an indie grab. Yes, oh. now actually making it into the landing as well. The first one she clipped a little bit, so she cleaned that one up for sure. Backboard to Fitty, 360 off. And now rail to rail. Ooh, oh, uh, Fitty, was that a 270? That was a, a 270 the other way, hard way as well. Yeah. So what our judges are looking for, I'm sure I'm, there are lots of discerning wayboarding fans out there who know exactly what's going on with the judging. But for those of you who are just getting an idea of what our judges are looking for, it's variety, right? It's a mixture of all of the skills that one needs to have as a wayboarder. Exactly. Which includes rotating in different directions in every direction they want you to come and switch regular toe side backside whatever there is they just want to see it all oh, they want to see your capability of using the course in any way and also like creativity is a big part if you use an obstacle differently than everyone else that's what they're gonna judge high and flow as well it's always I mean, for me personally, um, I'm, I'm not sure about you, Felix, but when you see a rider flow from feature to feature, inside and outside, 100%. hit the next trick in the foot they landed from the previous trick as exactly. well. Exactly. Switching legs in between, uh, switching feet in between um, features is never a good thing because that kind of means you didn't plan out your run properly. So um, if somebody has it, they definitely score it higher than someone who switches there stands every in between every obstacle. And talking about the judging, let's um, do a shout out to our three guys. You could not find a better judging panel, I would agree. Talk Definitely us through who we not. got up there. Uh, we got Andy Kolb as a chief judge. 
then CK Coaster from the UK, and Massi from Italy. So they're all super experienced. They've judged the, all the big events so far. Oh, actually, one uh, rider that's up there, she's unfortunately injured, and she helps with some decision, is Anne Fryer. She is the current uh, winner or the current current LAO champ. Oh, actually. she's the reigning champ. Yes. So she's she'll be undefeated. So she is, yeah. yeah she's yeah, undefeated, so she can claim that. Yeah. Definitely. Unfortunately, she's injured. I know she would love to ride here. Um, now she's in the judging panel, trying to help them with decisions. And um, so yeah, we got four really, really capable judges up there that just. I would, know what I would not doing. want. I'm happy chatting about it. I would not want that job. That no, is a lot of pressure. It is a lot of pressure, and it's just such a stressful job to be up there and to take decision within a split second, seeing everything they have to do, see every inch where they maybe grab or not grab. So um, yeah, guys, if you just if you just contemplate with the, with the with the with the, the progression of rail riding and feature hitting, like you, an, an old school cable event. It's easy to write down a trick that oh. you do. With the old school features, it was like yes. you locked on and you held on. Now there's all this Lord of the Dance tippy tapping all over the place. How they keep track of what they're seeing out there. It's easy for us to chat it through, but for them to keep track and then compare, like things that aren't like for like as well. Like you're trying to gauge, is that more difficult? Is that more stylish? Because our sport is subjective, um, which is the beauty of it as well. Exactly. Um, just, and one thing I really. Uh, I think it's crazy that they write everything down. The way they have to write everything down to actually remember what they did, where they did what, is insane. Yeah. I've tried it a few times and it's stressful. I don't like so. it. Don't like it. Yeah. Power to those guys yes. in there. Thank you very much. Speaking of pressure, I think the most pressurized role in this entire contest is that of the moist makers, the rail wetters. Yes. Who uh, have <laughs> we have been seeing a few edges caught by some of our moist makers as well. <laughs> We don't wish them any misfortune, but there have been a few crashes from our rail wetters, <laughs> slashing so hard that they've taken front edges. Uh, so, so they gave it. They give in all. They are giving all it all. <laughs> and the, these, like, it's like a plastic. When you, I've been out there trying to trying to wet down the henshaw from the opposite side, is not possible at it's, all. Yeah, you <laughs> need a few laps to actually wet it, and they are getting it. Okay, right on, on to lap. our next head-to-head. -head. We have got France versus France. That is tough for our French crew out there because one of your country mates is going to be out. But two rather awesome, very stylish riders. Salome Lully. Lully? 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 Salome Lully. And uh, Marie Rougier, former plastic champion as yes. well. That Marie, was that was a big score for as her. As I said in the beginning, definitely one of my favorites out here. Um, she kills it. She has amazing style. And um, yeah, that's gonna be an exciting one. Both have been killing it in the tr in the practice heats and in the round before. So um, let's see who's gonna take this one home. And we didn't really wrap up the uh, the first head to head. Yes. So uh, it is Claudia Panini going through. So she took the second head to head bout. So they have it's the best of three runs. Whoever takes uh, the, the the two hits up front, as Claudia did, they will move on through. And then if it's one apiece, it goes to the third and final bout. Here we got Salami Lulei coming in for our very first hit. You can see, guys, from expert drone footage right here, which way is she going to go? Down the middle, straight on air into Ooh, the little, pool. Little 180, 360 off, coming in into to the kicker, switch front five. And that's a nice flow nice from outside one. to in as well. Popping a little 180 because she's going to be going heels into the bump. You can see the size of that transfer right there. 180 on, 180 off. Then back outside to make it around the drive tower. Which way is she going to go, inside or out? She want a little bit of Felix under her feet or the other uh, way? She's going to hit the other feature with a 50 front blunt to Sevi. Nice and clean. Nice. Coming into the A-frame. Get tapped up with a little nose and then going backboard. Here coming off a little early on that rail to rail transfer, but um, yeah, she was the first on the water, so. It's clean up until that front. There were full pulls on pretty much everything other than yeah, that very sure. final hit. That was nice. Let's see what Mariga. She's coming into the pool right now. Oh, She's actually oh hitting gosh. the up rail, which is super scary with the stairs, doing a little tail grab down. Staying toe side, toe side, back side. 
360, keeping it safe. She can spin that to five, right? Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. She's, she's holding a little bit back. She just wants to get a full, clean run for now. Oh, oh Kev on. tickling the end of that thing. That's with what the I mean. Oh. That bumpers is so hard to get the right pop off and coming in 50, 50. Oh, no stress. That was very little boarding contact with that rail. Back heavy, but still riding away clean. Back lip all the way through the A frame. Nice and clean. And then going 180 on. Switch 50. So, some tidying up to be done, but there were some technical things in there. And a bump twist from us here in the commentary booth as she nearly clipped the front end of that rainbow on that transfer. But beautiful riding from these two ladies. And we do hope there is a good goal. I was just about to say, ladies out there watching, Miss Schreiber, one of our foremost wakeboarders in the world. Unfortunately, not here with us, but we hope you and crew are doing good wherever you are. Who else we got? Let's say hello. The Peacock Brothers. Let's go, yeah, girls. Are so. you talking to me and Felix? Because that's not very kind, <laughs> boys. So the Peacocks, um, shame you guys can't be here with us, but I'm sure we'll be seeing them at a way to L as well. Yes, for sure. I'm okay, excited to see Okay, here we go. Guys. Oh, so we're taking first blood to Salome Luli. Ooh, oh, yeah. Oh, so a very, I'm sure that was a very, very tight decision. It was hard to pick apart. And once again, any of you guys out there who are getting your sofa judging on, you can do it. You can call it, but you are never in the position that the judges are in, and you can never see it quite right, and you will never have the amount of combined experience that those three judges are out there. So on if you're getting all argy-bargy about the decision made, just go a little easy on our judges, right? Because they have got a tough job. Sal Salome Luli taking first blood. Okay, Ooh. so Marie, if anybody can uh, fight back, though. Marie I'm Jay. sure it's Marie. She has the experience in contest riding. Um, and yeah, but there is some pressure on her right now. She needs to, she's going second first now. I Does that mean they change it up? I because we haven't sure seen that first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, okay, we should have probably read the script or something like we know what we're doing. <laughs> okay. But so we we'll wait see to see. In a second. All right, a little bit of a, um, a pause. Um, I wonder whether the, the whale wetters, the moist makers, will be heading out there in between times because. The rather crazy changeable weather has been keeping us on our toes here in Langerfeld. We had thunderstorms almighty last night and rain. Overcast this morning, but finally the sun has come out. And we've got crowds on the shore as well. And isn't it crazy to have a wakeboarding contest and then people surfing right next to the cable? It is insane. I mean, I see people riding in the back on the back lake. All the other cables are full as well. So it's going off here at Langenfeld today. Um, Every yeah. day. Every, every day, today especially. There are a lot of amazing cable parks out there, weight parks out there, but if you ever get a chance, come to Germany, the home of this sport, um, courtesy of Mr. Rickson back in the late 60s. Thank you, sir. And then get yourself along to Langenfeld. It is something to behold. Because last time I was here was the qualifying for Wait the Line, so 2012. Oh, that's year, that 10 years ago. Do you remember ago. when we did the Relentless trip when yes, we were out here? Yeah, yeah. That was a messy trip. Um, and the, the, the back cables are a bit more chilled. Every single one of those cables out there, you'd be happy as your home cable. Uh, Never mind this one here. What they have on plastic in those cables at every of those four cables is insane. And as you said, each of, a, each of those would be your you'd favorite be as your home, home cable. cable. Plus straight line cables, plus a surf machine, plus two bars. Yeah. And a rather amazing shop. It's amazing. It is amazing. So please do get yourself out to Germany for a bit of a road trip. You'll have no better trip. So we got actually Salome riding first now. And um, yeah, she's in a good place now. She's leading this head to head and coming into the pool right now. Let's okay. see what you got. Mr. Vollett there in shot, capturing all the action for the highlights reel. Ollie and in. Oh, that was a nice little tap yeah. on the back board to back 270 out, was that? Then From the five. five. Too easy. Trying to make it clean. Okay, now we saw Claudia have a little bit of a wobble on this, so that's probably what the judges were picking apart. Oh, is that pretty much full three there and handle pass that was over a that full gap? full three on, yeah, that was sick. Okay, which way is she going to go? We are seeing her appear from the outside, transfer. Back one out, super clean, trying to get full pulls everywhere. Coming in backside, lip slide, oh. transfer. That was nice. Picking the tail up and over that handrail that's been bodded to, to the top of that. Creeper to 
down rail coming up a little bit early but other than that rail she had full pulls everywhere super clean run Let's and that's an improved run as well we'll probably say and marie has to put it down here and she sure. would have been watching all of that down the back straight just to realize what she needs to do so she needs to come up with something special now this is this obviously is a standout insane. trick Nice stylish tail grab down. Staying toe side. Toe back. 360 with a little nose grab. So this was where we saw her wobble last time. Can she control the, uh, the, the boot of the little bump? Yes, she nice. can. It was a better hit. 70. It was a better hit. Also coming off a little early, but still making it nice and clean. Ooh, fitty, 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 front side three. It is Stepping tough. it up to Salome a little bit. Back lip, back lip, back lip. Oh, All coming off early. She needs something Ooh. special right here if she's going to edge herself, edge herself ahead of Salome Lili. Goes Ooh. from inside, moving through to the transfer. Oh, that is going to be a tough call. Once again, Playing you do not want to be a smart, judge. Though. The last hit, I feel like, kind of gave it to Marie, in my opinion. Okay. She did have a good run all in all. And, um, yeah, but let's see what the judges have to say. And this is the thing that they're trying to balance up. So it's an overall impression, isn't it? They're not going, well, who did that trick better than that trick? It's like, th th this is what CK has explained to me. He takes the whole run as a one. And yes. he actually, he tells me he actually writes very little down. And he goes with his first gut on most, most yeah. runs because a lot of the judges, once they start writing things down and start going back into it again, they then second guess themselves. When you've got judges of this caliber, they know what's up straight from the get-go. 100%. They will, when the decision gets close, they definitely look at the single tricks as well and see what, if they spin all the directions, if they do switch and normal. So it is a little, little bit of a mixture. They will have to look at tricks at some point yeah. if it just gets if too If it breaks close. it down to that being too close. Oh, oh wow, we there got we go. Salome. No way. That's amazing. S so that is arguably a little bit of an upset um, well, in terms of form, but amazing for, for Salome Luli. For Marie it is, but for, for Salome, I'm stoked. She definitely deserved it. She had two nice stand-up runs. And, and, um, and yeah. as John was saying earlier, it's all the pressure cooker or contest. It's, it doesn't matter who's got the form. It's who's got the form on the day. Hey, exactly. um, we just got to do a shout out to Glenn Bryden, one of the cable riding OGs. That guy, you mate, can throw an air trick or three. So good to hear you from the States. He is uh, of uh, O-Town Wayboard School Ooh. in Orlando. That's the man right you there. You will definitely see some banger air tricks go down here as well. Right after, if you, some riders just do the air trick, not hit the bump to uh, half rainbow. So, um, yeah. People like Luik, Trent Stucky, I've seen some things I've never seen before. Yeah. So let's put it let's put it out there. This might be controversial when we're at um, one of the biggest features events ever, and we know the craze about features. We know how much fun. That's that's where I get my most enjoyment in riding. Air tricks are difficult though, aren't they? And you get smoked. You actually, it doesn't matter what you try, you do get smoked the first time. Yep. <laughs> and um, yeah, just learning them is super risky, super scary. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people know if you remember their first rally and um, yeah, but it's nice they have this section where you can actually decide if you hit the obstacle or the or do an air trick and um, I feel like it's it makes it super interesting to have every facet of cable wakeboarding in which it. is how it should be hey we oh all love our features my. events but if you can hear those that noise in the background that's Steph Vollett who is putting together the content for the aftermath um, highlights reel and everything all the video that you're seeing on uh, the uh, Vasky Langenfeld uh, social page he's just going by a big old crowds making getting some noise from them and there is a good turnout isn't there it, it always blows my mind obviously as a, as a relatively landlocked nation this is this is your beach outing in Germany, isn't it? This is exactly, where people get their, like, their water time. Yeah. Exactly. We have so many cables around here in this country, so it's What's just the number? It's 80, 80 plus. You keep seeing our cable plus, maker. Yeah. I feel like it's almost at 100. Already. Really? Yeah, with system parks, we... Of course. We're scratching the hundreds already. Nice. Um, nice. It is oh, still a Hi. small sport, but we... 
Yeah, we're Not trying to grow it. In this country, though, it's, it's, part, it's part of the mainstream culture, wayboarding. A little bit more yeah. so than you would find in other countries. Yeah, probably. Say. For sure. Um, I mean, here, cable riding is just the, the best thing you can do on the water, basically. I mean, there's it, not that much wind. It's one of there's the best things you no can do on the water so anyway, regardless, wherever, exactly. wherever you are. We move on. We are, are tripping across the pond with our next riders. We have got two, um, I say, of the old guard, of the originals in terms of cable and feature. Um, that doesn't mean to say they're old before anybody starts jumping down my neck. Um, Jamie Lapina and Anna Nickstad, who have been at the top of the tree in many events 100%. all over the world. Those this is going to be a battle royale, huh? Those two could be standing in finals right now, and this will also be a final battle. Basically, it's not the finals yet, but it could be um, the equivalent too. Exactly. So uh, yeah, Jamie has been killing it the last few years. She's been on po top of the podium a couple times, same as Anna. Um, I'm excited to see this. So um. Uh, we have got more of the uh, of the crew out there. Guy Ferrer, how you doing? Good to Oka. Nice to see you too, sir. Jamie coming into the pool. Bump to front lip to 70 out. Super clean. Smoothly across, showing the flow from one side to the other. No, 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 no. Hold on. Whew. She muscles her way out of that. That yep. will affect her score, but that is still a trick in the bank. It looks like it's air trick time from Jamie Lapina. Here we go. Roll to the oh, right now. Falling, no. unfortunately. That's it. Crowd getting behind her just to cheer her on for the next run. So it is going to look like an easy shut door affair for Anna Nickstad if she just keeps it together. She still exactly. needs to pile on the pressure. Oh, she can't sure. rest on her laurels. But, yeah, Anna also a very, very uh, experienced contest rider. She's won it all, basically, I think. And... Um, She's on top of her game at the moment, so uh, I'm excited to see what she's got. I, I like this. I don't know who, who, who you are, uh, Anthony Axerias, but uh, yeah, yeah, or your first back edge with Rady Blinds or Back Move. I don't know whether you're talking to other people there. Anna but coming into the Henshaw, a little <sighs> swivel there, sliding off a little early. Oh. <laughs> KGB nice in. One on the kicker. Coming in. Oh, that's nice. Ooh, Stalling out the nice back one onto back the rainbow. One. There's a little bit of intensity about Anna Nickstad on the water. Which way is she going to go? Backside. Oh, 270 across, 90 out on that little Tekkers rail. The transfer up and over, staying left foot forward. So this is what we're talking about, about lovely flow. She's been remaining in the same foot from the last street to the next. Exactly. Next she trick. planned her run from the beginning to the end and Gets his her full full run, full pulse on everything. Amazing. I think we can safely say that that is going to be first blood to Anna Nickstad. And the pressure is on Jamie Lapina to come up with the goods. Kuntaroka getting behind your country women. Let's go USA from him. Hello to the rest of the crew. Shannon Stuckey, I, I believe that is that is that mother mother of? Shannon Stuckey? Would that be? Or is that a different Stuckey? Be. Okay, well, hello. Is that a... That's that's not the dog. That's Dom Hurdler. That's Dom. What's up, Mr. Dom? Hurdler, where you are you? Uh, Dylan McKnight getting behind. Uh, Anna, so you guys, please throw down. Who have you got? Oh, you seen this? Um, Jake Heatley, just sending you some love. Oh, what's up? Big love back. <laughs> Les Guy Ferrer, one of the kings of air tricks. He so wants to see more air time. We do have a decision from the judges. Anna... Gets the point for the first round. That is up on your screen right now. Fairly straightforward, exactly as it is explained there before your eyes. You can see a nice wide shot of the incredible facilities of Langenfeld Open. All of that is not just the offices and the shop and, uh, and the restaurant, but it's also the, uh, the home of Liquid Force. Germany as well, right here. This yep. is where all the magic happens. And if you're wondering where we are, we are just in that Liquid Force tent uh, that's on the balcony. No, yeah, we're, that, that's too far away. away. Yeah, always the bridesmaids, <laughs> never the brides. Okay. Right, there is the confirmation of how that first round between these two young ladies went down. It is going to be Jamie Lapina off the dock again, we're assuming, or will it get swapped around? We don't know. There you can see the uh, the serve machine in all its glory as well. That thing is monumental. I was very gutted that I couldn't. Have you been on, have you been on that a lot? You served? You must have done. I have served here a lot, and it's fun. Maybe the first time you kind of... You kind of stand there and don't know what to do, but like with the second and third session, you already carve around and 
yeah, ride the wave the way you want to ride it. And it's, uh, it's a good practice for actual surfing as well, just to do turns and, yeah, get a good board feeling. So yeah. if you're out here, try surfing just as much as you want to try the wake parks. Okay, we are, are we in, in action? No, not yet. Not so um, yet. we are just uh, letting the right carriers. So you'll, you'll notice that they're probably using the same carriers each time. Is that usually the case? Uh, I don't think so. I think they just, they're going to have the same space. Same every space time. each time. Yeah, exactly. Um, so whenever the first rider goes on the first obstacle, that's when the second rider, right before that, the second rider goes as well. So it's just right after each other. But now we got... Jamie. Jamie on the water. Okay, lovely view, aerial shot from our drone cam. He is going to be powering on in to follow Jamie around that back corner and in to her first line of tricks. Signified, the scoring zone, that is, by the pool gap, the wrong way around. The, the two meatiest features that there are, they put those together just to make life really, really painful for all our riders. And you notice the... Uh, the, 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 the dressing that you could call it, the, um, the, the wash barriers, what do you call them? The, the wave breakers. The wave breakers, uh, adding a, a nice uh, scenic view to our lake as well as making things even more dangerous. If you come off early, you're ending up in the foliage. Exactly, yeah. and you stop and immediately. You stop <laughs> okay, Jamie. Let, we want a good run out, Jamie. We don't want to make this competition. We want it to go to three rounds just because that is going to be a bit more drama for you at home and our crowd here as we watch this Langefeld Open unfold. Jamie Lavina coming in. She boots in. Front side. Lip slide. Oh, front side kind of uh, into a 50-50. Then rotating out of that. Then she goes 540. Much cleaner this time. Can she stay in that left foot forward position? She goes right. It is going to be the air trick that we saw before. Is it going to be the roll to blind that took her down last time? Keeping it safe. She goes Ooh. for the cribs into the corner. Now, Jamie didn't get this far last time. Can she keep it together? Through the middle, onto the outside. That was nice. Choosing a different route yeah, at the start sure. of that incline. Now, coming into the corrugated pipe. That one is so fun to ride. Front three on. Much more what? like it from Jamie. Coming into the Nico. Back yes, forward Jamie to Semi off. Very nice and clean. Anna on the back stretch saw her getting a full run down, so she has to put it down now. As yeah, well. it was clean. Clean. Everything was tidy. Um, you've got things like the KGB from Anna that are going to be a little bit more tech, choosing a different route, just going full old school classic Henshaw style from the inside. Onto the KGB again. Little swiggle in the landing. Now coming up to the bump to Rainbow. A little bit of window winding on yes. that. It was just a straight 180. So it's tight so far if you are measuring how the how the two ladies went up until this point on this run. Oh, 270, she does so nice and clean. Now coming to the corrugated pipe just like Jamie. Back lip to 70. This could make the difference one way or the other. And now going rail to rail, 50 to front board, <laughs> to fakie. Ooh, Forget being that, a judge once yes, again. That is going to be a tight decision. So for that the is judges. unfortunate for Jamie, putting the pressure on herself by that early fall on a trick that she would normally stick nine times out of ten, I would say. Now we hand over to the judges, and any moment now, the decision, whichever way it's going to go, will pop up on your screens. So thanks for joining us. Let's say a few more shout outs to any of you out there. Okay. Rita Intensity, if that's your actual surname, that is incredible. Uh, Fritz Belly Button, once again, another incredible surname. Um, Mimi Pagnini, that would be the father of. That's uh, Claudia's father. What's go. up, Mimi? We've actually hung out in Italy last week. Thanks again for helping out at the shoot. I've actually drove with him the whole time because he's a nice driver. Nice. <laughs> um, uh, Soren Kracht, yes, indeed, you do need to get to Langenfeld. Very good call there. Uh, Gunther Oka getting behind Jamie. Make it a heat. Well, let's see which way the judges decide because if Jamie wins this, then we will, for the first time, go to a third round of riding between these two ladies, taking a little bit more time over this decision because, as, as, as we have both thought, I could not call it either way and I wouldn't want to. Which way is that going to go? 
All right, big shout out to everybody who's been joining us. Thank you for tuning in to the live stream. Please, if you have not yet already, take the link for this live stream, stick it on your socials and spread the word far and wide so we can get lots of you involved in the action. Here in Germany for the Langefeld Open 2022, brought to you by Liquid Force in conjunction with Follow, Wake and Nissan. Thank you to all of those guys and to UNIT and to every single one of the many people working here hard at Langefeld, including the Seuss clan, basically the, uh, the, the mafia of the cable wayboarding world. 100% all over the world, probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Clay Dunn, we've got all the family affair. I'm, I'm assuming that's a relative of Busty, who will be riding a little bit later. Who's judging Dom Hernler? Um, I like the way you're getting the backstory here. We have got CK, Andy, and Maurizio all in the hot seat in the judging. And Let's not forget, Anne uh, Fryer is a, uh, yeah, a, a help for the judges. And here we go. Do we have oh! a. Oh, we got Anna Nickstart taking it home on this round. So commiserations to Jamie Lapina. Um, it didn't come together on that first round, but that second run was beautiful, making the judges' decision a very tough one indeed. But Anna moves through to the next round, and our next head-to-head -head is the final head-to-head. Rivers head -to -head. and Katinka. The USA versus the Netherlands. Tell me a little bit about these two girls. How old are they? Where, where, where do they ride? How much have you have you seen of them on the scene so far? So Rivers, I met her last year, first time in Italy at a contest, and she is a super nice little lady. She kills it. She rides at Terminus Wake Park, I believe, close to Atlanta in the Shout states. Shout out to the guys from Terminus. Shout out to just Terminus. And um, yeah, she kills it. She has a very good style. And um, there is, we will see her in the future a lot of times, I'm sure. And Katinka from the Netherlands, not too far from here. I'm sure she gets to ride this park a little bit more often than Rivers does. And um, also has a nice style, super clean rider. And this is going to be an exciting heat. Here we go. Jake Heatley, the men's riding will be up soon after we are done with this first set of heats, head to heads with the ladies. Little Indy into the pool, going front three oh. off. Ooh, saving Just it. Just about muscles her way out of that deep squat. Toe back three, nose grab. That was tidy. Coming around the corner, going to hit the bump. Tantrum nuclear. Nice. Something different as well. We haven't been seeing any of our riders so far with anything like that. So the judges will like that. That will stand out from the rest of the crowd. Going. Rail to rail, fitty fitty, fitty fitty, Solid to front three. Ball. Going now. outside the cable now, booting onto that addition to the Ooh, 270 frame. off. This is tidy so far from Rivers. Now playing it safe on the down rail with a board slide to oh! 70. No! That was nice as well. I love it. The front falling. lipping onto the tail is always yes, nice. It always ends up on the easy. nose. But now Katinka coming in on the back straight into the pool, lining it up. It's super hard because it's right underneath the cable. It'd be tickle. Little popper in to front lip. She controls it well, moving to the inside of the cable for a toe side. Backside three, so matching trick for trick there from Rivers coming round in front of that crowd on the far side. Is it going to be the gap? Is it going to be She's entry? going to do the bump? gap. 50, 50, 180 out. Getting, screaming back to the cable, just to make sure she comes out of the drive tower in control for the next feature. That was Ooh, solid too, nice. really nice. 50-50 up on her toes, coming from outside to in. Corrugated pipe with a 50, was that a back three off? I think that was a three out of it, yeah. Coming out right foot forward so she can move through the other. Oh, was that back living onto the top then? Yes. Just cast by the shadow there. That is a big back lip to do. Off that mini booter. Oh, judges, judges, you've got tough call on your hand this first one. First round of three. Can we get this first set of riding to go to all three rounds? Terminus Week Park, getting behind your homegrown girl, Rivers. Hello to you guys. Hey, thank you to all of you joining us in the chat and this live feed of the 2022 Langenfeld Open brought to you by Liquid Force. It is a pleasure to be hosting. It is a privilege to have this guy, Felix Gorgi, next to me. I'm gutted that you're not riding, but it's nice to have you here. Um, we are just literally queuing up with all the big names. We have got 
John, not scared, drailing in the corner. He has made a request to come and chat about the Stuckey brothers because he says they're basically family. Of course. So they will be up. They are our first. What a, what a way to start the uh, heads-to-heads -heads off with our men. We've got we have up. got a result. And okay. Katinka is taking home the first round of this head-to-head. -head. Congrats, Katinka. Yeah, good Rivers, work, young lady. I mean, Rivers had a really good run until the last hit. If she can put it together, it's going to be a close one. So uh, this second round is going to be real interesting. Okay, jet ski ah, out there. She's getting the jet ski lift. That's nice. That is. That's the way to go. Save the walking. Keeps the boots on as well. So Katinka getting whistled back to the start dock. And then once she's there, we can get going with this second round of riding. Three rounds. Potential for three rounds. But if Katinka wins this next one, it will stay to the two rounds. She will move through. Rivers, unfortunately, that will be her job done. But we are not there yet. And from what we saw, once again, it was a tight call. Does Rivers have more in, more, more in the bank? Um, yes, she definitely has. Okay. I'm, I'm sh like I saw her practice yesterday, and there is some things she can still pull out. And um, unfortunately, she fell on that last hit. If she would have got that, it would have been a bit of already story, yeah. a really tight, uh, even more tight decision. And um, yeah, if she puts it together on this one, let's see if Katinka can put it together a second time. So um, yeah, we'll see. There we get the beautiful sweeping aerial shot from our drone guy. Chasing our riders around this first, this main cable here at Langefeld. Whereabouts are we in Germany? We're in the middle? We're pretty much, much in the middle. In yeah. the middle, middle west. So if you're uh, if you wanted to uh, get a little bit of an idea of where, where we are, we're kind of midwest Dusseldorf, the nearest big city. Yep. And uh, as Felix quite rightly said, they have literally just got a swarm of cable parks all over this country. It doesn't matter which part of Germany you go to, you will be finding a park. Okay, we wait for our now two ladies to head out. We have got Rivers and Katinka battling it out to get through to the next round. Rivers on the water now, making her way back to the, stri to the first feature. Wetting all the obstacles on this last section. Do not get stuck. Right, some more shout outs as Rivers makes her way down to the back straight and into the scoring zone. Uh, Yannick Baton, thank you for all the chat and the good words, the kind words. Just in Yannick's opinion, you don't get any better judges than the three we have up there CK, Andy, and uh, Mauricio, uh, which is as we thought it, as we called it. Great job to the whole LAO crew. A lot of work, but it looks incredible. So that is from Terminus Wake Park. Thank you very much. Yeah, you you have no idea what goes on behind these events. And we're lucky enough to um, be sat up front, taking all the glory. But the number of people working behind the scenes, not just on the event, but to keep this huge park running as well. Okay, here we go. Rivers coming in. What's going to be her first hit? Which way is she going to go? Down the middle. She goes Booter into the pool. Indy tickle. Little Indy. Front three out. That yep. was way cleaner than the one... Before going back side, 540, oh, nice and clean. Oh, oh, oh. That was sick. Now, tantrum nuclear right there, nice and clean as well. Coming around the motor tower. Already up in the game, right in front of us now as she moves to the outside of the cable. Solid, fully locked in, 50 50, the whole way through that transfer hit. Tippity tap back board to back lip, then to Simile out, moving onto the inside of the cable. She stays toe side, does a little transfer to 180 to 180. That is that much more like it from a Rivers. Stand up run, super clean, full pulls everywhere. That's what we want to see. But Katinka is coming to the first obstacle as well. She saw that she needs to put it down here on this try. And um, yeah. Little indie into it, taking the bumper oh, to so front not, lip. Not quite staying full pull, just coming off a little bit before. Going oh, toe back five the ladies as are going well. for it. She knew she had to put it down right there. Now she's going bumper to rainbow, 180 on, 180 off. Nice and clean. It was a little bit more controlled, that one, on the rainbow, compared to last time round as well. 
So the judges will notice that she didn't go for get what she was going for. That kind of does sway the uh, the opinion. But that looking good. Are we going to see this meaty back lip onto the Nico wall? That back is such a lip. big transfer. I mean, that was <laughs> a stand-up run just as much as it was from River. Um, I'm glad we are not the judges. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to call it. What I would like to call is seeing these girls go for a third round of riding. Let's see if Rivers can get in. We have got... The judges just sitting tight and going through their decisions right now. They'll be right back with us. You'll see the score pop up on the board. If you are just joining us, thank you. My name is Matt Crowhurst. I am kindly joined by the one and only Felix Gorgi, who unfortunately took a dig. Was it, was it a back edge on something? Did you just smash yourself at the <laughs> no, end of the row? I actually uh, went wake skating this week. You silly, silly boy. I know, but it's just too fun to do. And, and so, so you, did, you did a comedy run off the board. Kind yeah. of board. Was it on a rail? Was it on a no, skate trick? I actually I landed on a flat trick and kind of fell off with my head first and uh, my helmet and my vest just hit. Yeah, just impacted me too hard <laughs> in the water. And ever since I have a sore neck and that's why I decided not to ride today. Um, yeah, if I have a big film project uh, planned, I had to skip this one here, but that's why I'm here commentating. Which is um, all, all, all good for us and you guys out there. Thank you, Jason Stuckey, getting more props from the crew out there, for all the team that make it happen. Um, we are going to try and have a chat to a few of the riders throughout the rest of the day. We have obviously got an absolute ton of riding still to go. We have got eight head-to-head -head heats for the men. We had a mass of riding. I think it was seven men's heats, each with seven riders in. I can't do the math, I'm more of a linguist, but that was a lot of riders. But we got through that this morning, we're now into the head-to-head -head stage, which makes it very easy viewing, doesn't it? When you've got heats, you can kind of get lost in how the riders are competing against each other. Um, how do you find riding head-to-head -head versus heats? I feel like heat is a lot easier. It's, like it's you, less intense. It's less intense. You just look at everything, <laughs> at every one ride. You can also just do a little safe run, and you could be winning with your safe, safe run, run as well. Yeah. As in the head-to-head, -head, you just have to put it down. But here we actually see here we uh, go. Rivers taking the second round, so we're going to see both of those riders go again in a third run. That, and that's the first time that has happened so far. It has been clean sweeps for the first three groups so far. Just to confirm who has been going through to the next round, it is Claudia Panini making it through, then a Salome Luli. And Anna Nixted, those are our first three ladies making it through to the next round. And we are having a battle here between the USA and the Netherlands. Rivers Hendrick, Hedrick and Katinka Buting. So far, it's one apiece, as you can see on your screens. Katinka and Rivers making a bit of drama for it, of it for us here, for you guys at home, wherever you are in the world, say hello. Solid run, Rivers, super clean. So that is uh, Rivers Home Park giving her props. Um, the design of the course was made by Unit Park Tech. They absolutely killed it. Um, also, thanks to the whole Langenfeld crew who set it up during the night in the dark. And uh, It's not easy. You, you've been in there. You've been, you've been in wetsuits with anchors, with ropes, yeah. moving things around. It is not an easy thing no. to do. But, yeah, big shout out to the crew, David Verven, uh, Connie Lightford, he actually, I think we're going to see him ride in the head to heads here as well later on. He designed the course, they set it all up, so big ups to you guys. But now we're going to see Rivers go again in her third run. A lot of love for Rivers out there in the internet ether. So thank you guys for showing some support. We'll give you all shout outs as much as we can to Route while trying to keep up pace with this rather insane, intense riding that is unfolding here. For those of you who are asking or are thinking, the guys riding will start straight after the girls. And as mentioned, we have got eight pairs going against each other and starting off with none other than, than the Stucky crew. We have got Gavin and Trent who unfortunately for them drew each other out of the hats to battle this out as our very first men's head to head. Unfortunate for them, cool for our drama and our story. We've all been out here since, well, lots of you guys have been out here a little while. Bunch of us arrived on Thursday to watch the incredible premiere of Rivers Aravon. going Indy up, 360 out of the pool again. Do we see the toe back five? 
Landing a little back heavy, but lands it still. She going for the nuclear tantrum again. Yes, she does. Nice and clean. Okay, now both ladies have been schooling this particular part of the course. This first section out of the drive tower right in front of the homegrown crowd. 50-50-50. Yes. 50 front three. Nice and clean. Now coming into the gap to A-frame. Going board slide back lip to 70. And this nice sweeping movement from in to out from Rivers, and which the judges will love. Goes with a fi front one, 50 switch, back one, out. That so a wobble. Works. Maybe that has left the door open for Katinka. The little bit of a butt yes. check on that toe side backside, five. We've seen both girls pull that out in the previous run. Now, just for, for you guys clear, it, it, you, we're not counting one run against the other. It is just the bout that we're looking at. And here we have Katinka going in, front lipping. Also slipping off a little early. Yeah. And, um, oh, oh no. no, cannot land the toe back five, unfortunately. So River's going to advance to the next round. Yeah, that is seriously, seriously gutting for Kinsinka. Both of those girls running. No one wants to, and, you, and as much as a rider, you, 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 want, you want a win-win, don't you? You don't want to win by default, which... Exactly. Yeah, like which you, is the, yeah. You want the other guy or the other person to do good as well. Like you're all you're in this together and there um, we go. Seeing so a little bit of high five action from Rivers as she flies past Katinka. Katinka will get the pickup back and a cheer from the crowd as she comes in. River. Nice and clean rivers. Making it through to the next round. Okay, so in case you're wondering, the uh, the weather has been a little bit changeable here, but it's about 90 degrees, right? What about now? It's it's moderate, uh, it's pleasant, yeah. there's sunshine out. It is good enough considering the storms we had yesterday. Hey, I will actually leave you guys. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Sean hey. Dryling is going to jump in for me. Felix, thank Thanks you so for much for joining me. us. I might join you should guys we, should we later let, should we let, let him wave? Bye-bye. See you guys later. So Enjoy the show. Thank you very much, Felix. We are joined by greatness, um, and we are being left by greatness, but only to be replaced by yet more greatness with John Dryling over here. I tell you what, before you jump in, because I need a wee stop. I'm not going to last at all. Could we have a little break on the screen? And we will be right back with you. Got to look at you and not me on the screen. Thank you for joining us. Those of you who are out there, please sit tight. Don't go anywhere. Copy that link from your YouTube page that you're watching this, however you are watching it, phone, tablet, computer, please stick it on your social media. Call up your mate, say, what are you doing? Come watch the Weightbody. Let's have a Langenfeld open Weightboard party at our house. Crack a few beers if you are of age and some popcorn. Get out and join us for the rest of the show. We are going to be going right the way through to 7 o'clock. We are about to kick start this. We have got eight heats of heads to heads of the very, very best in the business. We've got John Dryling, who's about to crack on and join us here in the commentary booth. My name's Matt Crowhurst. I'm going for a wee. See you right back.
Welcome back, folks, and uh, welcome to the hot seat. We saw John earlier uh, doing the intros before this competition kick started. What are you saying about that last round? Wow, I mean, for me, that was super exciting to watch. Rivers is a close friend of mine from America, and, you know, Katika, that back lip to step down and her last hit in a run was probably the, my favorite hit I've seen the women do out here. Um, so... It was super close. Uh, it could have gone either way. Katika had a heavy run, but she, Rivers played it like chess, and honestly, they just like put down the right tricks, and it worked out in her favor. So all of that should be some insane inspiration for you ladies out there to get on the water because these girls are incredible, and the r riding from the women continues. It's a super final time with the four riders who made it through from those head-to-head. -head. We have got in this order. Claudia Panini, Salome Luli, Anna Nickstad, and Rivers Hedrick, who are going to be battling out. They get two runs each. Best run counts. Simple as that. Where's your money? I mean, Claudia has, uh, probably Claudia at this point, she's been so consistent. She's so motivated. Um, she has the experience, you know. But then you have the veteran Anna, and you have Rivers on the come up. And, uh, yeah, I really think... You know, it could be anyone, but here we are. We're underway, and that's Claudia with the 360 out of the pool, linking up with this kicker here right here. Oh. <laughs> full full, full, full um, back roll, backside 360 in that KGB, looking pretty smooth. Now moving to the inside of the cable. This causing a, the, knocking you about a little bit, that bump. Yeah, it's super steep, so it's uh, really hard to keep control on that, but uh, it really shows, you know, the people who do. And here's Claudia sending a huge... Toe side front roll, kind of casing a little bit, not it, quite making the distance. It wasn't a solid landing as we saw from her before, but once again, these riders will get two cracks of the whip. Back board. Oh, that's a lot of moving around with that board. That was cool. Back board to back lip, then to front 270 out. 50 50, 50 50, 360 outs. Room for improvement, but solid. Yeah, Claudia has uh, been showing very consistent, very much control. So I think if she. T fixes up that front roll and finds that landing grip. She's going to be a, a tough one in this competition. But already a stand-up run still. Still clean. So here we go. We got the second rider coming in. So Salome locking out arguably one of the favorites. I mean, all of these girls have well within them to get onto the podium. As we can see, they're in the final. But Salome, oh, pushing out Marie Rougier, her fellow French woman. A little bit of a butt check on that 540. Here we go, coming into the bump and showing some control. And that one with the 270 on, 270 off onto the rainbow. Now choosing the outside rail. Now, I'm not going to do the commentator's kiss of death that I do here. I was about to say she's been locking that in every single time, and she does it again. Now moving to the outside of the cable. This is quite a leap up there. You've got to tuck your feet up. Oh, that I is like nice. that. I like that she gaps all the way to the end. That's pretty cool with the big back lip. And there, the rail to rail off the creeper, front 180. That's a lot of control right there. That's a, I think that's going to score a pretty good run. A little bob on the, bobble on the kicker, but other than that, because those really sorts solid. of things, as 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 much as the unit rails are obviously beautifully smooth, and you're not going to snag them and think you you could kneecap yourself on that sort of thing. That that little creeper. Oh, 100 yeah. percent. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it's definitely something that it's challenging. If you run into the wall, it might bounce you off of the rail early. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's. Uh, Definitely adds a level of difficulty, and it's really a, a mental game because, you know, you don't want to, like, bend your knee too much because you can run into the wall as well. So. <laughs> so first two riders done. We'll be moving on to the next of our four in this super final, Anna Nickstad from the USA. So we've got two people from across the pond, two riders from the USA. Then we've got France and Italy. Now it's on to, I, we, we say the veteran. That doesn't mean that she's actually old. She's just been around doing this for a while. She's competed well, at the she, highest level. She won this event in 2017. She won the first ever Langenfeld Open five years ago. So she definitely has the experience she needs to, to win. And she definitely has the tricks as well. So, again, it all comes down to who can lay it down. So we're about to find out right here. Talking to uh, Felix about the whole head-to-head -head versus heat system, we, we, which way do you prefer? Obviously, for the entertainment, the head-to-head -head is great. But as a rider, does the heat system make it I easier for you? Um, I think it, it, the head-to-head, -head, the way that we do it here is very different because it's every run counts. It's best two out of three. I think that's super fun. That's super exciting. Um, I always love that format, but head-to-head -head can be pretty harsh. You know, like we saw Katinka get taken out, and to me, she was, she was one of my favorites. So... Um, it, it, it's fun to ride in as a rider, but it's also hard because if you get a really challenging person, you know, then there's nothing you can do. Yeah. 
Try to lay it down. Okay, we have got Anna Nixta going from the outside. That was nice. Front lip in, then into a uh, back lip. Getting pulled to the inside of the cable. KG. Oh, no, oh, no, no, no. Oh, stands some, up. <laughs> some serious grit to pull herself out of that <laughs> hole. So that trick possibly won't count. Lovely stalled out. Backside one. Kind of a mini shifty onto that as well. Front side then into that backside. Yeah, so we'll see if she can make it up here in the rail section. She's definitely got the tech she needs. Here it is. Coming in with the backside transfer. 270 to front board. Spinning off of that, locking that in really good, and now coming in on her heels with a back lip, 270 off. Kind of spinning different directions on those first two rails and linking up with the last rail, going rail to rail, front board to blind. So unfortunately, that butt check on a trick that she does nine out of ten times, right? Um, uh, causing an upset in that particular run. The rest of it was tidy as you like. So great work from Anna Nickstad. She'll have to come around and lay it down in her second run. All riders in the superfinals getting two runs. Best run counts. Here we go. Here we go. Rivers Hendrick. Oh, not the cleanest three right there out of the pool. Looks like the nerves getting to some of these women. And, of course, oh. that is such a close line from the pool into the kicker. And she's not able to link it up. So... This looks like it may be a throwaway run for her, but maybe she's going to try some, some rail hits to get a potential score for the podium. Yeah, you just don't know what's going to happen in the second run at all. So she might as well just try and bust it out and get something down on paper. Not coming together on that first run for Rivers Hedrick, though. She will have to wait for her second run. A little bit of a practice on the fine rail. That's the, the, the West Rock um, stepped rail combo. And then they start coming in. She will hit the dock and we will swim things around. So we sit tight on the final call from the judges on how the riders fared. They are working hard to keep the scoring coming through as quickly as possible. Well, So while we wait for the judges to make their final call on those first rides from our ladies in this women's super final, I started looking at some old uh, footage, old movies, when we were coming to um, Raph's premiere on Thursday. Just, he's doing all of this, and he's quite a pivotal figure in rail riding. I thought, it, it'd be interesting to go, how far back did rail riding feature? And then I started looking at, at your hits its and, your, and your, your old school movies, and Barley was hitting some crazy rails back in 95 when Hit It came out. Do you remember that Beatle hit he does? Have you seen the movie Hit It? Come on, John. Come uh, on, John. I've definitely seen the movie, but it's been a while, and I'm not sure which one is So, where. So he puts <laughs> rails on the front of his Beetle and floats it out. The Volkswagen Beetle. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, the Beetle, the yeah, car. The yeah, car, and sorry. they have two, so, two pipes going over like a no, race. Ollie, just get yeah. boosted. i definitely seen that. Yeah, that's, that's pretty wild. Um, yeah, I mean, Byerly, their whole crew, you know, led the way with rail riding and just jibbing docks and everything. Docks and, and docks, as he would say. For those of you out there who would like a little bit of historical uh, involvement in the sport, there are some old school movies that they, I mean, this is, before, Cable was around. Um, in fact, great Cable se section with Shannon Best, you know, when he's on the short line in one of the old school movies. So we've all seen Parks do the super, super short line on the Cable. Yeah. Sh uh, Shannon Best was the first person to do it. Yeah, we call that the Indian line. The Indian line, yeah, just going up as high as the cable. So, uh, yeah, check out some old school movies. They are something to behold. Okay, we've got scores in right in front of us. Claudia Panini coming out on top by a good nine, point, uh, nine points almost. Salome Luli, she's in second. Anna Nickstad in third. And as we expected, Rivers Hedrick not coming up with the trumps on that very first run. So she's sitting in fourth place. Those are our first run scores. Great work, judges, to come out with those points, those scores, as quickly as they have. Now, I wonder, we should have found this out before, will they be switching the running order? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, they didn't switch them after the head-to-heads when different riders won. They kept the same. So it looks like it's going to stay the same again. And Claudia is coming off first. So she must be feeling pretty comfortable right here, having a solid run and knowing, you know, if she just improves that, that front roll and locks into that down landing ramp, so even more improve her score. So I'm curious to see, does she step it up or does she just try to clean it up with the same tricks because she's already got that high score? Yeah, I, I think that that she would probably keep it the same up until the Felix. Yeah, I, she, yeah I, I would. Yeah. If I was her, I'd keep it the same, you know, and just like try to lock everything in. But she has lots of tricks, so you never know. 
All right, we are looking um, from the start dock side of the cable to the far side of this cable number one at Langenfeld here for 2022 Langenfeld Open brought to us by Liquid Force in conjunction with Follow Wake and Nissan. Thank you to those guys for making it happen and of course UNIT for helping put together this monumentally awesome course. Here we go. Italy on the water. Claudia Panini, is she going to take the top spot? Here is now when it decide. Lovely Indy Shifty into the pool. Early handle pass three, keeping the flow. Not much time, as John says, between the ball and this kicker hit. KGB solid. Man, she looks like she's feeling it for sure. She's definitely, she's definitely dialed right now. Here we go, coming into the bump. Going with that toe 270, getting on the tail. I like that, how she uh, sticks her board off and focuses on putting a weight onto the tail of that board. And here it is. Will she make it clean to the landing ramp? And there's the big front roll, and she, she full pulls that rail, so... Still a little bit of a case, but I, but made it all the way through. So I don't think that's going to hurt her too much. And there's a board slide to front board, 270 off. And here we go, the big red rail. It's really hard to come from across the cable. And she does a toe 270, rail to rail, locks it in. That was a big step up to me on the red rail, going from 50-50 to 50-50. And going hard away 270 to back lip. And she she locked that in, so the pressure is on right now. So when we say hard way 270 with that, what we're saying is that is the tail of the board. Most of the board is having to get lifted up and over the rail. If you do an easy two way 70, it's a lot easier to roll that board over. So amazing step up. Salami Lele now coming in. She's sitting in second place at the moment with current scores. A little bit of a butt check out of the pool. There we go, cleaning it up there. And what I really like is she, she always out of the side of the pool, 180, and does a front three off. I, I didn't think of that line or seen other people do the line, so that's a really creative move. Almost a 360 with 180 out. Lovely transfer there. Solid handle pass, running away smooth. Not too much rotation on the box either. Going from outside, she goes front, front 50-50, front board, 270 out. Oh no, waving her hands. I'm Worried that that's not what she was after. There's oh. that big back lift, showing that control. And here it's really tight coming into this rail. And it looks like she's not going to get onto the creeper like she planned because of going blind off of that back lip. I think threw her off a little bit. I'm not sure she wanted 270, but that's so going to be unfortunate. That is a shame for Salome after such a tight first run, not getting an improvement on her first run score. We're saying unofficially, of course, at the moment because the judges have the final count on that. And Claudia coming into a big old cheer. She definitely improved her first run hit. Okay, we have got a few uh, shout outs to go while our next rider comes in to play. So, uh, Yannick, he thinks Claudia's got it. She has a good shot right now with that run. And Miss Nickstad out on the water. She will be making her way around to the back straight while we have a little bit of chance to say hello. Yannick Patana, happy birthday to a camp. Uh, so I like the way you're just chatting amongst yourselves on the chat as well. <laughs> like, hey, don't worry about us, guys. Just running an event here. Um, and anybody else out there that we can say hello to? Love to be able to watch this. Rooting for everyone. Basically visiting in-laws right now. So that's RG out there. Cheering you guys on. Thank you very much to you, sir or lady. Johnny Joe, whoever you are. Hello. And we got a rider coming around into play. So we've got Anna Nickstad. She is our penultimate rider on the water. We've still got uh, Rivers Hedrick, who did not have the best first run, not pulling it together as she did in the qualifying rounds to get her to this point. Anna, still got some room in the tank. If anybody can come up with the goods to beat that run from that rather incredible run from Claudia, it is her. But at the moment, we're looking at Claudia and Salome. Those are our top two. Anna, if she, nothing changes from now on, that will be her in third place. Going outside... That was oh, more solid. Really more locking football. that in, which will help this KGB because that's what she was looking for. And still a little bit of a butt check. It's really hard coming off that left rail, coming back, and you lose your tension, you know, with that line. But here she goes coming to this bump. No, Anna, Anna, Anna. Oh, my gosh. Oh, nice for her to see. First thing she does is acknowledge the crowd who are all getting behind her. That is, that is gutting for Anna next time. We know what a insanely um, awesome rider she is and just kind of th that just proves what we've been saying about those little bump things you cannot c easily control no yeah you'll definitely see you know in practice a lot of riders getting out of control landing on their butts landing on their bellies and uh it's pretty pretty challenging it looks it looks easy it looks much easier than it is this whole entire course does um but you know it's been super cool to see these girls just charging at it you know not holding back taking all these gnarly lines and here we go we got 
The last rider is Rivers Hendricks. Can she do it? Here we go. Big gap in the pool and doing the front side three. Oh, oh Rivers, no. Just going down. Oh, that is gunning for the young lady and for Team USA out there. Commiserations to her. She's made it to the super final of what is arguably one of the best events that you'll find with the best riders you'll find on the planet. So as much as she'll be gutted, there is a lot to be said for that. Okay, we are going to go to the scores very shortly. Hello to you guys at home. My name is Matt Crowhurst. This guy be, of course, you know he is, John Trailing as we bring the drone back to have a refuel. We are going to have a chance to say hello to you guys. Um, we, we're going to say the, the score is going to remain the same after the first run, unofficially, of course, right? Uh, yeah, I definitely think... I, I can't imagine the positions changing at this moment. So, so those first scores were Claudia on top, and then Salome Lully uh, coming in second place, and then Anna Nixdai third, and Rivers Hedricks coming in fourth. It doesn't look like things are going to change. Unofficially from us guys, where we're sat, of course, as judges have a better view. They've got all the experience over there. And hey, from... Uh, I was talking to Felix a lot about the judging and, and how these guys are there. They're, they're some of the best in the business. A lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, a lot of passion up there. John, you have taken on head judge at, at big events before. Talk us through that process. You, you're a fan of wakeboarding. You want to make it work. But, of course, it's a subjective scoring. It, it's your opinion at the end of the day based on some parameters to which you're working. It, it's not nice being put in the firing line as a judge because sometimes you can get some grief. So why do you do it? Yeah, it's hard. I mean, I think these judges just love wakeboarding. Um, you know, they're, they're more passionate than anyone about the sport, and they want to just make sure that, you know, the, the riders who deserve to be on the top do end up on the top. So it is subjective, but at the same time, there's a lot of criteria you can use to break it down, and uh, these are by far the best judges in the world. So I'm uh, super stoked on the judging panel, and I definitely think they're going to make the right decision. And, yeah, so it's uh, I think they just love it more than anyone, though, you know? Yeah, and that's, that's the ticket to it. To, to all of this, particularly at this particular place, everyone working here, um, and me included for this weekend, absolutely love what's going on out there, and it comes through in the vibe of the event. Talking about judging, oh, hang on, confirmation right there. All right, so up on your sc screens right now, you can see confirmation of the women's super final, and a big congratulations to Team Italy, uh, 2022 Langefeld Open champion in the women's. Claudia Panini from Italy with a monster score as well. Salome Lully coming in second from France. Anna Nixtad third and Rivers Hedrick taking the four spots. Well done to those ladies. Amazing job. Okay, what I was about to say, because uh, it was the reasons that you said in terms of the judging that you wanted to just help out to make these events all they could be. We get that in the UK. You get a lot of people moaning from the sidelines and not getting involved to help out. So if you are at your local weight park, boat park, and you want to make the sport better, get involved and start learning how to judge. And you can put these events on because it's not all about contests, but they are good for progression. They're good for the scene. They're good for the community. Yeah. It's, it's good for the sport to grow as a whole. Yeah, I love, I love contests so much because that's where I met all my best friends, you know. I met them coming to events like this. I get to go back and see them again. And even as a, a Grom wakeboarding, when I was riding the beginner division, I made uh, two of my best friends, and we went on snowboard trips together and wakeboarded together for years. So it's great for building friendships. It's great for setting goals and giving yourself something to drive towards. And it, I think it's super... Super good to have something like that in mind where, you know, it motivates you every day to get on the water. And, yeah, so I love events, and I love. I think they're super important for the grassroots and for the kids coming up. And so, yeah, if you have any questions you want to put on any events, you know, you know how to reach me. So. Yes, get in touch with this man. He knows all. Okay, let's see who is out there. So, uh... Uh, um, hi, 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 baby. I, I'm that's assuming that's not wife. to me. I'm assuming that's not to me. Okay, because that would have been awkward. <laughs> my wife. <laughs> my wife. Hi, Jess. <laughs> Wish you were here. She came to the first Lane Open in 2017, but couldn't make it this time because of work. Hello, Mr. Dryling. And who else we got there? Aaron Gunn. Better than having no stream at all. Big ups to everyone making it happen. Thank you very much. Gunther Oka saying hello again. Daniel S. Jarrett, great work, fellas. Such an amazing event. So fun to watch from the States before we get the cable open for the day. Thank you for joining us. Um, which cable? Daniel, is that West That's West, West Rock, yeah. West that's Rock. the owner of West Rock, yeah. Yes, Daniel, because we've been in touch before. Hello, boss from West Rock. It's good to have one of your very own named features out involved in the course. Uh, okay, Mystical Beaver. What a name. John Trailing is a legend. And to get that kind of um, applauded from a, such a name as a Mystical Beaver, I don't know. Luca Kid, what's up, bro? 
How are you doing? I was watching some very cool footage of you um, foiling behind all manner of different boats here, courtesy of Mr. Grace. Okay, so there's a few shout outs. Thank you for guys joining us. Once again, share this far and wide. Uh, to get you all joining in on the stream. So we are going to be right back out with you very shortly with our men's contest. We are starting off with, let's see, it is the Stucky brothers going at it. Gavin and Trent unfortunately drew each other's names out of the hats. They will be battling it out in the first of our eight head-to-heads. We've got that much riding from the very best in the business coming your way very shortly. We're going to have a little peace out break for a moment. We'll be right back with you just before the men's head-to-head. Yeah, can you just listen in for a little bit and just tell us what is it? Thanks. Man. Here we go. We are with our very first head-to-head -head heat of our men's here at the 2022 Langenfeld Open, brought to you by Liquid Force. I am joined in the commentary box myself, Matt Crowe, joined with John Dryling. Hey, John. You excited about this one? These are your boys out on the water. Man, I'm so excited about this one. Uh, yeah, I've seen these guys. I've probably rode with these guys every day for the last 10 to 12 years and uh, seen them come up. And it's so cool to see them come over. They've dominated in America to see them come over and, you know, try to make a name in Europe. And uh, I think a lot of people are impressed with their, with their riding and practice, but uh, it's unfortunate they have to go head to head against each other. And um, is their riding very different? Do they do they have a lot of similar tricks? Do they have very different styles? Yeah, 100%. Trent is definitely a uh, big kicker and air trick rider and really creative on the rails. But Gavin has uh, the most technical rail riding and the best composition I've seen in a long time. So they ride very differently. One of them won worlds for traditional. One of them won worlds for features only for WWA. Are so that kind of explains it. Oh, my it. gosh. And here we go. Trent, there you go with that back lip coming back down. And then the front two to switch front board. And then, oh, this is Gavin with the melon toe back seven. Gavin leaking that up. And there you go about the composition with that back lip and then that switch front board. And uh, he's feeling it with that slappy. Here he goes. Is it going to be the s mope Gavin dropping that down. So uh, here we go. This is where Gavin really shines in the tech rare riding. I love that trick every single time I've seen it. Like that early hand of pass and just thinking that he's going to rotate but doesn't. Okay. Yeah, we saw him in the earlier rounds go into the corrugator, but like it's stepping it up, taking a harder line with that rail box rail, leaking that up good, and then the front board the other way, and there the composition, as I mentioned, 270 both ways on those, getting tech, going big, doing rail to rail, so he put down a run, and every run counts in this head-to-head, -head, which is what's so exciting. Wow, that is a way to get things going from our men. Popping out into the pool, he goes.
back lip, then keeps on rotating into that uh, front board, then comes round, right foot forward, stalling out the KGB, landing so, so deep, but all intentional. And we saw the air trick from Gavin. It's going to be air trick crazy from Trent as well. Here we go. We call this oh! so stylish. We call that the black meth to front to blind because he grabs backhand method. And uh, here we go with the rail to rail. Oh, there's the creative right now. I was talking about the back 270 staying wrapped, unwrapping it, and taking the same line as Gavin, I believe, with this rail box rail, the other foot forward, 270. Oh, wow. Judges and commentators alike having to have an A game on. Back lip in a 50-50, then in the front three off the end. Wow! <laughs> what a heat. So, uh... Our wow. judges will have to be writing down Those like are... the clappers on this. So, I, I, I mean, all of it was my favorite, but this right in front of us, the way these two session, the, uh, the, the incline on the nearest us, straight yeah. out of the tower, so much creativity. And then that being wrapped and then over crooking, tapping and then wrapping back yeah. out. Trent's known for his crazy wrapped tricks, and you got to witness one of them there. But uh, pretty cool, they both did the same hit on, one's goofy, one's regular, super interesting. So they kind of did the same hit on the second feature after that rail to rail, so that's yeah, going to be close. All right, we've got a score come through. So it is Trent Stuckey out in front by actually quite a sizable margin by 12 points as far as the judges are concerned right there. But we see from where yeah. you're concerned, that is a first win to Trent Stuckey. Gavin has got it all to do. To me, you see that I think the judges had to get super critical on those runs because of how good they were done. And Gavin's rail to rail hit where he does the front board pass and hop over, he didn't quite lock into that second yeah. rail. And I think that's what made that difference. So we'll have to see if Gavin can put, put down what he needs to do to step it up and uh, take out Trent. So thank you for joining us, if you just are. We are the 2022 Langenfeld Open. This is a live stream with myself, Matt Crowhurst, and John Dryling as your commentary team. Thank you, John, for joining us. John, uh, not having the best time of it in the riding, but that's the way it goes. But hey, uh, of all the people on the planet, you are a fan of wakeboarding first and foremost. So to be here watching it, just as was he? Oh, I'm so happy just to be watching all these guys ride. It's so exciting for me. You know, I mean, I'm friends with every single person in this contest, so every heat is emotional to me and gets me <laughs> so hyped to watch it go down. And, you know, I really can't pick a favorite in any of these heats, but it's just super cool to see everyone have ride their best like that, like those boys just did, put down clean runs and uh, leave it up to the judges. So I hope... Hope we see a lot more of that and a lot of more good, clean runs. Now, can Gavin make a battle of this against his brother? Trent taking first blood out in front. And as John said, to the layman, it all looked pretty mind-blowing. But there were just a few little disconnects with Gavin. Not making it to the end of a rail ride, the one in front of us here, in front of the drive tower. So he needs to tidy that up and add some a little bit more. You'll know best. Is there a lot more in the tank in terms of tech? Oh, he's definitely got the tricks. On the rails, he's, you know, there's so much more he can do. And in qualifiers, we saw him do that right away, locked in, and add something more to it. So hopefully we see him throw that down. And right here on the pool, I know he's got something more. I think he's going to go for it right here because he... And there it is, the back lift 270, linking that up with the front oh. 270. That is, that is heavy right there with the back nine. Oh, I Told you he had a drop in the back nine. Wow, Gavin. Sorry if I'm yelling, guys, at home. <laughs> You've just blown eardrums. No, that's good. I got that's excitable. And oh, the s mode. Super clean. Stalling out that rotation. Rotating into the handle, making it so difficult so at the end of that s mode. He's feeling it right now. And this is the trick that... Oh, and there's the... Oh, there's the extra you that's were talking about. That's what I was talking about. So spinning that extra rotation and blocking in as well. Already, this is a better. Going shifty out of there, that. There, that style on the, on the shifty coming out of it. And here, just locking in the front three. Front 270 looks like change up to board slide coming down. So that's an improvement. That's a, a doubt. That's an improvement. Without I mean, that, there was improvements all across the board there. You know, he played it safe with the corrugated because he had such heavy hits early on. And I think that was a very smart move. Trent. Oh, tippy tapping all over the place out of that. So that is beautiful once again. And Trent going to the Crail Moby Dick, locking that one in. And uh, that's a really technical kicker hit. And uh, super stylish. And here's the super stylish air trick we saw from Trent in the last run. Wow. That was too easy. <laughs> Two tree trunks, bolts landing right there. That is ridiculous how solid that was. Okay, going the other way. 
Changing it up, going in the back oh. 270, <laughs> huge. That rail is skinny. You do not want to be getting that wrong. Wow, Trent's changing a lot up this run, and judges love to see that. 180 onto the kicker. We haven't seen that from other riders. Back 270, so... Oh! <laughs> so where any mere mortal would be passing that handle to go back round into that front lip. He stays wrapped up and just unravels himself to come out the other side. So I do have to say that I think Gavin had the tech in that run, but... It looked like he was a little loose on that last rail hit, and Trent had such stylish air tricks, changed it up, did stuff we did not expect coming, and uh, did some different lines. We had a scene like that, the, that front stretch. So, wow. This one's, this one's close, but yeah, I mean... Yeah, what a way to start our head-to-head -head rounds. Trent, Trent maybe was a little cleaner, but Gavin had the tech, and uh, Gavin put that pressure on, though. Wow, that was exciting. I have no idea who it's going to be. Okay, for those of you um, from mainland Europe, we've got a battle royale uh, from, uh, between Germany and Austria. We've got Hans Konrad Landorf, or Connie, as I've been told he is nicknamed, against the one and only Timo Campbell, who, uh, who John has got tipped with the top, roughly speaking. But, I mean, do you still think that? I've just seen the boys go with what they just did then. Well... You know, see, the thing about Timo is he's got that experience. The boys make, you know, I wasn't sure if they could put it down when it mattered, but they both put it down, both runs, when it mattered, going against some of the fiercest competition, being their brother. So, yeah, I mean. We sit here with bated breath. The Stucky brothers giving the judges a right old headache. They have got a hard time. Here we go. So, oh, okay, that is close. Can you see it up there? Yeah, so it looks like by point two points, Trent taking that one. And uh, wow, Gavin really put it on the line. It really comes down to that last little bobble Gavin had. Trent played it smart, maybe a little too safe, but it worked out this time for him. So we'll see Trent on that next round. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to see who is going up against Trent, whether it's Connie, a super creative up-and-coming rider, or Timo Kappel, who is a powerhouse. That is unbelievable that that run from Gavin is not getting him through even the first head-to-head -head round of riding. We've got more head-to-head -head still yet to come. These guys, uh, well, eight pairs, so 16 riders will get knocked down to eight and then knocked down again to a super final. So we've got one more semi-final round yeah, it's, still to come. It's true that that one, uh, you know, you, that would have won the contest, uh, you know, in the first year of laying front open. But what's what's really cool is that those boys got to come over here, and uh, Gavin really got to show that he can hang with some of the some yeah. of the riders here, and he can definitely put down on one day of practice on the craziest setups in wakeboarding. So. I think that was a, a big proving moment for Gavin, and he really stepped up and, and showed you guys what he's made of. So, unfortunately, not going through, but I still think it's a win for Gavin. Yeah, uh, Yannick Patan has, has uh, called it right. We wanted a third run, because imagine what a third run would have done. Of course, we all <laughs> wanted that third run. <laughs> okay, commiserations to young Gavin. Well done to Trent. He moves through to the next round. That is our first name up in the next round of heads to heads. We have got... Connie, we should see the German crew go a bit crazy for this rider who is out right now. So I will say, during COVID, I didn't mean to make it over here for a couple years. And uh, I saw Connie's clips randomly popping up on Instagram. Um, you know, knowing all the riders before that, I was just blown away, wondering where this kid came from. And I got to meet him in person and ride with him. And every single time he's on the water, it makes me want to wakeboard. It's so fun. It's so stylish. And I do think he's the most creative up and coming guy right now that, that will do things that, you know, they always give you ideas. They always make you want to wakeboard. So I'm super stoked to see what he puts down. Just 21 years old, young Connie, and Harold's from, well, here, Langenfeld is his home cable. So maybe a little bit of an advantage right there. There certainly should be an awful lot more noise from the crew on the shores to get behind one of their own. Here he comes, eyeing up, first of our features. As we have mentioned before, what a way to start your run with arguably one of the more gnarly setups you could find at any contest, and this is how you get your run going. Which way is he gonna go? Straight down the middle. Early handle pass, backside, rotating the opposite way, which as John has been saying, is exactly what the judges wanna see. Cutting in hard, heel side, backside, 
Seven with a mid grab in the middle of it, and we can hear the crowd going as yeah, he waits Now he has a well. crowd for the hometown hero right here. They were losing it, and here we go into the kicker. Going to stalefish back all to lay back. I don't know if he was going for lay back or and he made it look intentional, which is which is the trick. You never know with Connie. You never know. And this is a really cool hit he does. A back 450 stays oh butter onto the water. Gosh, what? That yes. was on purpose, guys, to staying back lip on the water. That is asking for a face fall on that down ramp, isn't it? Coming down on that back lip. I just see back edge all day. Your yeah. boy's tilted right in the back edge position, and you got to save it. Wow, that was super interesting where he goes like front board change up. Kind of looks like he was going front side and spins back side. Wow, that, um, I'm, I'm blown by that. Yeah, so it's either a face fall on the ramp itself, landing back, back lip like that on the down ramp, or as you say, a gnar gnarliest of back edges ever. And okay. here's the check this line out. Timo Kappel, you know. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. So Connie, Connie a little bit not as clean as he probably wanted his first run, but, but Timo going down gives Connie the point on that one. So let me even take a moment to break down that trick. So... Timo hops onto this creeper ledge, and since it's backwards, that black pipe actually sticks out from that wall. So your toes are up against the wall, and you can watch closely his toes hit the black pipe, and it kind of bounces him to, towards the outside. Somehow he jumps up to oh, the, the end shot. The end, the end the, 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 what would be the safety. That, that sticks that, out oh, wider. So out. next round, you got to watch how his nose hits it. You can see it in the clip. And his nose hits it, and he bounces off, stays on the board, and uses that to jump up onto the henshaw. And he just stuck. I mean, honestly, it was pretty good execution until he just got stuck on the henshaw. It looked in control to me, and so that's super unfortunate for Timo. Um, but that trick is wild. The judges said in the riders' meeting they really want to see risk on the henshaw and the kicker, or on the uh, pool gap and the kicker, because that's the beginning of your run. And Timo went for it with the risk. Unfortunately, it didn't go his way this time, but there's still more head-to-heads to come with Timo and Connie. We hope it's head-to-heads plural, not just one more. We want to take it to a third round. And just to explain, to further explain what John was saying there about risk at the start of the run, obviously, if our riders are doing things that are risky all the way through the run, that counts. But if you're doing things that are more risky at the start of the run, therefore heightening the chances of falling early, that's you putting yourself on the line nice and early. Whereas if you just save your most gnarly trick for the very last trick, there's less of a risk factor involved there, which is what we're talking about. And the risk did not pay off that time from Timo, but will it do second time round? We really hope so, because we want to see that and the rest of his run. We want you guys to see the sort of things that he's been coming up with throughout today and this week. But at the moment, Connie sitting pretty with first blood. So they are going to take uh, the carrier with the rope on right now. I believe that's why we're waiting. So that'll either be Connie, I believe, who went out first. He'll be out again. Yeah, so here we go. We got Connie, and uh, it must be nice to be in this position, getting a, a, to take a deep breath and, uh, you know, knowing you still have more to improve on your first run. So here we go with Connie. He's got, he's got two tries to win one of these head-to-heads to move on. But, like I said, Timo's really impressed all of us in practice. So the pressure... The pressure's still got to be on for Connie, knowing that Timo has a huge bag of tricks. Oh, and to keep you posted on what is to follow with our head to heads, we have got the UK out on the water. One of my boys, Maddie Muncy, up against. Oh, now that is going to be a creative special. Maddie Muncy against Tobias. Wow. Michelle. All these matchups just like worked out perfectly. Having Nico and Joe, it's like the pressing battle, you know, and then yes. uh, you got Maddie and, and Tobias with the. You just see the world very differently stuff. to most normal people. Yeah, so <laughs> I mean, and then you got the Stuckies going against each other. So yeah, it's like the matchups worked out perfectly. Always has a way of doing that out here at Langenfeld, I feel like. Makes the, every round so exciting. Here we go. We have got Connie coming in hot. Left foot forward rider. Lining things up to go. Backside three. Then rotating the other way. Maybe coming off a little bit early right there. Late old cut for this. Super solid backside seven with a mid grab in there as well. Big cheer coming around that corner. I love the way he does the oh. stale fish back roll. Oh, that was fully intentional. And there's that was the yeah. yes. I thought so. Connie, you never know with him, but he always is on to something like that. And here's this back 450 to back lip. Oh, oh my God. He passes wide. Wow, Connie. That's the Connie I like to see right there. Clean, locking into everything. Super stylish. Then he goes a little bit cruisier on the corrugated one once again because he knows he's got some bangers in play. 
That's nice. Front board, 50-50, then keeps on rotating back the other way. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that taking that toe 270 in the back lip. So he improved on that last hit. He improved on the back 450 because he just was so smooth coming down. He improved on... The there no, back roll. Yeah, there's no stutter on the water after that back roll on the rainbow rail. So pressure's on for Timo right now. Pressure is on. Here we go. Watch this. Watch his nose right here. Doink. See how he hits that and then, oh, not quite getting the full pull. It was good. Improv, He's gonna have though. to make it up right here. Going toe back nine, going down. So that wow, Connie, you can see him on the water. It's so confused right now because Timo has been locking everything in, but. That He's is a real shame for Timo Campbell. Once, once again, it would have been good to see those guys uh, go in the distance into a third round. But, Connie, that riding, I mean, either way, with, with Timo riding his best, that would have been a tight call, wouldn't it, with the run that we got from Connie? Yeah, and there you hear the crowd going crazy as Connie rides by them, knowing... The judges just announced with their flag he took, he's moving on to the top eight and uh, he's the hometown hero. And like I said, he is a, a, a definitely a young gun. I had never heard of his name until uh, about two years ago. So he is making waves here, making a name. And uh, yeah, that's super unfortunate for Timo though. Okay, our next heat. So let's talk about this. Where have we got, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. we have got Maddie Muncy and Tobias Michel. Uh, now, for those who, who, who don't know out there, why, why are we both thinking this is a, a beautiful matchup? If we think about their riding, I've got it in my head, but you describe, John. Why, I mean, why are these two riders so different, so why are they perfectly suited to battle it out? You would describe most of these guys as athletes. You would describe these two as artists, you know? <laughs> that is beautiful. They look at wakeboarding like it's, it's not about the hardest trick you can do. It's all about the art. It's all about the visual representation of the sport. And uh, that's why they're such big favorites amongst other wakeboarders. And that's why I think, you'll, I mean, you'll see it on the water, but they're definitely not, they're going to focus more on riding and representing the sport the way they want to represent it. And uh, it will be something very much different than maybe some of the other riders. And I'm super excited for it. Right, I think while we get the uh, moist makers, the rail wetters out there, we are going to take a short five minutes, well not five minutes, two minutes, we'll be right back with you. So please, do sit tight. Thank you for those of you who have joined us here at the 2022 Langenfeld Open here in, of course, Langenfeld in uh, Midwest Germany at the home, arguably, of the sports in the country that invented this sport, at the place that pushes it harder than anybody. What an event this is. We are going to take a few minutes before we move on to our next head-to-head -head pairing. Sit tight, we'll be right back. Here we go. We have got our next heat. 
And as um, already previewed for us, we have got something rather beautiful, something maybe a little less athletic and a little bit more artistic, as John Dryling rather beautifully put it, by two riders out there who do see the world differently. I think you could be cast in, 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 in that category. You, Felix, these boys, you just see a Wake Park differently to other people. I mean, yeah, I think... Uh you know, that's something that as you ride more and more that you look for, you know, yeah. you you, uh, you want to find creative ways to ride it and, um, you know, do, do something a little different. And to me, that's what gets me excited about wakeboarding, seeing people like take it in all different directions, not just progression by adding a 180, but progression by maybe hitting a feature differently or or coming up with some new idea. And here, Maddie jumping over that rail, going huge toe 270. Oh my goodness, that is exactly what I'm talking about. He ollied over that first rail, leaking up that line, and there the double grab five. Just so creative and stylish. And uh, here we go, linking it up into that bump rail, going with the back. So he was adding the line. extra rotation to it before in practice, but that's still pretty solid. Not many people doing that particular shifty into a, uh, into the, a switch. Around. I really like this hit. Here we go. That He does the wall ride 270 and gets the hand drag. Actually, these guys were in the qualifying round with me. It was the three of us. They they uh, they both went through, so they've already rode against each other. And here we go. We got Maddie back clipping that rail pretzel 270. And so Maddie with the 180 jumping over the whole thing with a massive toe side 360. So... Across the whole run, there was things you didn't see, but he may have played it safe. But it did, uh, there was a couple of extra things that we're going to see from Matty come second run. It seems like maybe he wanted to put the pressure on first run, and like I said, they went against each other in the qualifying round, so they kind of know what each other's got, and they've uh, seen their scores against each other. Firecracker up from Tobias Michelle. Oh, then going back, lip, keeping on rotating into that 50-50, staying right for forward, moving across to the outside kicker. Oh. I'm not sure the track suit would have helped him get out of that hole this time round. That is unfortunate for Tobias. So that is first blood to Maddie. So late 180 on the back of that back mode. That is difficult to do. Yeah, very challenging. And, uh, you know, this setup, we move the kickers just for the contest, right? For the, the placement of them. And they go into Tower 4. So that is um, not something you typically have. But tension is getting tighter as you're coming off of that kicker. As opposed to most kickers, they get looser. looser. So yeah. that makes that blind landing extra hard. Those are the little things you don't get to see. But... Um, you know, the, the judges Maddie. definitely know. <laughs> Maddie just half loading into a butter slide, the most dangerous thing you could do on a wakeboard, but coming out of it anyway. So to make this a little more interesting, you know, uh, in the qualifying round, Tobias won the heat against Maddie. And now they're in the so head-to-head, -head, he and now Maddie's won. So, you know, it looked like maybe both of them, I think, had a run where they fell and a run where they landed it in the qualifying. And so it looks like Maddie played a little bit of a chess move, put down some a run and some pressure. It worked out in his favor, but... He's got to go first again, so will he step it up and try to really lay down that pressure, or will he play it safe, you know? I mean, there are things that Maddie can do in that run, like adding an extra rotation out of a something, which he was doing on the, on the transfer to Rainbow Down, uh, and then on a couple of the other features. But I, I, it's, hard, it's, hard, it's hard to see... Um, it's hard to see how you can get any more creative than they, than they can, but I'm sure if anybody can, these two are the ones that will. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know. They, they got to have ideas, too. And, you know, some of these guys really like to keep it, keep it kind of secret. They have some ideas in their head, and, like, they might not put, show it, you know, even in practice because they really want to surprise everyone. And, uh, yeah. uh, All right, so far, moving through, we have got Trent Stuckey and Connie Lindhoff who are making our first two riders qualifying. And if you want to get yourself on to langenfeldopen.com, I believe is the website, you can see all of the results so far. As to, these head-to-heads won't be up. They'll be up in the, by the time we're done with this round of riding. Then we will move on to the semifinals, and then it will be the super final where we wrap things up for this 2022 live stream. But we are in the midst of an awful lot more riding until we get to then. And while we're having a little turn around down on the dock, can we get Maddie back out on the water? Hello to you guys at home. And we're there already, but while Matty makes his way around that back straight, we're going to say hello to a few of you guys at home if you're still chiming in. So thank you to all of you guys saying ho, uh, hello from wherever in the world you are. Vanessa X, Yannick Paton, lots of comments from you. Thank you for so, getting so involved. Aaron Gunn, also still there. We have got some wakeboarding greatness watching the stream, which is rather cool too. And we've got uh, Wolf, training Zanzog, ist angelblich. 
stylish. I'm hoping that's no swears in there because I didn't check that before you guys. No, that's okay. Yeah. Um, so thank you to you guys for checking in. For all of you across the world who are watching this stream, please get your link in your social media for this stream so we can get more people watching. And thank you to John Dryling who is just taking time out of your day. You did actually say if you weren't here with me, you'd just be sat in front of us. Just sat fully zoned in on the wakeboarding anyway. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'd definitely be, be watching, be, you know, taking notes and just enjoying it, you know. I love this thing, so I'm he stoked to be here announcing it. And here we go, Maddie. Let's see what he does on this one. Going that little ollie over. Oh, a little spray there. Okay, so it wasn't a full pull, but he was doing some crazy kooky things on the edges of those rails. There's a 3-2-1, so he definitely stepped into that kicker. I think after having that rail hit, he said... Let me go a little bit harder on this kicker. Make up for that whale falling off a little early. And there's the... Oh! Wow. Yes. Proper teed up. He whipped that around last second, got it all the way around. He actually fell on that in qualifiers, put that one down. So here's this creative wall ride. He really got a good drag on that. Aside from the pool, he's pretty locked right now. He's Everything looks pretty flawless. And there's that back lip, 270 out. And now we're going to see this leap over the second section of this wall. Same again, same again as well in terms of it being super solid and extra hits, extra little spins, extra rotations, totally big take trick off the kicker as well. Pressure's that definitely on now. Oh my gosh, yeah, come on Tobias, let's, let's get a third round out of these two boys because we want to see yet more of this riding in play. Firecracker up. 50-50, back 180 stays there, now this is was his undoing So that before. puts him wide on this kicker, makes more attention. So he... Didn't go back mode, partially because of the tension and partially because he fell, I believe. But uh, that was a smart move to hold it to hold it right. Oh, <laughs> he almost wheelies up the bump into a manual all the way down that pad. And here we go. Let's see what he's got on this front stretch. Going, oh my, this little like wall swivel thing. That's what I mean about R right there. Maybe not the most technical hit, but it looked amazing and it was different. Coming off a little bit early, unfortunately, there for Tobias. Can he make something out of this last ride? Did he just ride down the inside of the edge of that on purpose? It kind of looked it, like it, he did. I'm not sure if that was an adaption to not getting the pop or if he was trying to, like, ride, ride that actual and wall. Because yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it seemed like he was pretty pretty sideways on that wall. He might have been doing front lip on the wall, but um, I, it's hard to say, I mean. So for Tobias' sake, we really hope that the judges do think that that was intentional because then that, I mean... If we mix it up, if you kind of start weighing up what was more technical, what was more, more, more creative, th there was an awful lot going on there that was pretty amazing. And both, but with both of them, a couple of big technical hits, but the way in which they approach these rails, this thing over here, which we've been seeing him do in practice, it's so hard to get laid back like that and then get back over the board after the transfer. Well, yeah, and he shifts his weight as he 180s up onto it. And since that wall is low, you got to make sure your tail doesn't hit the water. You know, There are some still technical. It's all in the little fine details with these guys, though. It's those those little things like Maddie with that backside shifty. But to me, that 3-2-1 was a lot of risk on that kicker. For and, Maddie, yeah. yeah, and I do think that that might be uh, that might pay off in the long run. Yeah, and once again, the risk at the early part. Oh, <laughs> do we have a score? We do have a score. Oh, wow. Okay, so John, you called it. Maybe the risk was it. Maddie Muncy goes two for two and through to the next. But that round. one was close. It was uh, three points away, and uh, again, it's that three, two, one. I think that did it for him. Yeah, if, if we're looking at the scores right now, which you guys can't see, the judges are putting scores together with uh, Andy Cobb's own scoring system, I believe, and it was a very tight call indeed. We move on to the kings of the press. We have got the UK versus Germany. Expect a big old cheer for this guy as he takes to the water. This is his home turf. This is his home country. It is Nico von Lurkenveld versus UK slash Australia's Joe Battle Day. Joe now living in Australia. I think he's got his citizenship now as well, hasn't he? Lucky. Well, I believe he had dual citizenship, he had dual actually. Citizenship to start I'm with, not sure the, the reason. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think his dad. But um, yeah, so Joe taking full advantage of the dual citizenship. Why not? Yeah. Spending summers in Australia and summers in England, if that makes sense, opposite times of the year. Spending that December-ish summer in Australia. Good to have him back over here in the UK. Now, um, when we've seen Nico in practice, his riding, it was just so locked in every trick. It, it, he makes it look too easy. Sometimes that can be a disadvantage because when judges are looking at riding that is super, super aggro, it kind of adds to the intensity. He is so smooth. It is 
unbelievable. And he has been, out of all of the riders in this competition, he has been doing it at this level for longer, right? 100%. I mean, I don't even know the year 2011 when he won that uh, Red Bull contest in Florida in the pools and uh, made a really big name for himself. But Nico has been doing it longer than anyone at this event. And, you know, here's something to be noted, though, that, like, no suppressing a rail along a long distance with some changing directions, like a flat to down or an up to flat or something, is very technical. It might not be as showy as some of the big gaps and transfers, but, you know, judges understand how technical that is. So don't underestimate those long presses that you see Nico do um, because they are very challenging. But I also think... Nico's got a little up his sleeve that I'm, I'm uh, excited for him to show you guys right now. Okay, coming in hot. Nico von Lurkeveld eyeing up the monster of a feature we've got right in front of us. It's the wrong way around pool gap. Only on nose press, as we saw. Hardway 270 with a big old pop off that popper in the pool. Then he goes left foot forward. Oh, oh my! The stale fish on the toe nine oh without pre spinning. Gosh. So. Those are the little things I mean, and this one right here, then he goes up his sleeve, and then the back roll, the front board. Man, Nikos? Watch this. If this is going to be the press that we've seen before, this is all the angles on a press that we saw. Wrong hand. Oh, that could have been a face fall into the water. Coming off early, somehow manages to ride it away. A little backside one as he goes right foot forward now. Oh, that Toe was a back five. five. It was a onto five the onto the rail with a handle pass. Getting that extra rotation. Usually people do 450. He made it five. Front board, front lip, coming off early. Okay, so we're getting a little taster of what there is from Nico right there. A little bit of slips on the last straight, on the home straight. But the back straight and the rainbow gap, something silly. Here we have UK Zone, Joe Battleday. Rather handy on the presses. He's going wide into the bump to boot. Taking a different line on oh, this one. Oh, big old Ollie into the pool. 270 onto the tail as well, fully locked in. That is a monster rolly into that pool. Oh, getting the late grab on the end of that back seven. Lovely stuff from Joe Battleday. Right so foot forward now. Choosing the air trick on this one. It is going to be a 3 1 5. So he played oh, it safe there. Okay, seeing, safe. seeing the run, played it safe. It's in 3 1 5 in, in uh, qualifiers. And here, this beautiful back lip on the nose. The so back lip, right on rail transfer. Hard to move across when you've literally got a little bit of board in contact with the rail. There's that rewind and then front 270 out. And here we go with this. He hits this creeper right here, nose pressing across it. Hard to see in the live stream because of how big that wall is. And then front three out. So, Joe, a lot of strategy on that one, but a pretty perfect run from Joe. Yeah, you, he couldn't have played that more more well on the tactics front, really. Just seeing, he's riding around the back straight as Nico's finishing off his run, so he would have been watching every inch of Nico's run. He would have had something in mind. I'm guessing he maybe adjusted that accordingly, particularly with the 3-1-5, which was a 3-1-3 instead, that ready 360. <clears throat> and then, um, good to see him. He nearly lost his base on that on that nose press around the back of the Nico wall, didn't he, before, earlier on today, yeah. in the qualifying. So, the, Yeah, and that nose press on the... Uh, uh, oh, you mean Joe on the Nico Joe, wall? Joe yeah, on yeah. the Nico wall. Nico well, wall, he slipped out. Face it, got very close. It's hard because you whip across the cable, then you have to cut back. But then if you cut back too hard, you're coming into that wall, the blunt edge on the side of the yeah, Nico it's wall. Just hit you. So uh, it's a very fine line there. And then you have a lot of slack on that because of that edge going across the cable. Big cheers for Joe on the back straight from the crowds here who have amassed at Langerfeld, as they often do of a weekend anyway. It's so good to have such a cool turnout. If you want fans of wayboarding, you come to Germany. They come out in their droves. So Joe makes it back to the dock. We wait for the scores to come through for these two. We are going to hazard a guess at Joe taking that one. I would say, John, yeah? I Unofficially, mean, of course. It was a clean run from Joe all the way through. Nico, a couple of wobbles, not all that he would have wanted to come up with. And then we're going to move on to the second. Can we get... Our riders going full three rounds in this head-to-head. -head. It is the best of three, so usually... We don't run this, wait the line, doing this best of three run, which is a really cool way of doing it. It means we can get a little bit more out of our riders, a bit more entertainment bang for the buck for you guys watching. Okay, Cameron Graham, Joe got one of the sexiest back lippers in the game. All right, someone getting fruity in the viewing room, watching the action from wherever you are. Cameron Graham, I believe South Africa, did I get that right? Uh, here we go, score coming in. It is Joe Battleday by 
We're looking at five points there, 63 to a 58. So Joe Balladay taking first blood, as you can see on the screen. The black jersey gets it. The, the, that point uh, makes it really interesting, though, because Nico did have two two hits that were not what he was looking for. So only it's five points. Scored, yeah, with uh, a clean run. It's definitely open for Nico to come in and lay down a run and and take that. So. Here we go. So Nico out on the water first, as we saw from the first time. He is going to make his way back round. So we are needing from him to see this last straight, the straight after the drive tower, to be cleaned up for him to make a battle of this between him and his head-to-head -head compadre. It is Joe Badalay versus Nico Birkenfeld. Nico taking things first. First blood to J Joey. Nico up right now. What can he do in front of this home ground? Once again, Langefeld is his home park. He is... In fact, one of the first people to start hacking things. If we go back to the debut way back when and all those crazy gaps and, and, and hidden features the wrong way around, him and Felix. I mean, Nico, to me, from my perspective, is the first true rail rider, cable rail rider, who didn't come from boat but grew up more on a snowboard mountain and then yep. came to cable and was just focused on rails over everything. So, Nose press, solid, locked in all the way. Oh, <laughs> Nico. Could that have been any later, that 270? Yeah, that this one's grab. tough, but he does it with the toe nine. That one always makes me nervous because that's a very challenging grab on that spin. Is it going to be the toe back roll to front board? Yes. Wow. Maybe a little bit of tweakage right there, just poking that front leg out on the landing of that rainbow. Now this is hard. Get Coming around in. that whip to line this up is tricky, and he's doing this switch oh! nose press. Oh! <laughs> That, that is a switch nose press after the toe back one. No, no. Oh. So that means that Nico is down two hits in that run. So there was a bolt in his way he had to edge around. I don't know if the judges are going to take that into consideration. Maybe let him... Yeah, well, the situation is, but he did go for the trick, so normally... If you go for the trick, then you don't get your... your exactly. To raise his hand. So that is going to be a tough one on Nico. Joe, what does he do here? Does he keep it the same? Possibly, just to get to the end of his run. There's that late stalefish. Really clean. On the end of that. Or melon, rather. Coming in on that backside seven. Now coming in. He's going for the air trick. Does he go 315? Does he stick it to 313? He's playing it safe. Sensible Joe tactics right here. So it was the back one. Everyone's on the nose. favorite trick right here. Solidly done. And to be able to do it so consistently as well. Here's that rewind and then Pretzel 270 out coming back across. Now, this is where he will be magically floating behind that wall. Nose press, nose press. Then a tail tap from 270 out. Oh, so. Pretty similar from Joe with maybe an extra little tweaking on the end of that. Yeah, I think at the end, actually, it was maybe he felt like he was sticking a little or something or didn't have good tension, so he, he last minute changed it up. But uh, I don't think that's going to hurt him too much considering Nico's missing two tricks and Joe just needed a full pull that run, which it seems as though he did. I mean, Nico, Nico's first four hits were so beautiful, Oh, my though. gosh. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So it goes to Joe, which is an absolute um, crime, considering we wanted to see a third round from these riders. When are they going to go a third round? But so far, it's been the first two that have sent them through. And Maddie Muncy uh, joins, sorry, Joe Battleday joins Maddie Muncy, uh, Connie Lentoff, and Gavin Stuckey in the next round. And we move on to our next round of riders. Nicholas Dorfer and Niels Ritzman will be joining us. Germany versus Germany. And interestingly, the guy who's out riding in this next heat, Nicholas Dorfer, was actually the guy who helped set up this whole live stream as well. Multi-talented. How about that? Okay, we're going to take a few minutes just to break while the rail wetters go out. Should we do a little um, shout-out? 
Can anyone tell Joe to stop doing that 313? <laughs> you got to remember that that's a safe hit for Joe. That's just Joe getting some points on the board. Oh, and Dom, Dom is just fuming back there, just seething at that. He does not like it. Okay, we'll try and tell him, all right, Dom? Yeah, Pretty it, sure he will change it up come next hey, round. Hey, the back lip Joe does should make up for the 313. Yeah, come on. Give the brother a break. <laughs> Man's got to eat. Thank you, Kondoroka. <laughs> so, a little bit of uh, argy-bargy going on in our chat. Why don't you join our chat? Daniel Grant. It is a crime you are not here. So gutting. So in case you're wondering where Danny Grant, he should be here. Of course he should. But you know that little thing that's been going around the past couple of years? He got done by it just before he started to fly out. <laughs> oh. uh, okay, so you guys, Lucas Rudd, Go Trent, uh, Daniel Laskowski, Trent Stuckey, getting some love from that guy as well. Thank you to all of you guys joining in the chat. It's really appreciated. We hope you're enjoying the feed. And we are, hope you're enjoying the contest from wherever you are in the world. Matty Branston, sorry, Matty Branston at Hypnotics right now, taking time out of your riding to join us here. That is very cool of you. Cheers, Matty. All of you guys out there, once again, share it far and wide. Get more people in on this chat. You guys tell us who you think is going to come through in each of these head-to-heads and the final. Um, just to fill you in, in case you missed it, our winner from the ladies... Claudia Panini taking the title here at Langefeld Open 2022, brought to you by Liquid Force. Guys, we're going to be back with you very shortly with our next round of riding straight after these rail wetters are done. We'll be joining you in a second. Rider on the water, and there you can see our next battle between Niels Ritzman and Niklas Dorfer, both German riders. I mentioned before, we have got uh, Niklas Dorfer. He's a Langenfeld crew as well, just 23 years old. Also the guy helping us set up all the tech on this live stream against Niels Ritzman. So I have not seen Niklas ride before. Niels, I know, is rather handy. You guys know a little bit about these boys? Yeah, um, I mean... This is kind of the crew I've been riding with all week out here in Germany. They're both from here. They both Langenfeld is both of these guys' home cables, so okay. they know they're riding. They know each other's riding better than anyone. So it's a a good battle to have. Be super exciting, and it's kind of hometown hero versus hometown hero. So here we go. So first of our rider on the water is 
Neil starting off, big back lip, out of that bump, out of the pool, swatching it round to left foot forward, a late cut goes Tosa, oh, Crow Mobe on the nose. Oh. So that just taken Nick down. That, that was Nick Dorfel. Nick Dorfel, I, and, sorry, I apologize, Nick Dorfel. And Nick, uh, you can see when you hit that hen shot so long and you get so much slack that it really sets you up with a long edge across the cable. It's that, causing people trouble, that outside hit on that kicker. Yeah, I think so. When you hit that full hen shot, either kicker really is, is super quick to get back to, but now... All Nils really has to do is land a couple hits and he'll get the point for that first round. So hopefully he holds it together. But yeah, I think Nils, you know, I've known Nils for years coming out to Lanefoot Open and uh, he has been, you know, an impressive young kid, just like always at the cable, always riding. But to see him really, I think this event really showed his skill in the first round and it surprised a lot of pros out here with what he was able to do, you know, since 2019 at Foot Open. Getting that backside spin in, then 270 over the rail, back out of the pool. Then this, this is the one that's been causing people trouble. It's a late cut in, it's a lot of line tension. He manages to control it though. Nils not playing it too safe with that nose grab, toe back seven and coming into this bump. So the tantrum to blind, oh. I think. I think that'll be enough right there, but let's see what else he's got here on the front side. Oh, wow. I oh, and might have wanted, way over that as he well. He might have wanted toe 270, which would be pretty wild. I never saw that one come out in practice. Good looking toe three, stalling it out on the way up and coming in for this last one with this big kicker here with the front board to back board. Wow, that is a tidy run. And uh, that did. was without any pressure, so that may be making things a little bit easier for you when you know that the uh, door has been left open for you by the rider before. But now the pressure is on Nicholas, who uh, obviously, Nils gets the vote right there from the judges immediately, of course, because Nicholas did not make it past the kickers. He's going to have to make his way back over here pretty quick. Did he swim in? He's going to have to be running, which is not that fair for the chap. And then just to give you a heads up on the rest of the head-to-head -head battles to follow, we have got, where has it gone? Oh, it's over there, man. We have got, after these two, we've got Albin Rando from Sweden versus France, Loic Deschaux. Then Australia versus Australia. That is unfortunate for those boys. Uh, James Windsor against Basti Dunn. That is going to be a good battle as well. That is a good pairing. And then Rian van der Pass against Pedro Caldas to round things off. Okay. Nicholas has everything to do in this second run. Are we going to see a head-to-head -head battle go to the third round? You can see those three rounds right there. It is the best of three, though, so it will not necessarily go to three if Niels wins his second run again. We're waiting for Nicholas to get back to the dock. He took a fall fairly early on in the run on the far straight after the kicker, so he's going to make his way back. We don't want to rush him too much because that would be a little bit unfair, but he will be coming in hot very soon. If you are just joining us, welcome to the 2022 Langenfeld Open, brought to you by Liquid Force and supported by Nissan and Follow. Of course, it's the Langenfeld crew, and of course, who else? would be hacking up this course, but the unit crew too, who have done an amazing job. I, I'm, it, it's good every single year, but I think this is the best to date. Yeah, I definitely think uh, out of all the full-size cable setups I've rode in contests, this is the best one I've ever rode. So it's, it's insane. It's incredible. And what's really cool is like both sides of the cable are even, because sometimes you see a contest like this where the right feature is a, a lot more difficult than the left, and everyone hits it. But right now, both sides of the cable are super even, so riders really have the freedom to explore either side and what tricks they want to do. It's Maxime Guiri, hello buddy, skate crew in the house, good to have you here as well. Uh, we got some shout outs to Loic from your fellow Frenchman, to Cameron Graham, through the window to the wall. <laughs> um, so, guys, here we are, halfway through uh, head-to-heads, our first battle of head-to-heads. We've got 16 riders paired off into eight head-to-head -head battles. They'll get knocked down to eight riders into the next battle, and then we will have our super final. Then we will crown our men's Langenfeld Open Champion 2022. The women have already been. We will be announcing the prizes, the winners for that come prize giving, because it's not obvious, because it's a super final with four riders in that final. It'll be the same for the men shortly to follow. Okay, Nicholas Dorfer taking a fall earlier on. He has got it all to play for right now. Pressure is on with Niels coming up with a sterling run. And Nicholas just not fulfilling his potential in that first run. So what has he got for us? Coming in, which line of the many available to him will he take? He's going to go kicker into pool. 
Keeps it safe. He's going to use the bump. Back lip. Keeping it very safe, it looks like. Staying toe side. It was the Crow Mob that did him last time. Oh, and he death talks out of that to come away unscathed. You could see the tension popping him out of that, but he has made it further than before. He goes heel side. Indy grab back roll. Beautifully done. Just manages to control the slack as he comes around the drive tower in front of us right now on the final straight. Which way is he going to go? It's the outside sets. Backside 50-50. Back lip. Oh, and then 450 out of that. That is a tidy run. That's difficult going heels into the cable on that as yeah, well. Yeah, I was going to say, it's much more difficult going right away with your back facing the next rail, jumping yeah. from your heels, because you don't bend at the knees the same way. And you can't leave yourself across as well. And yeah. You, yeah, you can't see. And there, that boxer rail to toe two. I mean, his rails were tech. I mean, he had that back roll. He had that bobble on the... Uh, we're super safe on the pool, I think, to line up just that chrome open and still had that bobble. But, I mean, he, there's points on the board, but there's also room. Neil's coming in, 50-50, backside three. Then he goes 270, rotating the opposite way. Just the helmet as he cruises back to the outside of the cable, right in front of the crowd, on the more difficult of the two kickers because of the tension, but not for him with that big old spin. Yeah, you actually saw him get that more attention, and he used that to whip it around at the last second. And they're going basically well, a, well, a Pete Rose with the rail in the middle. Yeah, breaking it up. <laughs> and he turns it all the way back. I haven't seen Nils do that either, so that's pretty exciting. And then here coming in. With the toe back one, two, toe oh! two, seven. <laughs> wow, oh I, am, I am a we huge, didn't see that before. huge fan of that, that hit. so difficult. Then the three on, gets a cheeky little tickle on the board on the way out. Now coming in toe side with a big front transfer. Oh, gets the early hand of Arsenal rotation on, wow. keeps it rotating, oh all the way out. Nils just made a statement. I, uh, those are some heavy tricks, and he, <laughs> he really showed Perfect. right there. <laughs> With the rail tricks. Even that toe three onto the corrugator was a strategic move because he already had the toe 270, the opposite for forward, spinning different direction on the toe three. And then, wow, that's a big backside 270 where you can clip that wall. Mm. Um, it's technically not hard way uh, because You're not of it being toe like, side, yeah, but with the wall it, being still. as big as it is, it's, it's essentially the same thing as being hard way because you can clip Just so going easily. into it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. So the judges did not take long to deliberate about that. Niels upped his game quite considerably. And that, once again, frustrating for Nicholas to take a fall earlier on and putting the pressure on for that second ride. It was a good, clean ride. But wow, does Mr. Ritzman up his game somewhat crazy. Okay, so that is that round done. We move on to Albin Rando and Loic de Show. Now, we know a lot about Loic because this kid's been blowing up over the past few years. And it seems like he's been around for forever, but he's still young, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, he's super young. I'm not sure his age, but I believe he's under 18 still. Wow. And he has been around for a good few years doing but crazy I, things. I've been riding with him. When, we were on, when he was 12, we were going on trips together around Europe, and uh, he was blowing our minds with mode 540s off the flat water. I mean, his air trick game was crazy. His kicker game was crazy. But his rails have come a long way in the last few years, and he's got the most tech rail hits. And we saw him do some stuff in practice that, you know, if he could pull off, it'd be really risky. But if he could pull off, I mean, he he could destroy on all three fronts here in this contest. So. And what do you know about the uh, one and only Scandinavian in our lineup, Albin Rando? Albin is another kid that has been uh, a promising young kid coming up. And Albin has a lot of really good um, quick spins and quick flips. And I think having a lot of transfers in this uh, contest will do him really well because okay. I've, I've definitely seen him throw a lot of quick heel sevens with grabs on transfers to walls and different stuff and a lot of flips to things. So I didn't get to see Alvin practice, but um, he's definitely like got a little bit of a, a showman style there. And I think it's going to be exciting to see. And, you know, the thing about Alvin is I think he'll be pretty consistent and uh, that'll put some pressure on Loic. And it's good to have a mix of a different countries. Right, what are we doing? Shall we do pause? Okay, right. So we're going to go, not pause. I thought we're just our crew there, a little bit of confusion. But he wanted you to see our faces. That was basically it, wasn't it? They haven't seen us. In case you're wondering who those dulcet tones belong to, my name is Matt Crowhurst. This guy is, of course, John Dryling. Thank you, John, for taking time out of relaxing to come and join us and throw that energy at you guys. We're very privileged and honored to have one of the greats here in the commentary booth with us. We are privileged and honored to be here at this event in any form whatsoever because fans of wakeboarding, him and I and everyone here uh, in the tech team behind the scenes, it is a joy to be here watching the best in the business do silly, silly things on wakeboards, on water, in this silly, silly course that the unit crew have hacked together for us. 
If you haven't yet joined us in the chat, get those fingers are working. And we have got Ryder on the water, ready for our next pairing. A look to show against Albin Rando. And it is Albin in the white, out first. Straight head-to-head -head format. It is the best of three. So if they win one apiece to start with, then it will go to the third round. We have not had that yet. Will this be the first time of offering Albin coming in? Wake pants on. Thank you, Shane Bonifay. Oh, oh, that's oh. what I meant right there, the showmanship. I hadn't seen that one coming, but back over to the pool, linking up with the front 270, and here is going to be the grab toe back seven. Still, you can see the difficulty and the tension. Yeah, he was getting stretched on but the But he made then. it work super well, and here, taking uh, this air trick line going outside. Toe side air trick this time, going 902 on now. Beautiful Alvin's done. putting it down right now. So staying inside the cable for the Felix, the wrong way round rail. Oh, oh my gosh. Bye, Alvin. There is so much potential for an absolute whiplashing on the back of that. That is ridiculous. Oh, I like how he got on the tail. Yeah, he just a really tiny bit tail. of the board as well. Uh, a little bit of a wobble on that second ledge, but there is... Oh, my gosh. What are you doing, Alvin? <laughs> so in case you're wondering, that is not in the scoring zone. And maybe you just want a little swim, a little break. Here we go. Next rider. Wow. It is that, that's what I was talking about. A showman put the pressure on. Had some big tricks. You don't know how the judges That wasn't a safe that. run at all to start things off. Very consistent run. Oh, nice. That is a lot of tippy-tapping, a lot of the dancing right there on all of the and features This is the Lowen. tech we got right here. Oh, matching him on the kicker. The grab, toe back seven. A little bit tighter, arguably, getting the grab in there as well. So we mentioned about Loic's air tricks. He is coming in hot, right foot forward on his heels. Oh my gosh, booster calls. Whoa! Oh my! Oh my that, that sets him up really wide. It actually sets him up nice for this hit. Oh, oh my! Oh, so we saw. You He's think a, it's going to be that same hit as Joey, but no, he just flips it around hard way, getting the tail over the board. A little, and adding a little, a little right creativity there for the judges, going wall right on the outside of that, if you can't see from the live stream angle. And here, using this creeper, triple step for, oh... Wow, I am speechless. That's saying something for us too. Okay, there is a lot going on there. I mean, th hey, if any of you guys think, yeah, features are wicked, that's all features. I, I refuse for any of you out there to not be blown away by that air trick from Loie to show. Monumental height coming into the tower. And as you said, probably did set him up nicely to stay wider the cable to push him across from that uh, back lip to switch, back lip nose to switch back lip nose, hard way over the top yeah. and then rotating 270 out. There is an awful lot going on there. So you can see on the rails, as I mentioned, Loic taking more technical lines, not as big of gaps, but really like tech uh -oh. on the rails. And you know, that, that's very concerning for being able to lock in and getting it every time. And somehow he did it rail after rail after rail. And uh, Loic really showing he's not just a kicker and air trick rider. He has the rail hits on the most intense setup. And wow, I mean, and like you said, the air trick, I mean, oh, got to be the filthy. best air trick I've seen out here yeah. so far. So. And then we have confirmation from the judges. Uh, you can see that the black jersey gets it. And He's it in the 80s. Yeah. That's, that, I think, is the highest score so far as well, but, uh, you know, I mean, well so, deserved. So for, for you guys back at home who are a little bit curious as to, as to what the points actually mean, you can't see the points. You're just getting a nod one way or the other for the judges. But we're looking at the points here as well. So Albin got 54.97. Loic got 81.39. That is a big old gap. It just shows how much detail the judges are taking into account. Now, if you're wondering what it means to us to say that is the highest score, there is no set score for any set trick. You can't compare between heats, between head-to-head -head specifically, but for the judges to go through the roof like that with that score, it's just showing how out of world tech and stylish and unique that run from Loic de Show for France was, in fact. So, the judges getting all frothy about that, as were we. What can Albin do in this second run? Can he get a little bit more into it? Can he up his game a little bit and pile the pressure on that little bit more from Loic? But it does not seem like the pressure was affecting Loic at all. No, I mean, pressure was definitely on. I mean, Albin, Albin killed it, so... But I mean, you know, like I said, it's not even about pressure. Those tricks are so hard to do every single time. I do not understand how he locked them in, and he made them look so easy. There wasn't a bobble, you know? So um, I'm wondering if Loic can do it twice. 
Yeah. It, that would, it looks like it based off that run. But. Wouldn't that make the rest of the riders a little bit nervous seeing that go, go twice? Okay, what can Alvin come up with? Can he <laughs> lay it down right now? We all want him to. Obviously, Loic would, I mean, while he wants his fellow riders to do well, as we spoke about earlier, I'm sure he'd prefer it just to be a cruisy run, save the energy for the next round. But to make a proper battle of it, can we go to the third round of riding between these two? We've got Alvin coming in. Now, that front roll into the pool, front roll, back roll, depending on which way the, where the cable is, there is no tension there whatsoever coming in on that pool. That's what everyone's been saying. That's what Yeah, there's so definitely difficult. not tension, and it's a risky move, I mean, because there's a lot going on, and if you don't land on the right edge, you're going right into a, a rail or a plant. Into a, a Jack Constable butt cheek. And to land on the oh. edge that he needs to link that up. Yeah, 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 yeah that's, exactly. That's really complicated. Um, oh, there we go. It's going to be a glory lap for Lloyd to show. Looking at the Tosa backside nine for Albin. It didn't come together. Yeah, but definitely. you know what? Impressed me. That's going to stick with me. Those first few tricks in the very first run. He's got to be happy with that. Albeit frustrated as well. Lloyd to show still has to go out. Still has to stick something. If he takes a fall on the pool, then it leaves it wide open. Is that going to happen? It's... Oh, I'm not going to say it because that's usually the commentator's kiss of death. But Lowit will be hitting the water very shortly if he's not out there already. He's like down the tower. Coming out of the back straight right now. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, I definitely think Albin, you know, saw what Lowit had and decided to step it up and go for that toe back nine. Try to spin a little bit quicker and uh, his body got a little bit ahead of his hands and dropped that handle pass. But uh, leaves the door open right here. That's very nice of you, Rudy Tall Boys, to name me the GOAT. Maybe it, maybe it's talking, um, but thank you very much. And uh, Daniel Grant getting all frothy about Albin as well. Here we have Loic. He's just going to take it easy. Just needs to lay some tricks down. Just want to focus on the kicker here and not mess that one up. So, oh, he's going to oh, toe back ten. Oh my that's, god, that's a statement right there. Yeah. He skipped that pool because it's like I said, it's very challenging to link him up. But he wanted to show. Wow, beautiful backside nose blunt, all the half loading onto that rainbow. Wow, Loic, this is really showing some personality right here because he didn't just say, oh, I'm going to go do some tech or some simple hits. He said, I'm going to go do something that is really impressive to it watch. It could not have been cleaner. And after all this chat from us about that being the hardest kick to wrestle with in terms of the tension, and it didn't look like it was affecting him in the slightest. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think uh, kind of skipping that pool feature helped. But yeah, wow, sure. Loic, even that, even that hit, he just he put some fear into some guys. Yeah. He showed them what he had on that kicker. And uh, he also, at the same time, Made wakeboarding look great with that back lip and those nose presses. So, wow, you definitely earned some points in my heart, Loic, with those presses. And that was entertaining to watch. There you have. Double nod to the black jersey of Loic de Show. France moves through to the next round. We go to the other side of planet Earth. Well, in terms of where they're from, Australia versus Australia will be right up after our moist makers take to the stage and make sure all of our features are doused down properly. James Windsor versus Basti Dunn. Coming up shortly.
this on your head? I know, yeah, I know, but it says left, and now it's on my right, so I'm really confused. <laughs> so we're just talking, uh, Alex Albeck, on how to put headphones on, but we got there in the end, yeah, bro? We got it, yeah, it took us five minutes. That's why, actually, we had that break. D- yeah, it's because we had five. another little tech lesson yeah, in the background. It took me five minutes to put on my headphones, but it worked out at the end. Okay, Alex Albeck, welcome to the to the command center, to Thank the commentary you. booth. Thank, Thank you for joining Thank us. You. Um, he didn't bring a beer, but that's okay. Well, well the thing is, I was looking for the bar, and, and then he found I couldn't us find it, and I found you guys, and I was like, and oh, it's pretty cool. Thrust him in front of the limelight on the microphone. Okay, we've got a few minutes. Well, we haven't really. We've got a few seconds until the Aussies go at, yeah. at it. Aussies. So this is quite a good pairing because these two charge. They both log some stuff in. We've got the finesse and the smoothness of Busty Dunn and the aggro of James Windsor. Call it for us, Alex. What we got? A board side. Pretty oh, cool. Oh, he was on the side of 50-50. Drop back. Just a death 50-50 on oh, the end of the that was a death 50-50. Come on. There we oh, go. Oh, little frontside 900. Bolts landing from Windsor as only he can. Okay, are we going to go air trick crazy? Yeah, because Window yes. loves an air trick. Good old like air trick. Oh, oh, launches one. Oh. Front blind. Sick tail grab on that one. I, so, love, I love when he does those. So 180 great. on, then press it the other way, then press it the other way. That is beautiful stuff from Window. You don't get more locked in than that. Okay. Come now, left foot forward. Big old. Backside 180, pretzels 360 out, and he stayed wrapped. He didn't pass down. That was a pretty, pretty cool move. And I like the way he's going back and forth with the rotations opposite ways. The judges will like that. So that's a solid performance to start things off for James Windsor. And Busty coming straight into play. Okay, so James with the white jersey. We've got uh, Busty coming in, right? Uh, yeah, that was horrible. That, that that pull gap nearly saw the end of him. It was yeah, nearly like, a Jack Constable like, butt cheek. Yeah, I had that. Like I had an exact same hit, and I ended up in the wave breakers on the right. So James pulled that off pretty good. Busty coming off a little bit early on the end of the Henshaw, but then spinning like a top as Busty does. Super easy that Toe was. Side, backside nine, too easy. Buttery conditions out there. Looks like he's going to do a short, sharp air trick type hit. Boom. Oh, how much pop off that oh, as well. Oh, <laughs> wow. Back mode five, five. easy as you like. Like it's nothing. Oh, that was that was buttery. Even the, the lip slide on the nose, just all the way through, right to the end, and then they'll tap on the end. 360 arm wide, Eddie. Off. This is good from Busty. Stays inside the cable. He's going to go step, step. One, two, three. Over you go. Thank you very much. Three out. Oh, wow. Call it. Call That's it. so much going on. Call it. No, no, I don't know. Call I don't it, know. Alex. Come on, call it. Dude, I'm not a judge. I know you're not a judge, which is why it doesn't matter. We wouldn't put you in there, <sighs> man. Yeah. Tough one. Um, I think Bus. I think Bussy. I oh. think I uh, might have snaked it. Um, yeah, because they both have the wobble win. on the ball. But yeah. yeah, but we're going to see that very soon. Just because Window was not the smoothest in the pool. Um, and even though that Busty came off early on the Henshaw as well, so it wasn't the smoothest for him. The overall impression, I just think maybe, maybe, win, maybe Busty. We wait for with bated breath to see who's going to come up with what. Both riders still up plenty more in the tank in terms of what they can come up with for their second runs. Conditions here at Langerfeld have turned out buttery beautiful. The sun is just about holding out. Please don't let that be the commentator's kiss of death. We have got smooth water conditions out there for all of our riders. We've got a good crew on the shore. We have got some rather stellar commentating on the shore as well from Clint and Toby. So, it, so it's busty. So I, I do. I could be a judge now. I called it. You called it. I called you it. You called it. Okay, guys. Uh, I go, go okay, judge. Stop, listening, <laughs> stop listening to those three guys anymore. <laughs> Alice has got it. We're actually taking control from the command center right here. Okay, you can see there on your screen, people at home, Busty Dunn gets the first nod from the judges as we see Stefan Vollett fly past as he films everything going on here on the water and off for the highlights reel. Window, you have got some making up to do. Come on, let's make a battle of it. We want a little bit more riding from the Australian crew. Should we, yeah, should we get a little picture? See who's here. Hey. Where's hey, the camera? Oh, don't how's look, it at look at yourself. I was camera. like, I was okay, like, look at yourself. There's so many screens. I was like, so this is an Alex Alback who was um, going, people. Who was literally the best dressed rider out there? All yeah, all, I was, all, all I, yeah, I was trying to win this wildcard spot for being the best dressed out I there. I was actually I, trying to trying to create that category for you, but no, yeah, no one was into no. it. But in in terms of, I, I wish that I wish the people out there had got to see it. Yeah, but it's okay. At least we're gonna win at the at the the bar at the after party. So we like we. We won. Well, actually, we nearly didn't win. There was nearly, there was nearly no we, we international sales director for Liquid Force <laughs> or a commentator for last night. 
<laughs> Not that we were riding scooters home late last night. Okay, in case my wife's watching, because that would have been trouble. All right, we move on to second round of riding in this penultimate heat with Aussie versus Aussie. James Windsor versus Busty Dunn. Busty Dunn, as you can see on the screen, taking first blood of three. Can we make a battle of this? James Windsor, you need to score it. Right. Call it, Alex. Go. This is you. Go. Moderating madness. Let's hear it. Okay. Let's go. Window. No more of that bobbling around on the knuckle as he no did before. More. No more. Now left and forward. Oh. oh. Ballside pops 270 into the pool, into big old back lip. Late, super late cut to the left kicker. Sick. Oh, that is a line right there. That is tough to get that nine in off no edge, right? Oh, right. That, that was like, wow. Right, if you want to go old school wakeboarding and see how it's done properly, here we go. Oh, sploosh. Big old front blind tail grab. Love those now. Left or forward. An 80 on Pressel. Oh, oh, window! Pressel as the 450. extra 450 yeah. on the end of that. So he is up wow. in this game. So keeping it cruisy, maybe just to line up a little bit more smoothly for this wall. That monumental leap from kicker to top of the wall. That was better, wasn't it? Yeah. That was the more intentional better. tap on the end. Well, not looking way to lock better. in the second ledge, just a tap, right? As dope. I think the only thing I'd say is like he kind of struggled after that 450 out of that flat bar. That a little the, bit of a, oh, a yeah. little bit of a bobble. A little bit. Like he actually dropped into a little bit of a yeah. lean at the end of it. But that was the only thing. Okay, Because that was insane. So riding up the up rail, that's a little bit better for him. A little wobble from the shoulders, but gets a full pull. Toe side, backside. Boom. 900. Thank you very much. Dude, his 900 is more isn't it? consistent than my 180s. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this kid's insane. Look how sharp. If you want to learn about explosive uh, scooping edges right here, Busty Dunn, thank you very much. Oh, wow. my gosh. Time to spare dropping out of the sky with that. So he goes right the way to the end of this, then 270 across, then pretzel back out. That is a beautiful hit as well. It looks like he's keeping it the same up until now. And tell side backs at 360. Backs at 180 out, same way. I like that. I I like that same way stuff. Now step step, 50 50 50 50. Front side 360. It was similar. Was it the same run? It was the same run. It. I think he changed it up on the pool a little bit, but the besides pool. that, I think it was the same run. And I have to say, the judges told us if we do the same tricks or the same run over again, they're gonna score it lower. So they want to see you come up with something different. Yeah. So. Oh, hey, good luck, Bossy. Oh, we're back on the we're screen. We're back. So if you're wondering where we are exactly when you look from the main screen, the big old, huge, beautiful building here at Langefell that oversees everything, we are tucked up in there in prime spot. The crow's nest, I like to call it. It's, it's in the name. <laughs> you see what oh, I yeah. wow. It's in the name. I thought you were funny. You were funnier yesterday, actually. Yeah, well, I, dr <laughs> I drunk more yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Okay, right. Um, speaking of which, anyway, back to the game in hand. We get a little bit of cabin favor in the commentary booth at about this stage in the live stream. We hope you are having fun enjoying this with us wherever you are in the world. Someone out there asking why Danny Grant wasn't making it to the show. He was invited, of course. The old, the old dreaded COVID got him just before he came to leave here for the LF shoot in Italy. Um, Busty's comp is so good from Gunther Oka. Oh, Jake says hi. What up, Jake? Heatley boys. What's up, boys? It's good to have a good few of the crew of the wakeboarding world out there. So, of course, all you fans of wakeboarding, but some of the bigger names as well. Tana, how you doing, man? You too. Lots of big names joining us here on the chat. Please get involved wherever you are. We've got Aussie crew. Getting behind our Aussie crew on the water, Aaron Grant, yeah, this comp is good for sure, but they like to see two different runs. He called it, just, just as you did. Yeah, they do. So, is Busty going to get marked down, and will that then make a bat? No, we just seen up on the screen his confirmation that Busty did enough. It was much, much closer, though, so Busty going two for two. Ooh, wow. Unfortunately for James Windsor, not making it through. I guess it was just so incredibly super clean right the way through with enough tech involved to make it Busty's day. James Windsor, commiserations. Sorry to you, boy. You get to chill and watch the rest of the event. We move on to our very final pairing. Rian van der Pass, Pedro Caldas. Tell me about Rian. Not seen this rider before. Pedro, I've seen a good bit of. How will these two match up? Oh, my God. They're insane. Like, I was hanging out with Rian two weeks ago in Germany shooting, and he just blew my mind. Like, tantrum to blinds onto features, and just, like, it's going to be sick. And Pedro, I mean, we all know about Pedro. He definitely, <laughs> he definitely one of those riders uh, 
that looks at things a little bit differently out of the water. He loves a big old ollie onto stuff as well. We saw, I don't know whether we're going to see this, him smashing the side of the corrugated thing and then somehow <laughs> rotating out of it, almost <laughs> kicking the damn thing over. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he he was trying to. He, I think he was trying to tip the corrugated pipe. Over. Yeah, screw that pipe, man. He's like, yeah, screw exactly. that pipe, screw that follow. Hey. Oh, good old Look Stefan. This is. We got all the legends here. Come and say hello, Steph Bollock. Are you also looking for the bar? Dude, everyone here is looking for the bar and they end up here in the commentator's booth. Is you trying to find the bar as well? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, okay. we're looking for the bar. <laughs> Eyes back on the water instead of us three. As good as we yeah, know. Sorry, Carry sorry, on. Right, right, there we go. Okay, so we have got. Green, Green Van Pass in the white jersey. So a good battle. All of these battles are, 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 are monumental so far. It is Gavin Stuckey, Connie Lindhoff, Manny Muncy, Joe Battleday, Niels Ritzman, Logi Show, and Basti Dan making it through to the next round of head-to-heads. -head. Who will it be out of Green Van Pass and Pedro Caldas? After this, we are going to take a short break. Time for you go and have a toilet break. Time for a wee stop, get a libation, a beer, if you are above age of sort. We might be doing that to join you. But before we get there, we have got three runs each. Okay, Reen, one of your boys you've been riding with, you know, you, can, you, do you know what, what he's going to come up with? you got an idea of the running going <sighs> to throw down? Alex? I mean, you don't know. Like, uh, I've seen his previous runs and they're pretty, pretty damn good. But he might change it up. But coming in left or forward now. Oh, he used the lip. safety off the curb. Bretzel. Oh, my gosh. There was a lot oh going on in that. There was a hit. lot going on. I don't think my brain's fast enough to. Oh, two oh. craps in there stalling out that five. And there's to listen to the crowd. Oh, my <laughs> God. The crowd <laughs> is getting rowdy insane. over there. Now, oh, call the attention to blind from the popper to the rainbow. Oh, a little bit of a tippity tappity on the way into the drive tower. Which way is he going to go? He is going yeah. inside. Now he's... Big old booster calls. Then oh, a rewind. 360 oh. rewind. That makes my neck hurt, the potential for that back edge in right there. Dude, it's so hard to land on the, on the down rim on the Felix. Oh, wibbly wobbly winding of the windows right there on the corrugated. The one wobble we've had so far. Can he make up for it now? Yes, he can. Oh back my one God. on. Whole side back 780 to the wall. And you get a good and view from there. That's, that's like above your head. Yeah, that like, thing. It's probably like three times my size. I think so relatively, huge. you next to it makes it look massive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but it is. <laughs> it is. That is a silly run right there with yeah. just one bubble in the middle. Here we go into Pedro. Pedro. Oh, little nose. Tesla. Oh, oh, my God. Just winding Backs down the outside of the Henshaw. Oh, my God. Pedro, what, that was what a did you do? He went stratospheric out of shot. <laughs> <laughs> into the moon. Wow. Coming to left foot forward now using the popper. Rewind, Dude. then out the other way. Man, he just, he got so much style. And he's riding a pretty cool board, too. <laughs> <laughs> Front lipping. Oh, Ooh. was he meant to be locked in a little bit more on the top of that? You yeah, he came off a, a tiny yeah. little bit early. So we get to see the wall ride back into the curb to the boost, then back on front board, then rotating out the same way. Bagel coming in toe side. Oh, my front board. How's he going to go underneath it? Th oh, dude, he was doing a hand drag. Hand drag before he, was he got a hand to the top drag section. to front board, front board back to. Was... That is some crazy all over the riding. And that when the riding is so different like that, that is just a nightmare for the judges because you're comparing apples for oranges in there when it is all beautiful. Should we move across a little bit? You're hogging all the space. I know, here, right? Yeah, uh, I like it. You can, you can oh, okay. always come yeah, closer there we go. to me. Love. Just come on in for the good ones. I've got a, a public service announcement here. Can I get... Uh, welcome, everybody, to... The, what's that say? I don't know, I can't. Can I get allow? here on the stream? It's going to be a day. Okay, I'm sure I said this, but oh, you won it. Right. I thought you'd be for the live stream. Can I okay, get it? Right. Okay, okay. Sorry, here you need to improve your writing. Okay, for the live stream while he's filming. Hey, everybody in the world of Wake out there watching us from wherever you are on a sofa, on a bus, it does not matter. Thank you for joining us. We have got Alex Auerbach in the commentary booth. We've had Felix Gorgi. We have also had John Dryley. My name is Matt Crowhurst. This is the 2022 Langefeld Open presented to you by Liquid Force and supported by Follow and Nissan. Boom. Wow. That, that was good? a shot. I think we did it. That's how we did in the pros. Yeah. 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 It so doesn't this, usually take one take. That I was a miracle. It, I actually thought it said Alex, not life. Is that, I was like, Can on the Alex stream? So that is for Mr. Stephen Violet, the one and only, who's doing all the behind the scenes oh, action. Black. We're black. back, we're back, we're back. We're back Did we and miss the all shirt of it? is black. Did we miss it all? Yeah, so who, who made it? Who, who, who? 
So, no, Pedro. Nice. Oh, Pedro. Okay, right. So, Pedro. So, I thought we might actually miss some riding. Could have seen Steph just ruining it all right there. Uh, but no, Pedro gets the vote, which, once again, what are the scores on that? Was it. So, well, 10 point difference, so not as tight as you might think, but. We got a contest on our hands. Come on, go three rounds. Go three rounds, you guys. We are going to have Rian van der Pass going out first. Pedro is going to be following up. And knowing what has come out on top, Rian, while he's chasing this game right now, he might have an idea of what the judges are after and he can change it up. And Pedro just can't, I mean, out of all of the riders, Pedro doesn't do the same thing more than once anyway. He nah. will mix it up. He has. A really big bag of tricks. Tell us about some of your favorite hits so far from any of the riding that you've seen, ladies and guys. I actually have to say my favorite hit was Timo's on the pool. Like going outside creeper. So, in the so edge John, the pool. John explained that to me. I didn't see before Who's how John? The, John Dryling was explaining it to me. This guy. Oh, that, oh, yeah, that yeah, guy, yeah, that, yeah. that guy. Yeah. Oh, that guy. How it actually knocks your board off the creeper when you're going along that. That is probably the most gnarly of the things we've seen so far. So, yeah, I think that's my. That's my favorite hit. Okay, so we're knocking it down out of, out of this lot. Call it. Call it. Call it. Who do who, 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 who you think tip of the top? Go and put your money where your mouth is. Go. Podium. You want Podium. Top three. Just give, me, give, just give me top three. Who actually made it? I don't even know who made it to the super final yet. <laughs> So while Alex gets his head around who he's going to put his money on, so John, he went for Timo. Timo did not make it through. I haven't actually, um, well, I'm, I'm the middleman, so I'm not going to put my money on any of them just yet. We'll wait a little bit longer. And there you get a beautiful view of Langefeld in all its glory. Yes, that is right. You are seeing a serve machine right next to a main cable of this caliber with a big crew by the, uh, the beach bar. Yes, there's a beach bar and there's a pizza hut and there's a restaurant behind it. There is a beautiful two-tier store. There are four cables in total and straight lines to. This place is the Elysium Fields of wakeboarding. Get your butts along here if you can. Okay, we are on to our next round on this final head-to-head -head round. So it's the best of three. We've got Rien van der Pass. Where's his home cable? Where does Rien, Rien Herald from? Is this it? Or where oh, is yeah, this, this, this is, is it. it. Hence this, the noise from over there. This is the spot. Yeah, He's if you just listen to the crowd, you can... Figure out that I mean, he's a local. I, I don't want to do Pedro a disservice, but we want Rin to go through just because of that noise continuing throughout the rest of the day. I think it doesn't matter. Even if he falls first hit, the crowd is just going <laughs> nuts over there. I was just there trying to find a bar. Which I trying did. to find a bar. But, and it's <laughs> insane. They're having so much fun. It's actually... It's epic. I'm like so happy just walking through all those people in the back and they're just like loving it. And they don't care. If you fall, if you land, if you're just <laughs> sitting on a jet ski, they making just, loud noises. They make the loud noises. Even Here we go. Yeah. Reen coming in. Now, before we saw him go the safety up the curb into that up rail, back lip, pretzel 270, then front lip on the tail, and then keeps on rotating. That's. Oh, uh, yeah. We really wanted to see it. Really want to see it. Oh, that is such a shame for Reen. Uh, once again, Pedro has to get out. <laughs> you hear the crowd. I told you. He felt you hear the crowd. One more go, they're shouting. <laughs> I actually think they're shouting no, Van der Pass. No. Van der Pass? Yeah, that's okay. the last name. Okay. But one more go. Might one be, more go. Uh, might have been in as well. Yeah, yeah. I made that up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pedro, out on the water. He just has to cruise through this. Are we going to see him do a low eat to show and just severely rub it in on, on one of the tricks? Um... I don't know. He might actually practice for his for the round of eight. It could, and and I guess which it, I think would be smarter. Maybe he takes uh, an easy hit on the pool and an easy kick just ahead. Just to get past him, yeah. Just to get past him and then practice for for the next round. And I guess it pays um, to put the willies up the riders on the dot by showing by doing a low and just going. There you go. That's going to come in your face next round. Yeah. Yep. So Pedro coming in hot. He's going to be taking on the big beast of the pool gap, which is, as we mentioned before, the wrong way round. And the person who came to grief the most with that is Jack Constable. Hopefully he's posted that rather bootalicious butt cheek on the gram that, so you could take a look. He ended up knuckling the edge of the pool with said cheek. Firecracker up from Pedro Caldas. Oh, I love a little indie poke little right there. Indie grab. Yes. Oh, almost missed a kicker. Oh, oh, full Superman front flip right there. Oh, 
Oh, Big old yes. Ray. Oh, so that's what the people want. That is well. what the people want. <laughs> okay, so I guess Pedro does like need practice. He does <laughs> need practice. He's like, I got this, guys. <laughs> I'm just going to send a big old Rayleigh. He loves an ollie onto something. He really does. Wow. Okay, maybe <laughs> maybe <laughs> I was wrong. Maybe he is practicing. So He's coming in toe side on what was the meat and two veg, but just one half. He goes, uh, he goes on, 270 on, and then rotates it out the other way. Coming into the Nico Wall to round things off in our final. Oh, my gosh. That is a lot of tippity tabbity dancing all over the place. And we will wait for confirmation, but unofficially, of course, I'm pretty sure we can say Pedro is through. Yeah. And that makes our next round of riding. riding. These guys are going to be pitched against each other. We have got Gavin Stuckey, Connie Lindhoff, Matty Muncy, Joe Battleday, Niels Ritzman, Loic de Show, Basti Dunn, and Pedro Caldas making the next round of riding. Hello to <laughs> Alex's social media. Get that up and tag me, yo. We are going to have a 10 minutes break. Okay, nice. come on. Let, let them see the beautiful faces to finish. So now we can hey. actually go and try to find the bar. I mean the toilet and the bar. And the bar. I'll hey. find a bar, you do toilet. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining us. All the peacocks are putting out there, Loic or Pedro cool. or Trent for the win. So maybe that's a top three. Oh, Aaron. yeah, yeah. I forgot to give you my you top didn't, three. You didn't do that. You got distracted. Loic. Pedro. And Trent, that's my top three. I don't know what. Yeah, yeah. In which order? But I is like, that what he said? I, I like the way the Peacock brothers just show no, no, uh, no support of their homeboys whatsoever. Luca has to remind them. Yeah, but what about Joe and Maddie? <laughs> so yeah, Joe and Maddie for podium, and then someone else. That's a bit biased. Okay, yeah. I mean that. Yeah. But anyway, you have had a taster of some mind-boggling. That's when your mind gets boggled by what you're looking at. Action from the very best in the world, as you come to expect. From the 2022 Langenfeld Open, courtesy of Liquid Force, supported by Follow and Nissan. Thank you guys for joining us for the past couple of hours or however long it's been. We're going to be back with you with the remaining rounds in 10 minutes. Go make yourself a cup of tea. Get yourself a beer. Maybe not both of those because that would taste weird. But go and get yourself stocked up on whatever you need to last with us through the rest of this afternoon here at the Blue Ribbon event that is the Langenfeld Open. Thank you, Alex Alba, for joining us. Thanks. Thank you, John Dryling. Thanks, guys. And Felix Gorgi. Um, are we? Shall we just do a little chat with uh, Nico while he's here? Yeah, go on. You, you, you go. I'm out. Need to get. I'm out, boys. Oh, I said the sign off. We've got Nico von Lurkenfeld, the one and only. All right, all right. Bye, you had your bye, time. Guys. Get out of here. Nico, oh, Nico, scoot, scoot. Nico, come on, have a little chat. You have to turn it around. I know it says left, but it has to be on your right. I'm sure he can figure it out much more easily than you managed to. Okay, <laughs> right. Take a seat, young man. Thank you very much. Can we please welcome to the stage the one and only Nico von Lurkenfeld? Can I, say that, can I say at this point, and I know we've known each other a little while, and it's always been an absolute pleasure to commentate on your goodness on the water. As we said earlier, John made the point, you're the person that's probably had an awful lot of influence on the way the wakeboarding features world looks. The first person, along with your bro, Felix, to, as John says, not come from bow or not come from traditional, actually come from the other side of board sports on the snow and put that on water. So from me, and I'm sure everyone out there, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for saying that. Mate, how is it? Dude, uh, frustrating. It, it's good to see the two nose press kings out on the water together, you and, and Joe. Uh, frustrating, I'm sure. It is, man. It's, you know, like, what's frustrating about it is not just that this happened here, but it's like what I'm asking myself is like, why again? Because it's happened so many times where, you know, like, I, I make it through the first round and like kind of decently feel, feels, like, feel locked feel, in, feel, feel good. And then, like in the next or next round, like I just have like I have a killer run up on that until that point where it's kind of the easy li a like wobble the easy on a thing and it's just like trick, yeah. yeah, like dropping the handle on a simple, you know, like to blind or like like the the ninety out of a rail, and it's like ah, why? But I mean, yeah, like I was I was really stoked that this one eighty switch nose press finally worked because Mate, was, that was silly. I was yeah. working on it all day long, kind of like kind of came off early, came off to the other side, like just a little early. So I, because you know, like my my, uh, I really want to do things great in a contest, yeah, which is course. sometimes not really smart because sometimes you know, like maybe I could you could take do it, something else. Took, took, yeah, take like the easier route, and I I know that this hit was very risky in making a full pull. But that, but that is what stands. That um, is what stands out, and so, so you've yeah. got some silly silly tricks going on here from all of these riders. And then just a beautiful, beautiful nose press is one of those up there. So, kids, take <laughs> yeah. note. Um, tell me, um, in general, um, wakeboarding, where is it out for you? What are you doing right now? What, I mean, because, I mean, y 
you're, if you don't mind me saying, a little bit older than the rest of the crew out there on, yeah. on, on the water. And that's coming from someone who's a little bit older again. <laughs> um, yeah. But you're not done yet. Yeah, you're still fired. Man, like, I'm, I'm super fired up. It's like, even today, you know, like, if, it, if I, you know, like, would have fallen completely without a chance at, at giving Joe a hard time, then I'm like, okay, maybe, I don't know, like, maybe I should step back a little. But this is making me even, like, more eager to, you know, like, finally, uh, yeah, like, Zip up the you, bag. You fell and on something take, like, stupid, so you so could just forget exactly. that. So, yeah. so I'm, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm still super stoked to be here, pumped. I'm, you know, like the 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 jitters you get, the ner the, the nervous feelings before a contest, and then you're actually out there on the water, and it's just like oh, when man, you're in the moment. It's go time, and you're yeah. in the moment, and like, I mean, kickers. You know, like you're not hitting kickers every lap when you're like riding, even though I love the airtime, but it's just such an impact. But contest is like, you know what? Fuck that. You go as big as you can, like really like make it as good as you can. And it's a great feeling to get this boost through a contest. So I, I still love doing them. And um, I'm stoked I made it, you know, like at least into the top 16. And uh, Top 16 so of a very, even, very even if you say, big yeah, field. Exactly, yeah. man. It's like if you look at the 16 riders that are in there or now eight that are left, like between them, I mean... I, I kind of have my favorites, but you know, like especially on a course like that, you saw Timo crash on what yeah. would have been a absolute winning run. Yeah. So it's really up in the air who who makes it, who takes the who takes the W now. And very quickly, outside of the contest world, what's your plans this summer? Where are you at? Are you, um, you going to be joining us in? Oh, this is a bit selfish, but in the UK at any point, or uh, where are you? Where are you going with your riding? What's what? What can we expect from Nico? I will definitely be at the big events, so um, I'll be in Lithuania for a three-on-three -three, uh, wake duel. I'll be in the UK for uh, the Worlds. Worlds, good, I'm, good. I'm yep. looking really forward to that. I'll also be at Munich MASH. Um, nice. Looking forward to that. And uh, I, I guess it's the, the Red Bull riders making the call, but I hope that my good buddy Felix, go, uh, Felix will call me up to be his partner. Oh, there'll be wake trouble. Duel. Yeah. Uh, no, wake, duel, wake the city again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, those are like the big, you know, like the anchor points for the season. And then, um, yeah, like in between, there's a couple like uh, demos and the cam that I'm doing and stuff like that. So it's it's pretty busy, actually, looking, but I'm looking really forward to, and you know. And children, too. You are human beings yeah, like me. Yeah, how's that? It's, <laughs> yeah, I got two kids and they're, they're here, too. Uh, I had my little one out on the dock earlier when I started. And it's just, nice. you know, like falling and then you walk back to the dock and he's there waiting and you're like... Something oh, you know special. what? Not, not so bad after all. I yeah, still got exactly. this little guy. Yeah. yeah. Mate, it's always a pleasure. Thank you very Sorry much. Sorry didn't get through, but... Anyways. It happens. Next time. Next time. Next yeah. time. See you right. Next time. Hey, guys. So, say bye-bye to Nico. Send some love here on the chat, and uh, we'll see you at the bar. Some Thank Enjoy you. the rest of the day. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> guys. Uh, now I'll do the proper sign-off. Thank you for sitting with us for the past however long it's been. Thank you for all the chat on the live stream. Keep it coming. We'll try and give you as many shout-outs as we possibly can. And we will see you in about five to ten minutes. Make sure you're back here in the hot seat to join us for the next round of riding when we go even hotter head-to-head -head here at the 2022 Langefeld Open.
Yo, we are back. How you doing, people? Thank you for hanging on. Those of you who are still there with us, um, I'm going to shout out to those people who I can see immediately on the chat. We've got BS Still and the Stucky Fam, Jason Stucky, Noah Hall, Louis Philippe Oliviere, Massimiliano Pifaretti, Ciao Bella. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Daniel Laskowski, and we've got Jacob Sunday, Gavin Stucky, and Pedro Enrique Cunha. Hey, guys, thanks for joining us on the live stream. We've got John trailing back in the hot seat just as things get a little hotter. Wow. How does it go any more intense than it already is? But it will do, right? I mean, yeah, it's got to. I mean, the competition just gets, keeps getting tougher, and the more these guys throw it on runs and try some things out, they get to figure out what's working and, and go with that, you know, and, and make adjustments, so... I'm so excited to see what these guys pull out. Oh, no. The UK boys have been picked against each other. That sucks. I think we are on right now. Here we First go. First hit. Trent Stuckey coming in the pool. Not quite locking into that Henshaw rail. Uh, coming into the kicker. Doing a huge... Oh, my goodness. That KGB was so stalled out. I've never seen it like I've that. I've never seen anything like that. That looked like it was going to be full frontal landing. That and is ridiculous. Here he comes in with the... Black meth, front to blind. Okay, so Chance putting down a run here. Back to oh rewind. He handle pass at that time instead of staying wrapped like he's we've seen before. Now coming in, going rail, box, hard way to to the rail. Handle pass behind here for his final hit coming in. That is solid. The way he just gets on the corner for the back lip to be able to roll in to the 50-50 and then rotation out the back of that. That is a solid first hit from Trent. Definitely super pleasing the way he uh, stalls out on that 50-50 and whips that front three. But here we go. The door's a little open after that pool bobble. Um, Connie Lendhoff coming in. Gets a rotation in, then rotation the other way, which the judges will love. Almost getting stuck there. And they're kind of nolly popping out of the back of that Henshaw down rail. Connie, they look like a, you got a, a mute, mute in the middle yeah. of that. That's crazy. To get the mute, mute is kind of tough to get your hand in the middle of that as opposed to pushing around the melon. And here we go. That's a stalefish back roll to lay back, making it look super smooth. Now, if you didn't see the first round of riding before, check this. If it's going to be the same thing, it is one of the most ridiculous tricks you'll ever see. Oh, just he, it was a little bit cleaner, wasn't it, the last time round he did it, but coming yeah, out of but that backside butter slide. Hit. Oh, and he's stuck, stuck on that one. <laughs> that rail has been known for uh, oh, catching Oh, really? Some catching people. In, people. in practice, it has. Um, we have yet to see it in contest, but um, yeah, it's. So that is going to be a first victory to Strength Stucky. We would say, unofficially, of course, still waiting for the judges to come through. And what we're looking at right now is a field of eight riders, four head to head pairings. Top one, obviously, one will go through from each head-to-head -head pairing to make the super final exactly as we saw from the ladies. So you'll know exactly where we're going, who comes what, and there we go. White best jersey gets the vote. That is Trent Stuckey, who gets first blood up on your screens right now. You can see that. Connie Lenteroff has much to do. I mean, obviously, Trent is 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 the hot property in, in, I mean, all of these riders, but there is a particular buzz about Trent when we're seeing him do things like double KGBs and, and that recent, if you want to see something mind-blowing, the recent edit of his that launched recently, go check that out. But of course, Connie has got, Connie's, Connie's got that, that, that alternate view of the, of, of, of the course that we see from some of our riders. I mean, who lands in a back lip on the down part of a box and stays back lip to butter slide out of it. Yeah, Connie definitely hits the features differently and he just looks like he's always having so much fun on the water and that's what makes him so sick to ride and I definitely think that conveys with the judges, you know, it's hard to to see someone having that much fun and and, and not get swept along with it. Yeah, yeah. give them the nod. And <laughs> it's, en it's enjoyable. So uh, yeah, and he definitely takes a different approach. You saw that little layback going on too. So um, unfortunately sticking on that feature, but you know, that's why we got multiple runs here. Exactly. So, come on. We want um, every single one of these head-to-heads to -heads to go three rounds. Three rounds, please. Just to make a real battle of it. Just to make it really more exciting for you guys. And if it could get more exciting, uh, we've got a lot of people here at Langenfeld turned out. A good crowd around this corner. Filling out the bank here over in the Drive Tower restaurant end and then right around the other side as well. German crew making some serious noise for us, which is all that we like. Now, Trent back on the water. He's going to wet down as much as he possibly can on the way round. Last time, him and his brother pretty much completely 
changed up their run from first run to second. Yeah, that was really cool. Trent specifically had like a very, very, very different run um, and to hit totally different features, you know. And that is difficult to do, isn't it? Because you spend time planning a run. It is, of course, and, and, and you only get one day of practice, which I don't think people understand. I mean, there's 50 men in this competition and a number of women up close to 20, and so to have one day of practice with close to 70 riders in this competition, I mean, it's hard to even get one trick on each feature and to have multiple. When there's multiple options on most features as well, all features. Exactly, and, and you heard Alex say it before, but the judges said in the riders' meeting, you know, if you do the same run over and over, you will be penalized for it. They want to see uh, you changing it up, you getting creative and stuff. Um, and is that from round to that, round as well, as opposed to within a round? I believe it, it's, it's, you know, round round. They want to see you stepping it up. They want yeah. to see you, you, yep. you know, progressing throughout the contest and keeping it exciting. Oh, there's that cheeky little swivel hips that he does where he just taps the end of the rail. Trent now coming in for his second hit. That is that nose grab. Changing up from that KGB with the yeah. trail. Moby Dick, we see again, in much better pool hit, by the way. Um, coming into this, going, oh, there, changing up again. Just go and stale KGB just because, like, you know, he Why heard, he heard yeah. what the judges said, and he has that big of a bag of tricks that he can do it. 50-50, 50-50, staying wrapped as we keep seeing him do. So it was a full 270 round wrap and then back out the other way out of that 50-50. And there, they're going the 360 instead of 270. That's what we mean by the progression, the little step above gets you excited. And they're going Again. back lift 270 <laughs> to 50. All and then of these fully little back the other way. Yeah. That is ridiculous from Trent. So Trent, super cool. You know, it's pretty interesting, you know, because you see him do a front and a tantrum are very similar. So you see how he did a, a KGB on the kicker to a front to blind, and then he did a Moby Dick on the kicker similar to a front. And then KGB on the flat, so kind of changing up. But Connie, there you go, locking in a much better pool hit as well for himself. Then getting the grab in the middle of that too. Not sure whether it was the mute this time. Going huge on that one. Are we going to see this this, this stale back roll to, to lay back? Oh, oh my gosh, the knee yes, chewer. Connie. <laughs> Connie's <laughs> smiling so big right now. You can see it on his face as the edge is on. And Connie changing it up. Oh, that's a risky one. So he goes to chewing his knees off, to chewing his fingers off on those rails. <laughs> so I, I wonder, do you think Connie has made a call that he, he doesn't have enough in the tank to, to compete with what we saw from Jen? Or, or he's I actually think Connie's thinking, just focused on having the most fun, fun he fair can enough. have, you know? Fair but, enough. But I do think, you know, that maybe he saw Trent run and thought, that's a lot to keep up with. And I want to have some fun. I'm going to have some fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to yeah. do something that represents wakeboarding the way I want to represent it, which is really sick to see in this final. It really is. some creativity out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and giving some inspiration for the many, many, many people here who ride day in, day out, how they can take their wakeboarding a little bit different. I'm not sure they're going to be gapping to landing on their knees on a rail, but... I want to pretty wild. Please don't everybody try holding onto your board while you're doing a 50-50. I love how he jumped. How do you jump when you're holding on your board? You're already crouching. Oh, you can yeah. only extend so much. Okay. Think about it. <laughs> I, I didn't think about that yet, but like, I don't know how he, he jumps. There's, there you go. There you see Trent taking the win on that. Trent going into the Super Finals of four. So Here we pretty go. big moves for Trent's uh, first major European contest riding in pro. So the Battle of the Brits coming up next, which for my own personal viewpoint, it's a little bit upsetting that we're going to potentially, well, not potentially, lose one of the Brits that could make it to the final, but both riders who've been riding together since they were, I was going to say knee-high to a duck, they're both still knee-high to a duck, um, but these boys kill it, and very different styles of riding, and it'll be good to see how they interpret the course this time round, and how the judges then reciprocate with the actual points that they give them. We've already seen some beautifully locked-in stuff. Joey is... is Joe, Joe's like a a, Europe, a a British version of a of a Nico. That's why that 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 matchup was so good. They, yeah, they're very 100%. similar in the in the tech and how smooth and locked in there. And Maddie, can't wait to see what 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 artistry he's going to carve on this yeah, blank he's canvas. He's always that got things up his sleeve. So. <laughs> It'll be super good. But yeah, these guys they rode together. You know, their whole time coming up, same exact cable park. You know, and now uh, Joe's been over in Australia. So I'm wondering, do they know everything each other has, or you know, has the time apart ha had them build up some tricks that, you know, they can surprise the other one. But going to be a super interesting battle here. Maddie going off the dock first, it looks like. 
So I'm just going to do a quick, while they make their way around to the back straight and into the scoring zone, as a quick shout out to a few of you out there. Matty Branston still hanging in Hypnotics watching the crew. Hello to all the Hypnotics crew out there. Hey, Zach Falzon from Australia. Is that, uh, are you relation to Greg Falzon, I wonder? The... Uh, uh, legendary boat rider of back in the day. Anyway, hello to you guys on the chat. Keep the chat coming, chat to each other, and thank you for joining us here as we switch back to the action out there. Smoothly done, as almost if it was scripted. Our tech team are so on it. Okay, what have we got from Matty Muncy? Come on, call it. You know this guy. You ride with him all the time as well. You've seen him in contests. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think he's going to do that really creative line, popping over the rail on the pool and hitting that hench shot outside in. But, you know, he has a hench shot at his park as well. Um, so I'm not. I'm curious to see what line he takes on the henshaws. We've seen him take a few different ones, and here he goes. Look at that, alling over the rail, really proper, getting way over the top, going that huge toe 270. That's a pretty crazy gap outside in, but not quite making it all the way down, and going with that three two one. Much cleaner than the previous round. So. Yeah, and as you said before, that's a risky play, part of the course to be doing that. So the judges will like him adding that risk factor. That's the problem with doing that Olay thing. You end up getting spun out of control without the yeah, handle pass. It looked like he might have tried to grab a second time on that, which might have thrown him off a little on his balance, but that's a really cool hit right there with the wall ride hand plant front side three. Coming to this loud corrugated pipe. Oh, that's oh, something I had see. no idea he had. So that's the first we've seen anybody... Oh, that was nice as well. He got a little bit stuck on the top, but um, so a few wobbles there from Manny Muncy, but a few new things that we hadn't seen before. Has so, anybody else been upside down on that uh, corrugated pipe transfer? There's been, a, there's been a rider. One of the Italians, I, th I think Leonardo Gatti uh, did it, but I'm not sure if it was, if it was him, but that's a pretty wild move, um, and I didn't know Matty had that, so there's so, Joe locking in. Joe's, uh, you monster know, <laughs> going to play it smart, I think, and... Lock in super clean hits like that. Grab backside 720. Um, so, Dom, if you're watching out there, I'm really sorry that there might be a 313 here. Did you hear him complaining about it on the <laughs> chat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I mean. All right, just close your eyes at that point. Sometimes yeah, Dom. you got to do what you got to do, but. There you go. That should have made up for it a little bit. Some super steezy style on that bat lip all over the nose to, well, what comes across the front board. There's that rewind as well, coming off the outside a little bit early too, comes inside. This is the crazy hit. Goes creeper, 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 creeper. Ah, and we actually got a better drone shot of that right there. So we saw him come off to the inside of that rail on that nose press all the way along. But once again, that's, that's tough in terms of the movement of the, of the cable and the handle and where the cable sits relative to where your pool's coming yeah. from. That's asking to chew your knees off. Well, hey, this, uh, this is a super, watching those runs, a super well-balanced heat. I think yeah. that it really could be anyone's game. And uh, Matty showed he has the tricks. So this one may go to a third round, I'm thinking. Okay, so we've got a, we got a score in already. So this kind of, don't worry about the scores too much other than just gauging where the judges are feeling they're at relative to each other. Is there a big gap? So Joe Battleday gets the nod with about five, six points ahead of him, which isn't too far away, is not too far away. And that will be due to the, the fall, will be the main reason for the big old gap. Um, but Matty showed he has the tricks, you know, the pool gap. He definitely didn't get the hit he was looking for. It's super risky, his first two hits. Um, so if he can, can get those, you know, the judges said they were going to reward those. And, um, and he had that fall. So Maddie's definitely got the tricks to take this to the third round. All comes down to if he can put it down, I think. So PWC lift back to the dock to make sure that Maddie can get out on the water. We keep this thing moving nice and quick. So the next head-to-head -head pairing coming up is Niels Ritzman and the Logan Show. And then rounding things off with Busty Dunn and Pedro Caldas. You are joining us at the, uh, I think you would call it the semi-final time in the head-to-head -head battles of this Langenfeld Open 2022. Brought to you by Liquid Force and supported by Follow and Nissan. Thank you to those brands for getting behind this. Thank you to Langenfeld for making this happen. Thank you to all the crew here behind the scenes um, doing such an insanely expert job on all the tech side of things. And the many, many, many people all behind the scenes who make this happen. And not least, you, the fans out there watching this stream and the fans here who are joining us to show the riders the support they need. Okay. So with that waffle out the way, we should be about ready to let the water calm and get Maddie Muncy back out on the water. You can see up on the screen there that the black jersey of Joe Battleday has got the nod from the judges, which we kind of thought was going to happen because Maddie had a few wobbles and he missed a trick at the end where he fell. 
But the potential is there to see this to the final, the fabled third round within a head-to-head -head that we have not yet seen. Give me, um, give me some of your favorite tricks, your favorite things that you've seen so far, John, in, 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 in today's riding. I mean, of course, as, as Alex said, the, the hit from Timo on the pool is pretty crazy. I, uh, I, I love some of the tricks Connie was doing, even though I don't know that they were maybe the best contest style scoring yep, tricks. Yep. But uh, Maddie Muncy's little line on the henshaw, that's a pretty big gap. I love to see that. Um, yeah, I think. The, the nose press from it, it Nico. nose press from Nico. Nico's nose. Yeah, that, the, that was switch, by the way. That was toe side 180 to switch nose press, and that was a super nice nose press. Um, yeah, I mean... I mean, Gavin Stuckey had a really insane rail to rail where he yeah, it's hard to pick handle. one thing out. <laughs> yeah, he passes the handle and jumps back. Fully he can't see anything and lock that in. I mean, there's so many hits, but I know a lot of these guys like Loic, like Trent, uh, Pedro. They have even more tech hits, but they've just been playing it really smart. You know, it makes and, sense. And they want to save something. Like it's part of the strategy. You know, save something to to get that wow factor in the in the super final. So. All right, it's good that the, uh, the German crew here getting behind every single one of our riders, of course, making that bit more noise for their homegrown talent. But making noise for all of these riders from France, from Germany, from Brazil, Pedro Kraudas, Australia, we've had Sweden, we've had Italy, um, a whole shebang, including the UK, who is out on the water right now. Okay, so we are looking at that crazy kind of uh, toe side, front side 180 over the, over the rail into this. And... and, and Tell me, having hit that, where the pull is a bit funky, right where that kicker is, if you're moving around that much, and then he's got to get the momentum to get himself going back out the opposite way for that hit, is, is, is the pull the thing that makes it really difficult for that spin he's doing? Oh, 100%. I mean, not to mention that Henshaw's outside in, so you, get a you can't edge into it and use the tension to lift you, so yeah. that gap's huge. Uh, the, the, it's not a. It's hard to lock in, but I do want to point out that this is switch this ollie, which I just noticed. I know front toe side. And that is huge, and that's a wall in the front, and he's really actually you can't tell from the drone, but he is going over it. And then the butter's in there that's, as well. The spray that, that is ridiculous. That was good. That was good. That was a really good one. Oh my! That was bigger as well. He's on it. Come on, Matty Muncy. Let's make that a battle good. of this. That was really good. Beautiful drone footage right there. The double grab. Landing it clean. Oh, he had a lot of slack on that. For a second, I thought he dropped the rope. <laughs> um, coming around. It's nice he has this hit because it breaks up some of the Yeah, just a chill, a chill time for through there. creative riding. <coughs> Judges love to see that, having the tech and the creative and the big gaps. Like this tantrum to back oh, it. Wow, Locks it in. Way better than the last time from Matty Muncy. This could do it for you. Oh, oh, my, oh, Maddie. Maddie Muncy has just stepped it up. Are we going to see a third round of riding right That's here? That's heavy. That puts pressure on Joe. Joe has the tricks, but it's, it's a, it's gonna, he's going to have to pull out everything for this one, I think. So we want Joe to do well. We want this third battle between these two. Look at that monster Ollie. Okay, he locked that in. He locked that in. That was solid before. It was on the tail, though, so the here. judges will have noticed He has that. a back nine. Oh, he goes rewind. Oh, rewind back. out of the seven. So close your eyes, Dom Hurler. He has a 315. Well, we'll see it here. See the and there's the 315. Just about muscles his way out of that. A little bit of a wobble might affect it, but it's a more difficult trick. Oh, oh that wasn't what he wanted either. Definitely not what he wanted. He had to go bigger to get the time to get over the rail, and judges are going to take note of that. That was locked. But he's still... He's still full pulling, you know? He does do a big old nose press. That, I mean, yeah. the, wo the wobble here made up for in the other areas. That is going to be a tough call for our judges yet yeah, again. That is true. I, 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 if on, I'm spin calling it, spin it, spin it, it, out, John. <laughs> it, it literally comes out of the fact that on that last hit, Joe waited to go on nose press till he was like all the way up a I little mean, bit through the flat. Like he didn't hop it onto wasn't the nose, into press nose press because yeah. of the slack and the crazy tension. So, I mean, so that I, plus this right here, whereas yeah. every single one of and then Maddie's the, the rally five and having that slack. And we have a third down. round, people. Yeah. Finally, it, okay. It's Maddie on that one, and uh, so. Woo, Thank goodness, finally. So, our president oh, answered this is yes. So exciting. So exciting. Look, Clint's getting excited as well. You can tell it's on. Okay. Two, so, li two Liquid Force International team riders, two guys from the UK, two, uh, I mean, that's, two that's, best that's, that's, friends that's, that's, that grew up riding together. I mean, 
they got to be stoked to see each other doing well as well. So. Alrighty, so Joe coming back round into play. He's going to get himself back on the dock, and they are going to be launching themselves once again. Hello to you people at home. And wow. Our chat is disconnected for some reason right now. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, we've... So, so. Ma Matty will be coming off the dock first again, and he has, in my opinion, probably the harder run, but... A lot more risky run, which is where those points come from, is he has high risk. Um, I think it all comes down to, like, can Maddie do it twice? Can Maddie lay down that one twice? Because that was pretty insane. Okay, there we are again. We are good. Let's, uh, Muncie Kicker is so G from the Peacock Brothers. Daniel Grant, uh, is it better or worse? He did a 315. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel Grant. All right, would you just give the brother a break, okay? All right, he's getting an air trick in. <clears throat> okay, so um, guys are um, not, not, not big fans of the uh, air tricks. Peacock Brothers, back niner. Yeah, I think that's going to have to be the go for Joe, isn't it? I know Joe's been uh, practicing them. I don't know how successful they were in practice, but he definitely threw a couple and landed a couple. I think he yeah. So I'm, I'm sorry that we missed all of this chat because it's pretty good. <laughs> the Peacock Brothers, pull your teeth out, son. <laughs> Going on, the judges getting the worst time ever. Uh, a lot of chat from you guys. Thank you so much for joining in. Keep it coming. Dom Hurler, that was sick. Did you close your eyes at the right point, though? Is that why you're saying it? Okay, so we're going for our final, the fabled third round. Is we get a nice. Is that Dom Hurler commenting? There's yeah, no yeah. picture. I just saw Dom. I didn't realize. <laughs> Look, so good. Right. Now it all makes more Could sense. You, yeah. Why have you not got a picture, eh? What are you trying to hide, Dom, eh? Um, so we're getting a beautiful shot of the uh, Surf Langsfeld um, surf machine right there, panning across while we wait for the boys to head out again. Maybe just letting the, uh, the water calm down a little bit after the jet ski tour around to bring Matty um, back into play or wherever it was. He's kind of exhausted, okay. <laughs> I mean, after that one, I'd be exhausted too. Yeah, give them give a breather. They are sucking through a straw out there. Um, all right, let's keep the chat going. Hey, boys, tell us, call it. What do you think we're going to see from Matty and Joe to up the ante just that little bit? I, 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 I think Matty pulled out a lot of what he had. I think Joe has some stuff, mm -hmm. but... The back nine is a one, for sure, yeah, isn't it? definitely. I mean, there's little spins off of rails, but, I mean, Maddie, that was pretty dialed. It was pretty dialed. That was as locked in as we've seen Maddie so far, hence him getting the nod so emphatically from the judges. If we just make the scores relative for you guys out there, it was a 75 dead for Maddie and a 63.8. So that's a decent gap, um, but... There were a few wobbles from Joe, and that can make up for that gap a little bit. And if he's got more in the tank too, then we've got yeah. a serious competition on our yeah, I mean, our I definitely hands. think based on those two runs that they did, if they do them both perfect, Maddie has a harder run. But Joe 100% has more tricks. Not just on the kicker, though. I know Joe's got a spin off of this rail. He's got, you know, more tricks than just that corrugated hit, so... Here we go. Man, it's so cool to see. Maddie's just out there having a good time, cheer cheering off to the crowd, and uh, that's what it's all about. People get um, he's smiling a lot. People get wiggy about contests, as in they're a little bit too serious. But if you you can have your game face on and still have a good time, right? Which yeah. is what we're seeing from these riders. So for those of you out there who, who wakeboard and you've got you maybe you've got a little grassroots contest happening at your local cable, your local park, get involved. It might be scary, well worth putting yourself on the line, joining in with the community, the communities that are built from these sorts of events in and around your local park. It is well worth your effort. You will love it. Okay, here we go. Beautiful, buttery, calm conditions out there. Man, Glassy my, heart is, my heart is pounding right now. John is very excited, sight next to me. Okay. Finally, the third round we've been asking for. It goes down right here. Which out of the two Brits, two Liquid Force riders, are going to make it through to the Super Final? Oh my Maddie, he adds he made that more. back lip butter, more. and then the toe too, the, the back, switch back lip. Oh! Solid as you like, it's just as good as the clean. I have to clean. hold my breath to not Yeah, scream. let's not do any commentators kisses of death, let's just call it as we see it. He did get two grabs in there again, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Indy shifty, then rewind back the other way, makes it smoothly round here. A little bit of a butter to slow the speed as he whips round to the outside. Here's this... Kind of breather, styly trick just to give him a respite in between what's going to be more tech. Are we going to go upside down here again? Only riders to do it so far in the contest. 
Indy Tanny to Oh Matty! He was trying to add the 270 honestly, off. Honestly, I was worried he was gonna try that, and he didn't need it at all. He didn't need he, it. No, no way he needed. It. I mean, Joe had the tricks, but he was on it so good he didn't need that. So Joe can't really relax up until that point. He's still gonna throw down. Yeah. If he does the same as what he did before, but then cleans up and just add those extra tricks that he's done before to the end of the run, this could be it for him. That was better Man. on the tail. He doesn't need to go nine here. Gets a cheeky little grab on the end of that back seven. Okay, we're gonna stick with the air trick. So dropping the hammer, sees the scoop. Sticks for the 313. So sorry, Dom. Now, can he lock this in? That's more like it from Joe. Okay, he just needs to keep it together right now. And this will see him through to the next round. That was on lock every single time. Gets the pretzel 270 out. Can he jump into the nose press? Do you think Maddie, that's it? Yeah. I think that's it. That Maddie, is such that's, a shame. That 270 is a tricky save for the super final, Maddie. Oh. You know what? Round of applause to the two Brits right there, giving us a battle royale. Wow. Well done, Maddie Muncy. Maddie was putting on a show, though. Yeah, he was. He was charged, wasn't he? He was full in the zone. Yeah. I, don't I, I did not expect him to go for that 270, too, but. So, uh, Moist Makers take it to the water. We wait for the judges' official call on that one. We got an official call. It is Joe Battle Day. Moving through. So, uh, two nods to the Black Vest versus the one to the Maddie. Commiserations, Maddie Muncy. It has been a joy watching you so far. Now you get to chill and enjoy the rest of the competition. I hope he is not too frustrated. He's got to be happy with that run before. Like, upset that he's not moved through, but when you put a run together like that, yeah, I mean, I'm sure... You're, you're I, gutted for him, aren't you? I can I, see it, John. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just want both of them to ride their best, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted Maddie to put down that run and then see Joe go Joe for the back up. nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, I know how Maddie's feeling right now. He's probably rethinking it right now, and in the moment, he was, like, feeling on fire. Yeah, go, go, like, go. Uh, uh, let me just close the door and, and nail this banger. But now he's probably realizing he maybe didn't need to go that difficult with how good he was, his run was starting off. Okay, now these two boys exploded, were on fire in that last round. Niels Ritzman and Loic de Show. We saw the 10 from Loic like it was nothing. It is gonna be something special. Hello to all of you people back at home. Hey people, what did we think about all of that? Pucks Bonifay, hello sir, how are you doing? Um, we wanna see a video of the skull Dom put on and just... <laughs> Um, right. Round of applause for all of our riders coming in. Listen to that. I don't know whether you guys heard it back home, but uh, an almost a standing ovation for Manny Muncy. Um, commiserations to him as Joe Battleday makes it through to the next round. Okay. What, what are we talking about? Skull. What, what do they mean? Sculling a drink? Sculling a something else? <laughs> and Muncy goes hard. Yeah, so everybody calling it before it happened. Uh, <laughs> and Aaron Gunn getting, it's all, oh, this is Saudi. No, no, no. That no was in response to Maddie just trying to push that extra spin out of the back of that tantrum on the corrugated, getting all hooked up. Not in a way that you want to get hooked up. Yeah. Uh, I'll skull my beer if Joe does a 313. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry, I didn't read that. Right, skull, skull, skull. Can we put, is that going to be on your Instagram right now? Come on, Dom, let's see it. Yeah, we'll Would put it up on the live stream. We'll, we'll just, no, no, I could, uh, I'll just put it on the live stream here, Dom, if you do it. Uh, let's find let's find him right now If it's not on here Tom, then we're gonna be very upset So no, he's not posted anything. It's all chat all chat Dom Hernler get that sculling action happen But drink responsibly people also um, Thank you once again for you guys joining us if you didn't know where you were at in terms of watching this page You just happened upon us and these beautiful faces John Dryling myself Matt Crowhurst behind the hosting of this very incredible 2022 Langefeld Open. The last round was mind-bogglingly exciting. John was visibly upset and on tenterhooks. He almost couldn't talk. But now we're back into the next round with Niels Ritzman and Loic de Show, Germany versus France, on the water. I'm super excited for this because, you know, both these guys are young guns, but Niels is kind of a, a, a dark horse. It's someone that I don't think 
everyone realized until today that till the, the last the, round the, the we saw him. Tricks he has <laughs> and the skill he has. So, I mean, Loic's definitely a very um, popular up and coming rider that you know deservably because he has so many incredible hits on all aspects of wakeboarding, and he put down, in my opinion, the best one that's been put down so far with the most tech hits. Um, so it's super exciting to see these two guys go after it. But um, I, I, I like this, and um, we got here uh, Dregob just saying, "Why is there such hate towards air tricks?" Not, not from us, man. Not from us. I don't us. think there's a hate towards air it's tricks. I think it's a, it's a, a non-grabbed. It's, it's, very it, was, it, it was that. It was that trick. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. We have got Neil's out in the water. Beautiful first pull here to start things off. Precox that spin. Oh, get oh, so. It's not going to score super highly that, but he does get out of it. There's the, uh, the real Pete Rose. I wonder if he's going to send the full Pete. <laughs> yeah, he needs to send the full Pete. About yeah. it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Coming into this rail. This is a super cool hit. Toe back one. Hard way 180 back. When we it saw him do the hard way two earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the 180 this time round. But that is a lot of pop with a lot of board to get over that rail. 360 on and a tickle out of that. Now coming in toe side. We saw this toe back one on before. Oh no, he saw the three. Ah, so hasn't quite come together for Niels in that very first run. As we saw in the previous round, definitely room for improvement, which is not really a position you want to be in when you've got this kitty coming out after you low it to show. No, but just, just Loic's last round uh, put the pressure, I think, enough on Niels that he realized he needed to go toe back nine. It was a smart move. It just didn't happen for him that round. Uh, and there we go, going, not quite uh, locking in on that one. Out of character for Loic, and here doing the grab, toe back seven. He seems to handle that pull so much easier than everyone else on that corner where things are getting tight on that outside kicker. Here we go. He went Strantis very last time on his air trick. Front. Oh my gosh. Going really good, Mew from <laughs> Mo 5 on that Front one. Mobe 5 with the grab. In oh, and going well. 270 on. Oh, oh. my. <laughs> I could explain it, but I think you just have to see it. Just to appreciate, it. just see it. 270 on, then whips back the other way into a back lip the other way, switch back wow. lip, then pretzels the other way again. <laughs> oh my god. And then hitting that wall and that triple rail with that front 270. I mean, he's got he's got a good combination, you know. He's got creative tricks, he's got techie tricks, he hits that wall right, he has the way out of rails. Uh, Okay, right. Who we got coming in, in us? Cameron Grant. I'll make a new game, and the next time the commentator says, Oh, I'll skull my drink. Oh, well, you're going to be very tiddly by the end of this, mate. You'll be three sheets to the wind, bro. <laughs> Sorry, okay, I'll reel in the oh. I'll put more words in instead. I apologize. Uh, yes, oh, damn indeed, Maddie Branston. I'm going to need more drinks for that. Okay, everybody, I'm saying oh too much. All right, gosh, I have got good vocab. I'll use it. Um... <laughs> okay, so everyone getting involved in the chat, an awful lot of banter. Please room for, leave room for other people to chat as well. Thank you to all of us. Uh, oh, wow, there's some, have we seen these Tinder posts as well? Who is that? Is that, is, is that, is that, is that you, Maddie Branston? Are you trying to promote your other page? <laughs> You've seen this. <laughs> ah, we're not interested. Okay, so right. wow. Loic really showing here we go. his okay, consistency so here. As, as, as we, we, we proffered, Loic show taking first blood. The black jersey gets the vest so far. But hey, Nils, Nils showed that he has the toe nine. He, he has the tricks. We saw, him, we saw what he did in the last round too. So. <laughs> I've got a player just... Can we, uh, can we go to the screen? Can we go? Is it, it'll pause it if you hold it. Hang on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ready? We're not missing any riding, yeah, are we? we okay, like and... Ah! Click here. There oh, you go. oh, 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 okay. Gonna, It'll play no, no, I'm gonna go again. Here you go, just in case you thought Dom wasn't... There you go, Dom Hernler. Drinking responsibly in the distance. <laughs> oh, oh, Cheers, oh. Dom. Oh, that's some serious windy pops after that much beer, buddy. Good Cheers work. That one. Thank you, thank you, Dom. All right, gang, thanks for joining us. Here, all you guys. Okay. The chat has been strong. I, no, I go opposites. I go oh. opposites. I go opposites. You see? Okay. Wait, could you, bro? I forgot just, you guys drive on the wrong side of the road. Okay. No, no, the correct side of the road. The correct. <laughs> the left, not the not the right. Here we go. Next round.
Riding, who have we got next? So um, it's going to be Niels Ritzman going out first, of course. Loey taking first blood, as you saw on the screen. Niels has a lot to do with a rider to follow who has awful lot more left in the tank, we suppose. It is getting hard. Don't forget, we've still got one more round after this. We've got Busty Dunn from Australia versus Pedro Caldas of Brazil. We're going to be rounding things off right before we go super final time to decide who is going to be the 2022 Langefeld Open champion. Here we go. Niels Ritzman, take it away, John Dryland. Here we go, coming in, outside in. Going all the on nose press this time back three instead of just a 50. Front 270, That's locking that in. Hit. And that'll set him up nice for this toe back nine because he full pulled that how he wanted, I think. Uh, oh. I'm going to say O oh there, but a short one, so that doesn't count, okay, people? So, you know, we saw Nils doing a really good grab toe back seven, but he knew coming into this round he needed something more with how much of a machine Loic is on the kickers, so. So guys, um, just to give you a heads up on what's still to follow, we have already had the ladies final, and man, did the ladies rip. So good to see them charging and doing gnarly stuff out on the exact same course as the boys, as to be expected by the caliber of women that we have riding here. We will be doing the prize giving for them later, so we'll find out who came where in that super final. We have got the super final to follow as soon as we are done with the busty Don Pedro Caldas battle. And as soon as Loic de Show gets his second run done. So Loic coming in now, he has got, uh, well, that's that gone. Can we get that? Um, sorry, just lost a piece of paper right there. Not that we really, oh, you know, the wind's picked up, just blowing all of our paperwork. Right, is Loic going to do the same thing again? We just blew a 10 out of the water. Heavy, heavy heel side cut. Oh. Yeah, giving the people what they want, a Superman wakeboard style. So Loic coming around, he literally just needs, thank you very much, boss, full service from our tech team. Here's a cool. Oh, doing it different this time. Butt slide in a little bit. Just just a ring rider. You better make sure he does some actual tricks. Yeah, he probably does need to do some tricks. Oh, that was cool. So showing the smoother, flowy, less techy version of wakeboarding that is still just as much fun. Oh, my gosh. Going Pedro Calder style into the corrugated pipe, just hopping on. So if you're just tuning in earlier when Loic had a round like this where someone fell, he went out and just dropped Tobac 10. Just like you do, to, just like you do. Just, just like it was just nothing. Just show riders he had it. Yeah. Which also maybe helped him in this round because Nils knew Nils he Nils went all out on the very first run. Yeah, he knew he, he knew he, what Loic had. So and they put the pressure on Nils and it, it worked in Loic's favor. There you go. Loic going into the super final. Joining Joe Battle right Day there. and Trent Stuckey. Okay. So we've got some very, very different styles between Busty and Pedro coming up next. Busty just seems just dialed in, locked in on absolutely everything. Now that's not to say that Pedro isn't, that Pedro is just a little bit more all over the place in where he approaches the course. I don't mean in what he comes up with, it's just you don't know which way he's gonna go next. Yeah, it's a, it's a similar Maddie and Joe, Joe matchup because Joe's pretty consistent and Joe's, Joe uh, stays a little more clean, a little more pressy. I think Busty going off first in this one though, He's uh, going to go out, lace around, and put the pressure on Pedro. And, you know, Pedro, Pedro has the tricks, but he uh, does he have the consistency. Okay. I don't know. We'll see. Another interesting battle, Australia versus Brazil. Who do you lot out there think is going to take it down? Ben Williams. Oi, oi. Uh, Matt Branston, just drink. That's all you got. Aaron Gunn. Dang. Dang. Indeed. Dang, Daniel. Exactly. Okay. So, come on. Boys, out there, put your votes in. Who's got it, Pedro or Busty? I know what Team Australia is probably possibly going to say. And uh, then we've got the Super Final on the cards right now because in that Super Final, we have got Trent, Joe, and Loic making up the first three. We've still got one more place to decide upon. Who is that going to be? Busty Dunn and Pedro Caldas. Um, I'm going to keep saying this because maybe there are a few people just joining us right now. Thanks for joining us. This is the 2022 Langefeld Wake open here in Langefeld, of course, arguably one of, if not the home of wakeboarding in the country that is the home of cable wakeboarding. Where better place to have such a big event and what better person to have sat next to you than the one and only John, not scared, drilling, sat next to me. Uh, dude, uh, it's been pretty intense so far. This is... Yeah, I mean, it's always such a intense competition here because of the, the way this layout works, you know, having so many technical hits, having... You know, everyone counts in the head-to-head. -head. So that keeps it super intense and super exciting. It's not something we really have in other wakeboard events, so. Yep. And this format is cool. We're going to need to take this format to more events where there is. Oh, no. 
We need power. So there's power on that, so I can't chat to you. Oh, no, it's all right. I'll just do chat on this. There we go. That's that done. Okay, people. Right. There's the chat. Okay, that's good. What are you talking? We've got so many devices here. It's untrue. Okay. John needs to drink. Well, in fact, we both do. Can we put a call out to the management, actually? Could just one of the Seusses get us a drink? <laughs> one of the greatest things about Lanyard Open is the crowd is big and the after party goes hard. So I'll save myself a little bit for Have the you? after party. Yeah, okay. We'll take yeah, it cool. slow for now. but Okay. Here we go. Check the loud DMs. Uh, DMs? Someone, someone been slipping well, in. Someone been slipping into our DMs already. I think he, yeah, it, it happens. Yeah, well, laying for DMs. As in, as in Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Uh, busty, busty, busty is the boat from hey, Joe, Stephen we, Thomas Abraham, Dennis Berg, Pedro. Let's go. Joel Salas, regulars win. <laughs> Third run. You know what? We just wrote that off like it wasn't anything. He didn't do enough. Wait. So, no. Yes. I, I, I <laughs> you said You did that. call that. I did say that. Lo Loic did not do enough by sliding rails. And um, People back home, we're sorry. We, we did kind of switch off there. And you did call it. It didn't look like he was really doing enough. And I mean, like, uh, yeah, the rally, of course, it looks cool to the fans, but... It, it, it's, it does it's not, not a score well. It I mean, Dom, we know well. Dom Herner likes the trick, but no one else. And that's about the only real trick he did in the whole thing. Yeah, okay, so it was a tight score. It was 11.6 to an 8.54. So not the biggest scoring runs of the competition so far. I mean, I, w w Lovick wouldn't have done that on purpose, would he? Oh, no, I don't think he threw the contest. I think he... He just didn't think. I think he just thought... I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> that is, if it goes wrong for Loic now, oh my gosh, that will be a kick in the, wow. in, in the Julie's This is exciting yeah. though now. Another third run. Another third run by accident. That's what we're getting right here. Okay. Uh, so imagine we, all he had to do was like oh, another back lip and he was fine. He, he could have just ridden all the rails. <laughs> okay. I mean, to be fair, he back lipped this, although he did come off early. He ollied onto that. It's a pretty big ollie. I mean, he... Yeah, but I actually tuned out for Nil's first hit and Loic's first hit. Um, okay, there we go. The, only the second time we have seen one apiece in this head-to-head -head three round best of competition format that we have got. So it goes to a third round and uh, what a way to be rounding off uh, this semi-finals. Well, nearly, we've still got one more uh, semi-finals to go. We've got um, Busty Dunn versus Pedro Caldas. So, sorry this if we are... exciting uh, now. If you're, if you're Nils and you fall in, you, you've blown the Tobik 9 twice, do you go for it again? Do you get a third chance at the Tobik 9? Or do you, do you say, hey, I'm going to go Tobik 7, and maybe now that Loic has this, like, confusion going on, thinking he made it through. <laughs> okay, so Daniel Grant, so have a little chuckle about this. You call John not scared trailing, so he got a scholar drink. Okay, he will later. Okay, go easy on John, all right? He isn't scared, though. We know that. That's a fact. I like the way that's frozen. Okay. Uh, Neil's with a chance. Neil's is definitely in a chance. You th Aaron thinks Loic threw it. I'm, I think that's a bit cynical. I think he just bluffed it. I think he just had a serious, serious blackout so, moment. To be fair, the judges kind of clarified that the pool is like 25%. Between the pool and the kicker, it's 45% of your run. The kicker, oh, okay, the kicker so that might makes be more 25%. sense. So, yeah, that pool is 20%. And if he didn't lock in that first hit and he just did well, he didn't do anything, stuff, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then, I mean, it makes sense. Nils could have got a pretty decent score on that 20% or 25%. The instructions are in German. Who's sending us German instructions? I think it's a joke. Okay, right, okay. In Loic's face. Okay, got you. Yeah, yeah. Loic on the run. Got you. Hey, JB O'Neill. How you doing, man? Um, right, so after all of that confusion and everybody seeming to black out for the past five minutes, we are back on the water with Niels Ritzman, who has a second crack of the whip, it seems. A last chance saloon for him to make it through. They are one apiece right now. The victor of this third and final run in their head-to-head -head battle will be the person going through to the Super Final, which will be following very shortly. Thanks to all of you out there who've been joining in getting the banter bus going on the chat. It has been very enjoyable to read and join in with you guys. Yeah. Cheers. Uh, Here we go. This could be the upset of the, the decade, pretty much, in Cable Wakeboard. I mean, it would be insane if Niels came through and won this.
Right, there's that 50-50 to back three. Fully locked in. Right, this is where it did not go well. Can it go well this time? Oh! Oh, I did it again. Sorry, someone down a drink. Sorry, Third I got too excited. Times the charm. <laughs> oh, Niels. Right, Niels Ritzman has got the wind under his sails. Oh, he did it. 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 Just did a Pete Rose. I am losing it. Oh, we are getting it. very aroused here in the commentary booth. I'm having to like whisper okay. because I'm losing it here. Go on, get it. Oh, oh he goes smart. safe. That was, that was smart. smart. Okay, some tactical riding here from Niels. Needs to keep it together still. Needs something saucy on this corrugated. Hard way. Uh, oh, 360. Locking. Cheeky little tuck knee grab on the end of that. Now we saw the toe side backside spin. Still. Yes. Oh yes. my. Nils, Good lad. Nils, Nils. Whichever way this goes right now, that boy can be proud oh. of an insane run. The and crowd the lost it on that back. <laughs> uh, this is his home cable. And uh, with that, that, oh my. Here we go. Right, Loic's show. got the pressure on right now. 50 50. So the same as Neil's. Oh. An extra little cheeky twizzle pants on there on the end of it. Here we go, he needs something big here still. It's a nine. They're both good, comparable. I mean, Nils had some crazy tech hits. Okay, so so far comparable. A little bit of a head of a game on that Henshaw hit. Oh, that is tasty indeed. So making a right old battle of it, these two. Oh, 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 not as clean as we've seen them from him before. This is going to be a hard one to pick apart from our judges who are just popping back That's the paracetamol by the headache they're getting from this. Oh, he landed a bit butters then, did he? Was it clean? Yeah, will it affect this hit is the question. Uh, yeah, he didn't get the 270 on that, I think because of the buttering around on that. It's going to be tight, whatever it is. Come on, two, you, you two guys out there. Two rail hits were solid, two rail hits were a little rough. What do we think, what do we think, people? Call it, call it, call it. Local got it down, Daniel Grant says. Oh. I did, I, I think lo, uh, it's close. I don't even know if I can call this, I mean. Space Mob crew in the house, hello. Yonel Cohen, how are you doing, man? So we can lots of blasts from the past out here as well and from people far and wide within the wakeboarding fraternity out uh, there on planet Earth. Thank you for joining us, people. We hope you enjoyed that last battle as much as we did. And it's still not over because we do not you know the score yet. The um, judges are literally having coronaries up in the judging panel right now uh, after all of that. It, it's so interesting because uh, Nils was a uh, pretty perfect run and, and uh, Loic had a lot more tech. So, oh, uh, there it is. The scores are in. Okay, so it looks like he did enough, which uh, there'll be a... Uh, a slight, his bum cheeks will be unpuckering right now. Wow. Loic was... show makes it through, and that is, you know what? It doesn't matter. We got to see Niels put that run together, and he should be very happy with himself. <laughs> what a ride from that guy. He did all he could do, right? Yeah, I mean, he definitely put on a show. He definitely put the pressure on Loic. I mean, Loic's a ma machine. He's so good, but Niels... Nils uh, is young, he's still learning every single day, and every year he's progressing so much, so I'm s I can't believe what he's going to throw next year if this is what he's throwing this year. <laughs> so he definitely made a big, big impression on the crowd, and I think everyone at home. Okay, so there we go. Oh, we need a b bit of battery over here, if you, if you have anywhere. Pretty great, though, that uh, Nils got that opportunity to show what he had. Yeah, know? man, that that, that's exciting. made it. That's going to be... Once again, regardless of that actually happening and Niels unfortunately not making it through, that is going to be yet another one of the many highlights that we're having from this 2022 LAO. We move on to our next round of riding and our final round of riding here in the semifinals. It is Basti Dan of Australia versus Pedro Caldas of Brazil coming in hot. Okay, let's hear your calls, people. Who do you think has got it? Pedro, Basti, very different styles of riding. Both mind-blowing in their own right. They are going to attack this court, I would imagine, in very different ways. What have we got from them? Let's see what everybody thinks. Okay, Yana Baton, he is... That one was close. Love to see Niels get it. Yeah, it would have been cool on home turf for that homegrown boy to have got it. But exactly, as, as John said, I, it's easy to, to sofa judge, isn't it? It's easy to judge from a distance when you're not in that hot seat and you're not putting your heads together. Like, we've got, like, decades of experience in that judging panel, so I would not want to take on that role at all. Tough decisions have had to be made yeah, Aaron, all Aaron, day long. Aaron Gunn made a point in the chat. He said uh, the air trick put him above, and I do think that, that doing an air trick gives you a little bit more weight because you add that variety. extra variety. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Here we go, starting things off. Oh, a little bit of a wobble there on the down part of the headdress, but it was looking good up until that. Busty done. 
with his usual clean as a whistle, spinning like a top action off that kicker. Look at those buddy conditions as we come into the drive tower for Busty. He's going to do a short, sharp, jabby scoop into that back mode five that he has. On lock, I say that till after he did it because I didn't want to about the usual commentator's kiss of death. Front lip all over the nose. Oh, 270 across, then pretzel back out of that. Super smooth. This is really good for Busty's composition. This is switch toe back three, toe back one. Adds a variety there. Not, not the hardest trick, but doing a switch definitely adds a lot. Um, and there is a lot of skibbity pabbity hibbity hobbity over that. They're going up all three steps and all the way across. There is a lot going on. And it's... He's a machine as well. He's like, look, he can just bust it out every single time. Yeah, I mean, he's so smart, you know. He, uh, he has really good composition. He spins every way. He's consistent, and he puts the pressure on. Okay, Pedro, what you got? He goes, board, 270 out, straight onto the first part, back 270 out of that, down the outside of the wall of the Henshaw, coming into the cable, and let's go back outside the cable. Wow, a trick I don't think in 10 years I've seen Pedro fall on. And that's what it does. Busty puts that pressure on and so. Yeah, that is going to pile the pressure on young Pedro. We go jet ski crazy to go and get Pedro to get him back to the dock. And that is going to be unofficially, of course, but fairly guaranteed. Fairly guaranteed that that will be it in terms of the first hit. First blood, so Busty done. I love seeing I love seeing all of these legends in the chat just S talking it up, it analyzing it. it, you know. There's a little bit of discussion I think on the air tricks and stuff and uh and the like how do you compare an air trick to a, a off a bump, not even a proper kicker. Yeah, the toe side up a bump, toe yeah. 270. I mean, it's really hard to compare. Um, because that, there is a variety aspect on the air trick, but like they're commenting how many people have done that trick, like a toe, toe back hole, 270, like a peat to a rail, you know? Super interesting, but... Um. Hey, this is um, sometimes a frustration, but also the beauty of our sport, it being subjectively judged. You couldn't have it any other way. It's not a point per trick. It is an interpretation, and we have seen so many different interpretations of weightboarding, weight part riding here today at Langefeld Open, as you would expect from this Blue Ribbon event. We have Pedro back on the dock. He is going to be going off second, so Busty gets to go out and pile the pressure on yet again for Pedro to follow. And like you say, I, I mean, I haven't seen as much of Pedro's riding as you have, and I've never seen him fall on that trick either. So it's not as if even he wasn't really pushing himself to do that nine. That's usually stock, right? Yeah, I definitely think that's a stock trick. I mean, that's what he was doing all day, you know. I think going down that wall adds a lot. Like we talk about, the tension management here is really crazy. Um, but, I mean, he's been going down the wall every run, and... I don't know if he thought he would go extra big or if he just got ahead of himself and dropped the handle. Schurz van der Kirchhoff, one of our Dodge crew. Hello, buddy. Good to see you. Doing it for the um, rather skilled dad weightboarders out there, of which you are at the higher echelons. Hello. Uh, Petro going to clean it up second run. Uh, Yonel Cohen has faith in the pressure cooker being what Pedro needs applied to him to come up with the goods. Malaru, hello to you. And you've got Pedro as uh, taking this second bout, which will push it to three rounds, which is exactly what we want. I think, Let's get back on the water. Yeah, I think Pedro's a big favorite here. So I'm, uh, I know everyone's at home uh, sitting on the edge of the sea right here. You can see it. Pedro is chasing right now. Busty out on the water. That's a white vest, white jersey. Is he going to add to what he's already done? Can he just lay down exactly the same thing? Does he think that will be enough? I'm sure he knows as well as anybody that Petro, he can come up with the goods, man. So I think Busty's going to have, you think Busty's going to have to push it a little bit more, yeah, John? I mean, I, I think Busty's going to take the same strategy. Oh, okay. Well, so now up he's going to push it. Now he's going to have to push it, right? Because he's left the door open on that first trick. There you go. Just dropping those like they're hot. Yeah. So, are we going to see that same air trick again? Look at the leverage. You don't get any more efficient than just that. Oh, my gosh. It's so solid. It's ridiculous. That is a tough trick as well. So, are we going to go front lip over the nose? Not quite as clean on that one either. Pedro will be watching this with eagle eye as he works his way around the back straight of the cable. So, there are those opposite rotations that John was talking about. Here we go. The, th the triple threat. And then the extra on top. 
Easily done. Okay. So a few slip-ups there. I mean, we say slip-ups, minuscule, but enough to leave the door ajar for this man on the back straight, the Brazilian Pedro Caldas, coming in, who has very few points on the board. He needs something special. It's still busted done out there. That is still a killer run. So he's going to come in, backboard. Then he goes, continues that rotation, bagel out of that. Then he gets on. Coming up a little bit early, but still manages to squeeze the back 270 out. Oh, wow. my gosh. That is some kahunas right there. Taking a the ball and just knowing that that's not neutral for him. Goes in with a nine. Hardcore. Oh, that's new as well. Yeah. And that not is only new. coming off a fall in that heel nine, he grabbed that so much longer, just showing like yeah. that that was a fluke, you know? Twizzle sticks on the rail, front lift, 50 50, then turns him back over the transfer and then back the other way again. Now coming to the outside, no, inside of the cable. Kiai, Kung Fu kick into the uh, <laughs> beast of a corrugated tube right there. Then he manages to rotate out of it as well. Oh my. Wow. It's that could be, be it. It's going to be close. I mean, the, he the pool gap here was really rough and that one here was really rough. Uh, but the other hits were really good. Busty had a few wobbles, but not as much as that. Like full layback butt check, almost a write-off on that trick, as tech as it was. Uh, oh, yeah. good luck, judges. Keep popping that paracetamol. Okay, so here we go. Folks, recap where we're at. We are just rounding off the semi-final head-to-head rounds. That was Busty Dunn and Pedro Caldas in action. Is it going to go to a third round? We are not sure. We're waiting with bated breath to see. It may be a decision right now that it doesn't, and it goes Busty's way. In which case, we will be having a quick five-minute toilet stop, beer-finding hunt break to give everybody a breath, including our judges who've been up there just battling with their wits all day long before we move into the men's super final. They are currently making the decision over that last head-to-head. -head. As Pedro Caldas makes his way in, I'm sure to a big round of applause from the crew on the shore. You saw him fly by right then and giving us the eyeball. We're all staring at that screen, not wondering exactly what's going to happen. But what do you think is going to happen? Okay, surely Yonel makes a comeback to make this same name present. <laughs> Cameron Graham putting it out there. Penalize it. Yeah, so Yannick, we were talking about saying that the same run does penalize. So with that in mind, we're seeing the same run from Busty. So surely that would knock him back as, and give Pedro the edge. And it's busty. Apparently not. Apparently it didn't make enough of a difference compared with the falls that we saw. It was a close call, 62.97 versus 60.80 from Busty versus Pedro. So commiserations to Pedro Caldas. Congratulations to Busty Dunn. And there we have it, folks, our final of USA's Trent Stuckey, UK's Joey Battleday, France's Loic Deschaux, and Australia's Busty Dunn. That is the 2022 Langenfeld Open Men's Super Final about to go down. Wow. Wow. This guy right next but, to me, John, Busty, is speechless. Uh, Busty always does it. He always does it. I love his riding, and he just comes through clean every time. Bosh, bosh, bosh. He just focuses on kickers and rails and puts so much pressure on you, and I guess he, he took the odds on that one. I think he played it safer than... Uh, Pedro's run was, but he... There's nothing wrong with a bit yeah, of clever yeah. riding. You're at a contest. You're, yeah. you're here to win, right? So play the, play the numbers. Well done to all of those riders. Commiserations to those riders who did not make it through. The good thing is you get to get back in one of the best places on the planet if you're into wakeboarding right here and watch at one of the best events on the planet with some of the best riders on the planet. And if you're sensible, you're listening to us as well. So you get our dulcet tones and occasionally these beautiful faces. John, I'm excited about this final. Yeah. Now that your guy, Timo, didn't make it through... Do we have a leaning in a direction one way or the other? I mean, I think it's a showdown between Trent and Loic, and I think it's the start of a pretty beautiful rivalry, rivalry that's going to happen over the next five or ten years. But um, it's hard to say because Trent has been playing it really stylish and stuff, but I know he has tech. Um, but as far as the last run, Loic has, has the most technical run I've seen so far. So, I mean, if... I, Trent's like my best friend. Like he's like my little brother. So, of course. Then go I'm that way. Be biased. Be biased. But Loic's shown more as on the he's water. He's shown more so far. There we so go. We'll so, we're still on the fence. How about you guys? Call it. Say it out there. Um, JB, just, just as patriotic as you can be, just sticking a flag up there for the U.S. Fair play. So, we will continue this deliberation very shortly. 
So stick with us. Go get yourself a drink. Go hit the toilet. Make sure you've got all of your, 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 your supplies for the next half hour or so where we will be wrapping up the 2022 Langenfeld Open here at Langenfeld. Quite obviously, it is exactly as it says on the tin. Thank you to Liquid Force, to Follow Wake, and to Nissan for bringing this all together. Thank you, Tech Team, doing a sterling job. Drone Man on their game. Thanks to them, everyone here. Thank you, John. It's been a pleasure once again. Yeah, it's been a couple of years, wasn't it? It was plastic last time we did this again. So we'll be back with you. Give us a break. Sit tight. Wait for the final of the 2022 Langefeld Open.
almost wine. had an incident. We had a we had a beer spillage right there. Not that we're drinking beer, obviously. Again. Okay. Here we go, Trent Stucky out on the water. Oh, I'm so stoked. So we got just to recap if you if you're new here, we got Trent Stucky, Joe Battleday, Loic Deshaw, and Bussy Dunn. That's representing USA, UK, France, and Australia. So we got an international crowd and uh, it's the super final. It's about to go down. They have two runs, I believe, right? Two runs. Two runs, best run counts. So. You guys, call it out there in the chat. The chat is going off, by the way. Hey, all of you fans of wakeboarding, just take note of the names that are going back to back here. Uh, some of the greats of our sport all joining in the chat. Thank you so much, boys, girls, people out there for joining us. There's confirmation of our super final lineup. Some of the best of the best. And as John quite rightly said, it's an international affair. Trent Stuckey coming in hot. Oh, that tippity tally is so good. He just adds that little extra twist on the end. That Massive. Was crazy. That was the start that crazy. You guys oh, my goodness. So you, you noted before how we went different ways. You went roll, then flip. Oh, there he goes. There KGB you go. Twice. So I don't know if that matters to judges because they're both KGBs, but one's an air chick, one's a kicker hit. I would imagine they'd prefer to see something different. But anyway, me, both me, clean me as a whistle. Both clean as a whistle. There he gets that twizzle sticks off the end of the rail as well. He goes by board, then hard oh, way 360. The full 360, oh. which is a lot harder to land on too because you got to get all the way over with your board. Oh my goodness, Trent. Wow. Put it, put it down. Put I, it down. I do think it was. He has more in the tank, you know, but that was a podium run, I think. Okay, so it's going to be gutting for the one person in this pack of four that doesn't quite make it onto the podium. That's fairly frustrating, isn't it, when you got a four-person final? Wow! Oh. We've never seen anyone hit that rail before. Yes, Joe. And there Joe goes. It's a gnarly one because it starts way before the stairs, and Joe, that's big for the judges. Oh, Joe! I did an O again. Sorry, Sorry we got very excited. We just blown Sorry eardrums all I over yelled. the world. Yeah, um, yeah. But Joe did not hold anything back. First of all, that up rail, he saved that all the way for the finals. He heard the judges say they want to see something new in finals, and uh, that was it right there. Oh, did Joe need to do that? Uh, it depends. If he wanted the win, I think he needed it. If he wanted a podium, podium? he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't. He doesn't yeah. need it. But you only got two tries. I think you know he went going for the win twice. And, Fair uh, play. Put those big brass ones right on the table for all to see. Okay, so getting a bit of a heel separator back edge on that back nine. Sorry, let's scroll down see where you guys are at. Uh, we've got Australia, obviously voting for Australia. Uh, Yanni Baton just getting behind Joe right there. No, that was exactly us, yeah. Oh, man, that first line, though, and then straight into a that back cool. nine. That's going to be something to behold. We really hope he can lock that down because that will make things very interesting indeed. So we go from the UK straight to France. Loic the show is about to take to the water, and then we got Busty Hello, Dunk as well. Boy. So... Um, who we got down there? Aaron Gunn, super final, send it. Yeah, yes. that's going to hurt. <laughs> we, we got some guys talking about how doing two KGBs might hurt him. That, that's true if everyone else lands their run. If everyone else has a variety in but, there as I well. Mean, yeah. He killed it on his run at least, and there was a lot of tech there. I was surprised. I think that the, the front to blind is a really stylish hit. I do think the judges are going to score that really high, and... He took that out of his run, but hey, now he has a chance to do something new in, in his second run. Trent's very smart, though. He always has a, a plan. Here we go. France on the water. So we've already seen many rather something specials from Lowe to Show leading up to this point. How, as I was just saying to John, I don't have as much experience seeing these guys day in, day out, certainly not in the practice environment. I see them in the competition environment, which do certainly doesn't give you a full rounded well view of what someone has in the tank. And if you're saying there is more left for each of these guys, exciting times for both me, for us, for you guys at home as well. Thank you everybody for joining us here on the chat and the viewing. Hoping you enjoy it. Yay yo! How you doing Toby? Yay yo to you. Really tall boys. The real tall boy. <laughs> so boys, Ladies, people out there, keep throwing us your thoughts on who you think is going to come out on top. Do you think Joe's going to get back out there and smash that backside nine, which was looking so close? Backside nine with a melon grab in the middle of it, no less. All right. Lowy to show. Which way is he going to go? He is iron up the middle. Oh, no, the outside. 
There he goes, 50 50, 360. Then he goes 270 on, then back oh, the other wow, way, then back the other way again. That is confusing. how he changed that. That tension might cause some. Never mind. <laughs> Kid has no issue. That was so Kid has no issue. <laughs> Never <with> mind. <laughs> no, that is not an issue for him at all. Okay, then we're going to go. Oh, we're going to see that front. Mo five. Thank you very much. There is nothing cleaner than that. And uh, we may have been bagging on that one particular edge. Oh, how did he save that? It was almost Taco Tuesday there for Lloyd to show. Wow. Then there's that rewind handle pass just right away. Then he passed it back. Then there's a triple threat. Then there almost a three. Not quite a three, but... Yeah, it was, a, it was a little questionable, that last trail hit, because he... I. It looked like he wanted three, but it wasn't a three. And then the other one where he clips, but I mean, he definitely had the more tech kicker hit. So, mm -hmm. um, but I do think, as Aaron Gunn pointed out, I do think that uh, Trent was putting down a podium run, and here's Busty going with that back three, like locking it in. One of the best ones we've seen from him. And here's the grabs the toe back nine. Oh, I don't know where. So we've not done that before in this competition so far. That is. So we're going to see the same air trick that we've seen before. So from Busty, it is a Tekka's trick. He makes it look, that was my fault. I'll take that. I will take 100% responsibility wow. for that. That's another one I don't know if I've ever seen him fall on. Never. Like, literally never. He'll do those without passing the handle. Never mind when he's passing. Wow. Okay. So, well. So remember not to say any scores, because I, I, I want to say about to. We yeah. can see him, but I can't say him. Yeah, so we, um, we really want to give you the scores right now, and you guys can come up with your own ideas on where these boys are placing in this final, but we are holding back until the actual prize giving, so there are surprises. Well, I got to know, who do you guys think is taking yeah, the win right now? Let go me on. know. G give us an order. Give us an order. We'll go hotter, colder. No, we won't. We'll, <laughs> just, we'll just say well done for attempting. All right. Aaron Gunn, Basti, didn't come. Uh, Delphi of the Tower, Def Trent at the Mo. I, I think we can call it. Uh, I think, yeah, unofficially you could possibly say that, but then Loic, still, it was right the way through. All right, so obviously, I think it, there's no equivocation of the fact that Joe is at the bottom of the pack and an awful lot to do, having taken a very early fall indeed, because he was going, you know, the, brass quest, the, the question to the wall. with Joe is he just saw their runs, he knows what they put down. I don't know if he has, the, he has the tricks, but. I think it's a stretch for, does he go for the podium basically and, uh, you know, try to beat Busty's safer run. But he could go for the podium, and then save Busty, it up and then still miss out. Yeah, because Busty, Busty has more in the tank too. I don't know, but. It's a tough call and um, it's a tactical game when you're playing these <laughs> you know, competitions. I, I know yeah. these English boys like Maddie, they want to walk away with a banger run. I don't, I don't see Joe playing it too safe, but. Okay, so this is the final round of riding here at the 2022 Langenfeld Open here, the super final with some mind-boggling riders out on the water. Thank you again. I know we keep saying thank you, but it's, it's worth noting. It's worth repeating to you guys who are joining us on the chat over here. It makes it even more fun. I mean, we're having a good time anyway, chatting about that thing that we love. Rudy, there's one le run left. For all you guys at home, it's the, everyone's final run. There's four riders left. We're starting off with Trent, then Joe, then Loic, then Busty. So a little bit more standard contest format. It is the best run that counts out of the two. Okay, guys, join in the chat. Who do you think has got it in the second and final round of riding in this super final of the LAO here, 2022 Ooh, Langefeld? Boy. Super final. That is not an order there, folks. That is just the riders that are on the water. That that's, is not, that's that's not positioning. Order. Riding order, rather, rather than placement. results after the first run, just to be clear. Oh, crowd is going nuts. Here, Here it go. comes. It is going to be Lord of the Dance said he from Trent Stuck as he goes tippy tappy crazy. Wow, that was a big pop out. Oh. We Are we going to see the KGB? He's we going see huge the... on this. He literally stores that on purpose. That is the sickest thing ever for a KGB. Yeah. Now, is he going to do the KGB again or mix it up? Maybe cage five, maybe? Oh! Yeah. Yes, cage he called five. it. John called it. John. I, I ride with them a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Changing it up here, though, and going the... Back Into one. the 50-50. A gnarly, gnarly balls to the wall trick, if ever there was. So board slide, rides that hand along. Oh, comes off a little bit early. 
can the rest of the riding and this last trip make up for it? So he goes back lip, then keeps rotating to 70, then back the other way, pretzel. So apart from the one slip up, that is some mental riding. So I, th Trent I think Stuckey. what the drone doesn't show is that his first pull hit, he fell off a lot earlier than the first run. And I think he uh, really stepped it up on this front straight, which uh, handle pass heel back one, just not quite locking it in. But uh, here we go with Joe with that unique line that we haven't seen taken before. Locking that one in. Is he going for it? Is he going for it? Is it going to be what he tried before? Oh, oh yes, Joe Battle Day. Go on, boy. Sorry, there is a little bit of Brit bias coming out right now. Of course, I want my lad to do well. Here he comes. He needs the five. Yes, he does. It's super solid as well. Doesn't yeah. get any cleaner than really that for that particular on trick. That here we go, the beautiful backup. Oh! oh! Oh no, from Joe, that is not what he needed. He is going to have to go a little bit more out, out right now. If there's anything left in the tank, it needs to happen. Then he pretzels out of that. It needs to be a locked in nose press if he's going to make it. It is, it is, it is. Into the back one, off. From what it looked like, that was a fully legit Joe classic nose press right there. That was there. a good nose press. That, that was definitely a good nose press. Um, so, Trent so I think Trent's going to go with this first one. Joe definitely improved. Um, will it be enough to put him on the podium? We'll have to wait and see for the podium. Yeah, but I mean, we keep holding us back from mentioning what we're seeing on the screen right here because we don't want to give anything away. But it's uh, fairly categorical that that's a vast improvement for Joe Badale in that second run. And glad of it, too. Here we go. This is what... Will... Loic dropped the 10. We saw him do it earlier. Does he need it? I mean... I mean, obviously, that's a how long I, piece of string question. He needs it. Yeah, it depends on, right, on how perfect his rail hits are, but... Which you can't tell because then he's gone past the kicker, so he can't make that decision. Um, which is why those kickers being in such a critical place is... So no. risky biscuits for it's our so, for It's our so riders. tough having the kickers at the beginning because strategy goes out the window a little bit. Because you don't get a sudden crack of the whip with the kickers if you suddenly do all your rail hits bang on. Which is what usually happens. Most of us Mo out there who've ridden events know we've got a kicker at the end and if everything goes to plan, then we'll do us something safe. Most if it doesn't, riders yeah. have a 50-50 a, a kicker, kicker trick that's really difficult that they can pull out if they need it. Here comes Loic. That was nice. Okay. Oh, nose pressing with an early handle pass. Really late edge into that one. No problem for Loic. <sighs> Much better pull hit. Yeah. Oh my, rarely seven going down. He did not want to leave it up to the judges. He was gonna. He was saying. Yeah, he wanted to shut that door. I, uh, I am making this clear. decision myself. I saw what Trent did, and I'm gonna, no matter what, try harder tricks. Okay, and, uh, so what we have now is three stellar runs from these riders. That Busty, of course, we know Busty. He can come up with all the goods in the world, but they are still big runs. Does he eke onto the podium? Does he eke onto second? Does he go all out for first? I mean. Here's the thing, Bussy doesn't know where he sits right now. That's something new, getting the backside three down to the Henshaw, locking in that 50-50. Getting the grab in the middle of that too. A little handle wobble, but honestly the back nine with the grab was much cleaner, much better grab than the first run. All right, I'm going to shut up this time around. Oh, he went for the osmosis. He intentionally that let go of the rope. That one was not my fault. I didn't say a thing. No, no. Bussy intentionally let go for, of the rope. Going for the osmosis. Okay, so he was he was thinking win, wasn't he? He wasn't thinking he could out as well. Do you think? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I think he was. We'd have to see his rails because he really the rails are where he plays it safe, you know. But he okay. must he must have been going for the win. But hey, there we go. That's it. So. A shame, kind of, that it ended in that way. We didn't see the riders go all out in that second run, but still, the riding that we saw, tens in the final, all manner of silly, ridiculous technicalities on all of the features from all of our riders right the way through, from where it started with the women at the kickoff of the day 
to right here and now. Uh, yeah, should we turn now? We're getting, I'm getting chopped out here. There we go, that'll do. Hey, hey, there's a Seuss back there. There's loads of them. There's literally hundreds of them about. <laughs> wow, that was exciting. We're we doing results? That was... I, don't, I thought you told us. Sorry, we, we, we got told off of mentioning something we shouldn't before. Don't confuse us. You already said don't do that, okay? We're going to mess well, it up. Are we going to no, say no, live no, no, no results. Or, or no? It's going to be prize okay. giving time, isn't it? Yeah, then we're going to film that. Yeah, okay. We'll just live stream that. Yeah, yeah we'll live stream that. And I think... Uh, always well, a pleasure, never a it's chore. It's going to be tough between one and two. They were close. They were close. Hey, it's let's... It's going to be a um, tough job for the judges. Um, can you just unlock that for me, boss, just so we can say hello to our crew out there? Hey, let's w have one final call. What do you all think was the end... Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, Chat is always live. Okay. G give us a, those results. Who do you guys think? Who do you think? We're going to stay with you. We want to just see some I of you. Megan Ethel as, Ethel I mean, as well. Thank you. Here we go. Here we go. Bussy's at, at two falls, right? Um, so we've got uh, Marlo Rue, Trent for first. Cameron Graham. Yeah, that was an Osmosis 5 attempt. Uh, uh, we've got Brett Fordham, Trent. Uh, Aaron Gunn saying it's going to be tight. Uh, great job, guys. Thank you very much, Yana. Much appreciate you being there from start to finish. Hardcore. The rest of you guys as well. Uh, Jacob, Jacob, it's best run. Here so, we go. Uh, Conrad, Conrad McIntosh goes Trent, Loic, Joe. Um, I think all of, your, all of your guesses are well worthwhile because it could go any which way. Um, the main thing is, did you enjoy that riding? Have you enjoyed being with us here remotely in the webinar ether with this 2022 Lang uh, Langenfeld Open? Easy for me to say. Getting a bit of cabin fever up here. I think it's about time we switched off. Can we say thank you to these guys over here. Come on, tech team assemble. All right, where are they, where are I? Where's, where's our drone man as well? Oh, he's still flying his drone. Okay, so uh, you should have done a drone shot for all of us. Get your head down, they can't see you. So this is our tech team with us. Thank you very much. Come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. Yeah, thank you guys in the chat and everyone for keeping fun with us, keeping yeah. it exciting and uh, tuning in. And um, we're still going to continue this feed. We're probably going to have a little pause screen and just that promo for Langenfeld, which is well worth watching because it's beautiful. And then we'll be back for the prize giving itself. Also, let's say, my name's Matt Crowhurst. Please, can you follow my Instagram because my wife is about to overtake me on Instagram and she will be incorrigible as soon as that happens. Um, hello to, to John's wife as well who's been tuning in. Showing you yeah, she's on a distance. flight right now and she paid for the Wi-Fi because she had That is committed. It. That is support. I don't think my wife is even tuned in with my kids. Thanks it's, a lot. It's not even for me. It's for Trent. He's like a little brother. Oh, okay. Know? Right, right, right. <laughs> um, hey, and thank you for having us here. Langefeld, it's been amazing. All's left to do is uh, lubricate the, uh, the dulcet tones. Cheers, boy. Skull, we will see you at the next Langefeld Open, and, and maybe, and, well, we're going to see you at the Worlds, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'll come, be at Worlds. Join You'll us be at Liquid Worlds. Leisure Worlds. I'll well, be there. You guys all should be at Worlds. You guys, if you can't be there with us, well, that's a shame, but you can be with us on the chat, on the video, on the content. But we are not there yet. We've still got the prize given to do here at the 2022 Langefeld Open, brought to you by Liquid Force and supported by Follow Wake and Nissan, and of course, Unit Part Tech with the, the, the hacking credentials like there are no other. And, and big Langenfeld. thanks to Langenfeld. To Langenfeld. Course. Thank you for everything in wakeboard in Langenfeld because... The it, Disney World of wakeboarding. It is, it is. As I said before, the Elysium Fields of wakeboarding. Hey, we will see you at the next event. Make sure you stick around to watch the prize giving to see who came where here at this amazing event. Thank you for joining us. My name is Matt Crowhurst. This guy is John Drayling, and we will see you at the next event. See you guys next time.
Äh, du bist auf jeden Fall alle, die rausfliegen, direkt in die erste Runde. Also wenn 48 am Start gehen, dann nur beide dann noch 8. Aber so ist es halt im internationalen Kraftniveau Wettkampf zu spielen, oder? Da musst du ausfliegen. Und so hart es ist. Manchmal, manchmal ist der Favorit dann doch irgendwie schon schneller raus in einem Head-to-Head, weil einfach der Druck so hoch ist. Aber das ist das Game. Das ist das Game, das wir alle lieben. Und wir brauchen auch alle Rider. Ja, alle Rider, die Leute müssen hier sein. Die Leute, 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 Wir waren gut, absolut. Habt ihr? Genau. Also, ich muss sagen, eigentlich hat schon mal jeder gewonnen, der es super fein geschafft hat. Das muss man einfach sagen. Und ich glaube, die beiden, die verteilen es so ein bisschen in der Kaufbahn, weil es ist schon auch ein geiles Gefühl, wenn du so dein Brett hochhebst und einfach so durch die Menge läufst. Ja, weil jeder noch mal irgendwie gut will, das will man eigentlich schon gerne auch mitnehmen. Ja, also ich glaube, das ist auch wie du sagst, also auf dem Niveau einfach abliefern zu können und an dem Tag und ich meine Bedingungen mit mitführen. Und was die Leitfelder haben, nichts aussetzen lassen in die Organisation. Absolut Wahnsinn. Und dann null mit den ganzen Tagen, das ist halt alles gut gelaufen. Und da äh, war es nicht nur das Setup, aber also alles von oben bis hinten hat es Die Organisation auch wieder für euch noch alle Bilder von heute super gerne einfach über die nächsten Tage und Wochen raushauen. Hashtag Das wir die Möglichkeit haben, aus eurer Sicht den Tag nochmal über die nächsten Tage zu erleben. Super viel Geld in jedem Fall. Und uh, danke, dass ihr alle da seid und über den ganzen Tag im Weg so viel Riders sie gefordert habt. Und um, ja, einfach ehrlich. Ich bin jetzt Tages. Ja, sind wir ready? Die Mädels sind am Start, ich habe eins, zwei, drei, vier, das ist ein bisschen Ladies, place number four. Please come here to us. River City! Yeah! Where are you? Hey, sie hat so eine geile Leistung gebracht den ganzen Tag hinweg. Wie gesagt, ein wahnsinns Nachwuchstalent. Es ist crazy am Boden.
Linda Blatt, ladies and gentlemen, here. The Andy Fellow, presented by Lego Course for 2022. Sie ist gravierend in dem, was sie geleistet hat und auch was sie leistet. Ein riesen Applaus von uns alle aus. Anne Nickstadt auf dem dritten Platz.
Yes, yes, yes. 